Ignition sequence start. Three, two, one. Houston, we have a problem. We got to go on the ground. You got a bunch of guys about to turn blue. What you're seeing here is a mirage. What's going on, everyone? It's Jaren from Jarenism back with another live video for you tonight. It's going to be a good one. It is live. I saw some people think that it's recorded. It's live. If you're looking for Speaker's Corner, that will be after the show. So stay tuned for that. As long as we don't go too long, this is live. It is the 15th of September. It is 6.05 p.m. And it's time for Jaren and Dave and Sean and Austin to get schooled about living on the globe by Professor Bryant Myers, BSMA Physics. I don't think the BS stands for what I think it does, but maybe it does. We'll, we'll bring everybody on. Let's say hello to everybody. First, we've got, oh, we got to get rid of that real quick. Hold on. We got a bar in the way. There we go. We've got uh, Witsit down in the corner. Awesome. Witsit, how are you, my friend? Good. How's it going, man? Looking forward to it. Should be should be good convo. Should be fun. And we've got uh, to his right, your left, Sean Hibbler from Hibbler Productions. Sean, what's up? What's up, everybody? Thanks for having me on. Uh, enjoy the show. Should be fun. And we've got, of course, Dave Weiss in the house, the man, the myth, the legend, <laughs> the Jew. Dave, welcome uh, thank to the show. You. Thanks so much. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> um, how's it going? Welcome. I'm, I'm looking forward to this. Brian, yes. uh, let me let me uh, introduce Brian. He uh, reached out to me a while ago and, uh, you know, um, he came across like really nice and he's like, you know, I believe this and that. And he wanted to have this debate and... Um, I said, you know, rather than have a debate, let's have a discussion. And he agreed to come on with all of us. So it's not four against one. It's five guys having a conversation yeah. about what they truly believe. Brian is not a troll. He is not a scammer of any way. He 100% believes what he believes. And he's going to try to school us. And, you know, we're going to try to school him. And maybe somebody will change their mind at the end of the day. Now, we all know that we have all shown that we are able to change our minds because we were all Globers at one point. So we'll see what happens. And it, we're, we're probably going to agree to disagree on many things. And we're going to let Bryant do as much talking as he can. We might get a little heated, but yeah. we're not going to call each other names because we're not little fairy boys. All right. And um Bryant, wanted, uh, what I miss, what I leave out, uh, say well, hello. I'm, I'm glad to be here. Thanks for having me on. I look forward to just kind of going through. I got the full spectrum of topics on Globe versus Flat Earth, so I think we'll be able to cover a lot of ground. And I've spent a lot of time preparing this, so it's very efficient. And, you know, and, and I, I hope, you know, at the very least, even if no one changes their mind, um, I think there's a lot of science that maybe could be like sharpened on the flat earth side because i've just heard so much that's so easy to i mean just and, basic physics stuff that's easy to debunk and then like well we'll get into it. One, one other thing which i want to say which um uh bryant is on the same side of the fence as everybody else here on things that we shall not mention on youtube <laughs> okay uh, he, he is on the the same side of the fence on everything he he you know i'm you know i, I said in a couple of emails to him I'm you're really pissing me off because I'm starting to like you. Uh, yeah. And he uh he um he just we differ on two things. Flat uh, Earth you guys and don't the moon landing. You guys don't think birds are robots, do you though? No, so, we don't. Um, okay, okay. So yeah, it's probably just <laughs> no. those two things then. Yeah. Okay, good. But there's a couple yeah. of really weird out there ones that I'm not into, but I I've I've heard enough of your well, your stuff to know that we pretty much agree on everything except these the two little things. Um and, and I, if, if we can, I would rather not get into the moon landing tonight because that's just not an area I've spent time researching enough. So I want to focus more on just the science, more on. Well, let's, you know, let's we, can talk, we can talk about the moon. I want to talk about the moon, but um, not you know, the landing it, there. Not the, not, not, not the lunar module. <laughs> gotcha, 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 gotcha. Can we not we talk can about the limb? Show. If, if you give me some time to you know do my own research and really be more thorough on that, I'm happy to do that. It too. won't be a fun show because we'll all be moon landing deniers well, and we'll be like, why are we here? Why are we here? What are we oh, echo chamber? I, I've got a couple a couple of doozies for that, but um, maybe maybe we'll bring that up with the moon. I, I, I just want to bring up a couple things that I think are pretty solid proofs that we did land on the moon. But but let's start, if you don't mind, can we just start with uh, the whole Earth? You know. Because I hear flat earthers always, or flat people that believe in flat earth. How do you like to be addressed? I, I want to be like, you know. Um, we like to be called flurfs. <laughs> <laughs> we 100% deny a globe heliocentric yeah. um, beehive yeah. well, model. 100% well, doesn't people, exist. 
Well, people that believe in flat earth. I mean, it's easier to say flat earthers, but I mean, I know that's better. What's well, a say. level and stationary plane? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. We, we're so, globe deniers is the yeah, most open, so open if minded. I say flat, if I do say this flat earthers, I want, I'm not saying that in a derogatory way. Um, okay. Good. I just, it just, an, it just kind of comes out quickly and efficiently. You're good. Um, so, um, so yeah, so that's one of the things that I, I mean, can I share my screen here now? Or, or you can, but you're ready to go. Yeah. Whenever you want to do. Go ahead. Fire in the hall. Okay. All right. So let me make sure I'm okay. Am I shared right now? Or I don't see it. You are good. Go ahead. Okay, I'm just not seeing it on the side. Oh, there it is. Okay. So, um, of course, a question that comes up a lot, a lot of, you know, flat earth believers that I've talked to, it's like, well, show me a picture of the globe. It's like, and then, of course, you get into what I feel are actual pictures. And and before you get into the photo forensic speech, I actually spent um, a whole day going through photoforensics.com and Forensically, which are two online photo forensics tools. And I actually went and found the highest resolution images of blue marble and um, earth rising and a couple others and and i also uploaded some pictures of digital pictures of myself so just my own which i know which i know is true right so in these forensic tools i was seeing some you know some aberrations even in my own pictures because digital pictures are always going to have some distortions but i couldn't following the and i'm not a photo forensics ex expert but but following you know very careful tutorials that are online i was not able to detect any obvious like you know error, an error analysis it was just nothing obvious when you made the block size large enough that if it was a fake photo there would be much much more type of obvious things there's so, ways to there's ways to cheat that though right brian like for instance no, if, yeah i mean if, if i take a photograph of a photograph it will always be perfect on air level analysis because there is yeah. no differential there it's going to look like a perfect picture even though i right. took a picture of a fake photograph right right well the, but the point is is it, I'm not, you know, I'm not claiming that these are proof of anything, but when you say they're not proof, it's the same for you guys. So your photo forensics analysis is just as un, unscientific as someone trying to prove that they're real because oh, sure. digital photos, you know, unless you get the actual original photo and you actually get a photo forensics expert and you can see, let me just. Um, and it would be true that the only pictures of earth that even science would, would claim to be true would be the ones from the moon landing, right? Everything else could not be a photograph because it would be a oh. digital representation sent as data. Okay, right, a digital, but but again, we live in a digital age, so um, I wanna to get to the, some of the more um, current, and that, I, I don't wanna focus so much on the moon landing photos, but just so you know, I mean, there is a lot to photo forensics. So when you just go out there and say that these are all, well, I've used photo forensics and I've shown that it's not true, or that it's whatever, I, I've heard you guys say stuff like that. You know, in a court of law, you actually have to hire. And I looked into hiring a photo forensics expert just to prove my point. I, they were too expensive, so I didn't. But they're expensive, first of all. That holds up in a court of law. And he told me that digital photos, there's really no way you can really prove it. But you do things like this. You, you've got to go through many different sort of, there's like many steps. You know, you can look at the photo forensics, but then you've got to like, okay, look at the metadata, look at, you know, there's there's like a lot of, a lot that goes into photo forensics. So the only way that I would believe, or I think we all should be critical here, that what you're saying that you've done photo forensics and you've shown the moon landing photos to be false, is that you have to hire a professional photo forensics expert. And I want to see those documents. I want to know who it is. And I want to see what their analysis is. Just just for one of you guys to say it is not convincing. Brian, like yeah. that, that picture you're showing us, they um, NASA has a... Um, 24 hour um, stop motion, just a whole bunch of pictures where it's spinning. Oh yeah. Yeah. How come they never show the moon in that? You know, it, it, the moon should come around and you can't say it's out of line because it, because it's oh, a they, full they, earth. The sun is behind the camera. I mean, the, the discover has shown the, the whole moon. I mean, they had the image of the moon going right past. Yeah. One time. Mm hmm. Well, still, I mean, they, you say that they have Can we pull that have. up? Can someone yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you right, think right, that one right. looks legit, Brian? Right, well, I, right. I've, I've done analysis. This, this on one. It. Yeah. Right. Well, listen, I can tell you something about that. The reason you see the red, the green, when you look at doing air analysis. Yes, yeah, the three colors. Because they had to take three, they had to take separate images because it's moving so fast and combine it into one. So, it, again, you got to realize the movement, moon is going really fast across the earth. So, the, what they did is they took three snapshots in three different colors and they combined it into one image. Okay. So that's why if you do an error analysis, what do you mean really? Why would it be really fast uh, though? Right. The moon is going pretty darn fast. 
2000 miles per hour relative to the size of the earth isn't fast if you're that far out and and and, and also why well, isn't have, have, why isn't the, the moon reason. lit why isn't the moon lit it's, it should be a full moon there's the money there, shot well there's yeah i've seen some <laughs> of those things I, I off the top of my head i can't remember but there's different you know the cameras that are taking the images if they if if you if you open the exposure too much then you end up getting overexposed on the earth if you open, if you if you do it too little then the moon gets you got to find a compromise. So, but look, we have a full Earth, and the moon and the Earth is lit up. The moon is closer to the camera, only only a quarter know, of a million but, miles again, closer. This, this is, I'm not a photographer, Dave, so right. I, I do know enough that when you guys say, "Oh, no stars on the moon," I mean, you guys know. Come on, you guys know that that's overexposure, right? The reason that you don't see stars when the moon landing photos is because if you open up the exposure, you're going to end up with it's it's going to be too bright. I mean, uh, and I so. <laughs> I, I hear what you're saying there. I, I just throw in my two cents. Um, one of our one of our guys uh, in Thailand, um, um, Phuket Word, he went out with his iPhone four, uh, yeah. iPhone four, an old iPhone, and he stood underneath a streetlight and he aimed the camera at the streetlight, yeah. so it was blinding the camera, and he could see stars behind the streetlight. Well, How come when they when they're on the moon, facing away from the sun into the dark sky? They couldn't see a single there, star. There, there are again, you could I've done you can do similar experiments and show different results too. So I I'm not going to take just one and an, an n equals one experiment. See, I don't like these and as a scientist, as got, an yeah. n equals one means I got a scientific study, and then it's just one person in the statistical but you're basically doing statistics on one person. But you pretty much agree, anybody though, like you said it's you not proof. 15. You need at least 15 for a good statistical study. I used to teach statistics, so I know that. I'm pretty Let's sure anybody on. could go anybody could go on their street with street lights, point their iPhone camera at the sky and pick up the stars. I don't think well, that's again, you can do that, but you can also if you're trying to but street lights are not you're, it's not you can't say that that's the same thing as being on the yeah, moon. Yeah, fair enough. I agree with you. Okay. I actually agree well, with you. So so like you said, well, it's not proof of anything to me. That's one of the fakest looking things I've ever seen in my life. So I, it doesn't cut that, it. For that's me. fine. That's fine. I mean you can and again, I, again, I'm not a photo friends expert, but I did spend a fair amount of time going through as much as I could. It's like, okay, there's not convincing evidence that it's not real. Can I prove it's real? No, I'm not a photo friends expert, but I'm not convinced that they're unreal is what I'm getting at. And there I, were many experts that said that the pictures from the moon landings weren't real and they went okay, in depth. Show, and did okay, whole show report. me the experts. Okay, I want to list to, those names. You can go to allis.com. They're all PhDs. Um, AUL. Okay, well, well, send me the link because there's, okay. there's plenty of people on the other side that yeah, sure. of course. But uh, you asked for people on this. Side. Okay, so so again, this is the whole picture thing. But but what I want to get into now is something called, um, you know, with 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 the new satellites that we have now around the world that are that are able to take whole disk images. Again, we say disk because you can't get a three hundred sixty degree image of the Earth, you know. Um, but they're taking these now every ten to fifteen minutes. Okay, and they're getting what's called truth observations, guys. So. You can actually, like the Himawari 8 has been able to detect fires from space and to help with sort of the direction of the fires going. So we're getting now live images from these satellites. Hold on, they're not take, live, though. They're not live. Well, no, no, they're not live, but they're taking every 50 minutes. Yeah, you got to wait. There's a delay, right? So, but, but so can I, can I uh, interject you're, here you're for... Telling, but you're telling me that hundreds of pictures every day are fake? But yes. why, why are they taking, why would it take any amount of time? <laughs> what's the point? I mean, <laughs> but what, what's the point of taking 15 minutes to get us an know, image? But, but, you can, you well, can, but no, hold on. Answer me that first though. Why would you ever accept 15 minutes late for an image of the earth? How long would I it mean, take? It's, it's got to take, but listen, you can take a picture with your clock at a certain, a, a really unique cloud formation. You can go on Himawari 8 or Go 16 and you can see that same cloud formation. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. So let you let let get, you can get truth confirmations like this from space. Uh, all right. Yeah. So so uh, I'm gonna break so your really, paradigm on this. Really you have to let me really, talk on this one. Okay, 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 okay. Okay. So we're gonna show you some research that we did um on the Himawari 8. Where how come that's hiding there? Hold on. Um transition. Here we go. So and this just, is we we found a server. Jaron, jump in at any time. Yeah. Um either whistleblower or somebody found us a, an FTP server with thousands, tens of thousands of folders on it with images from the Himawari 8. And they had a blue marble, an un, you know, a regular blue marble model. And then it had flat images of world radar. And it was showing how they wrap it around a sphere. This is a NASA FTP server. I'm just going to jump forward a little bit here. And so here's the, here's, um, one of the maps they use with the weather on okay. it. 
um, that you know that these are images that were on these servers, and then so check this out. This one is they they got the blue marble. They wrap the weather data around it. Okay. And we take it a little farther. This is the folders that we got it out of off of their FTP server. And then they added a terminator line, right? They added a terminator line. So here's the question yeah. for you. If this is a real image from the Himawari 8, how did we see the clouds over here? When we go back here, it, there are the clouds. Yeah, I, I know you, you do a lot of this kind of stuff, Dave. I would have to see the files and everything before I can comment on that because I'm, I'm not- Understood, just, but I'm let me ask you a question. Let, let, let me ask you a question. Yeah. If we showed you the server, the NASA file server, where they're loading these pictures every 10 or 15 minutes, would you be willing to concede that, yes, it could be faked? Get well, you know, I, I, it could so, be composite. You know, composite so, is, so hang on, well, hang on. Composite, Here's my question. Sure. You agree that there is radar stations all over the world that could map out on a flat map all of the weather patterns in real time. So they can take that data, and no human has to be involved with this, wrap it around a globe, Put a Terminator line on it and send it over to NASA that would every 10 or 15 minutes. I don't know, Dave. Minutes. That would take 10 or 15 minutes to do that. No, it wouldn't. It would take one second to do because <laughs> AI now can draw a picture from a description that you make and make it look photorealistic. Yeah. So this is nothing. Uh, but they're coming from the wrong direction. This is looking straight down on the earth. I mean, I, I don't buy that. Brian, can I ask you a question? Genuinely yeah. curious. So like if it, because everyone says it's live. And it's not right. I know we just it's discussed. Not live. It. It's every. But wait, it's, it's wait. Delayed, I got. I, I, I just it. got a question for you. So if it's say every ten minutes, right? Say it takes that long to send yeah. it and receive it. How come sometimes when we go check it, it's like twenty five minutes late? Yeah. It's I mean, I, I don't know this. I've I've checked that too. I don't know the servers, but I mean, you can do truth observations. I don't buy that. But the radar on the ground can take these eleven k quality photos i'm sorry guys i i mean these are eleven thousand by eleven thousand pixel photos hold on the, the, you, there's stitch lines me? you can see the stitch lines inside the himawari 8 so yeah they're not you zoom in you see where it's stitched you together see, they're, they're purple stitch website. i can show you if you want yeah zoom in well, someone zoom in here, on it. i'm gonna show you Darren, can you see you, this let, let Darren bring it up at... can you see my screen now um yeah yeah no. that, that's All your right. screen so this ahead. is himawari it's live i'm just gonna find a uh full picture of the side okay right there is pretty good so now if we zoom in here we're going to see that as you get really close, come on. Okay, so I can see that on any Himawari image you're telling me, or is it just yep. this one? No, everyone. Yes. everyone. Every, every single live. one. This is every right single now. one. This is the live. So if you go in here, you have to get real close, and I'll, I'll show you where. I'll look at it. I'll, I'll take a look at that myself, but I, again, I, you know, I'm... Yeah, see well, right let's here. take a look now. See right here, this right here? I can't really see. Well, oh, you, you can. Because it's real small for him, yeah. Do you, if you, yeah. Oh, I can, uh, yeah, see right here. Oh, wait, am I not sharing on the share screen? Oh, yeah, no, no. But, but no. You, you can you see that line. Know that even, even, I mean, you can see this line though. Yes, there's a purple line. Right I, here. I can't see it. I mean, it's really small, small for him. Yeah, but it's small for me. I can see. It. All right. Well, okay, well you can see well, right well, here I, and look at right here and here. So there's just go along the edge and you'll see there's another one there. Okay. Well, just leave okay. that as a as an open. The other top. thing, I, just I, one I, other I, thing about Himawari that I find extremely questionable is if you find on any count, you know, whatever the full moon is. Yeah. You should see the full moon come around the back of the earth and you never see it and you never see it. Of course, you're not going to see it cross in front, but behind. There's, there's, there's probably, again, I'll, I'll look at, there's probably a good reason for that. But I, again, well, I, I mean, we could always say that about anything, just, but there's not, just, what could possibly be no, a good reason why they wouldn't show you the moon going behind the earth? Well, you know, the big question that I always bring up with people is like, you know, we have these, these high resolution images that are hundreds and hundreds are coming in every day. And the flat Earth, there is no full Earth, full flat Earth disk from space photo. So of oh, course, if you guys place these standards on hold up. I mean, those high elevation. I want to go through the high elevation. I, we don't I think Earth's a disk in space, Brian. Man, Brian. Wild. Brian. Do you think that we think we're a disk in space, floating in space? in space? I'm just saying, okay. even with the even getting to a high enough elevation to where you can see the the wall. But let, let's get into that later. We, um, we think, don't think we can get up high enough to even get a couple states. And, know, and, and we don't think there's a wall at the end of the earth. No. We don't think there's a wall at the end of the earth. The Kabayashi map is real, which is actually from probably a fictional. I'm not saying the Kabayashi map is real. What I'm saying oh, yeah. is we live on a plane. Antarctica, as far as they let us go, we don't know what's beyond Antarctica. We'll get to Antarctica. Can we just move on? Because I mean, yeah, these are sure. really not showing pictures, so we can move on. Just real quick, like showing me. A I looked up. Sept this yeah, is September so, I mean, 10th. Well, there's no moon. Sometimes Dave does the witch ball thing. And I think you know, Dave, that you can get a camera and different different angles of fields of view. You can get different, the, the side, I took, I took this myself. So I've seen this in my own eyes with my own camera. So this, I'm not lifting this image from anybody. This is with my own little globe. 
And just by using a 15 millimeter and a 45, I was easily able to show that depending on, you know, Discover is 980,000 miles away. You know, some of like the Apollo shots are maybe 28,000 miles or whatever it was miles away. You're going to get different. The continents are going to look different sizes. You guys get that, right? I, I, I totally get that, but not to the extent that they show us. For example, right here, Darren, if you can make me big so he can see. Yeah, I'm just doing slightly you know, fast. This, just this is the United States right here. And so this circle uh, represents about this much land. And you're saying just because we don't oh, see, the, hold on, the, don't see the whole side. All of this other land is on the other side. Okay. Now we could argue, well, that's what I, that's what you do think it, but you know, then we see stuff like this from, from NASA. Right. And people are like, well, that's the globe. Well, that's not the globe. This is clearly a fisheye lens. You're not, we're not going to disagree on that. You got that. But this is the one that gets me right here. Um, where let me just pull it up. Hold on. Give me a second. It's got to resize this real quick. Um, so whether we're seeing the full edge or not, cause we're close, it's looking big. So maybe, maybe we're looking at that close one that you have. Um, we can measure this cause we can drive across Mexico and go across here and measure this. And it's 934 miles. Well, the diameter of the earth, the diameter, right? The diameter of the earth is 7,917 miles. This little red line here, I should be able to fit eight and a half times in between yeah. these two lines. You can't claim that that is um, because we're closer or farther well, from well, the well, earth. Look at, look at Africa right here. I mean, this is obviously, we know that the, we know the diameter of the earth and the radius. And obviously Africa looks like it's taking up the whole uh, side of the hemisphere. It's yeah. Because of the field of view. Walter Bislin has some very careful tools that you can use to get views of the earth from different fields of view from different distances and you see when you use this tool it's very mathematical you get all these differing sizes and proportions. i agree i yeah. agree he's right flat earthers are wrong whenever they say that the pack that some of the pictures look like they're different size continents that it proves they're all fake because you can't get the same effect on a sphere you're correct yeah, correct the same thing with the with the color jabe i mean you know that different cameras can take different perspectives. So just because one looks one color. I never, I never claim the color. I just say they, they all well, look horrible, but you look, talk about different colors. I've heard I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, and I never claim that. I, I say they're all different. Which one do you like? That, yeah, that's which one's real? Like, like it's just a well, joke. Yeah. Cause they're all fake. I mean, which one do you like? It's because they're different perspectives, different cameras. I mean, they just different cartoons. <laughs> well, I, I, so, um, okay, well, let's just move on. So we're, I don't think we're going to get much further than that on this okay. point. Um, so we agree. It's just not proof either way, right? We got to, we got to. Okay. Now, listen, I do know your model. I didn't mean to say you go and beyond the dome and taking a picture of the whole disc. What I meant was if the sun, and again, I don't know, I hear different things, you know, you know, Robotham and um, Eric DeBay say 3000 miles is the, is the sun above. I've heard Dave say that the sun is somewhere else and it's a projection. So I, I get, nobody seems to know. We don't know. We don't know. Yeah, and again, know. It, imagine if- I know, but, but if, if the sun is 3,000 miles up, why not just send something up there to take a look at it? I mean- Because nobody's ever been 3,000 miles. miles up. You can't even well, get the but, jet but, fuel but, but, to go uh, 60 miles up. The government has to approve you to even shoot a rocket 30 miles up. You can't just go 3,000 miles up. I don't even- go three, I, I've studied rocket propulsion at Georgia Tech. You can go 3,000 miles up. It's illegal. Um, I'm saying it privately, maybe, but I'm just saying there's probably ways- to if, if if this was really maybe maybe the government will let us yeah but but you should be able to get high enough so well anyway so let me is this kind of i mean now i i know you guys think there's maybe other lands outside of the wall but but just this can can we can we can i agree can you agree with me this is kind of the map that you guys use sort of i wouldn't i think i wouldn't base the I mean, uh, continent sizes uh, you know are, well, that's I wouldn't the thing say they're is, correct. Like, you guys can't seem to agree on like which map you want to use. I mean, so when you they say that, though, hold Europe, on a second. Bro, do, you, do you realize that if when you guys discovered the globe or whatever, that every single mission, every single map that was drawn was government funded completely and totally? There's no private uh, research going out there and figuring out what the shape of the continents were. It's all government funded. So to come at us and say, well, you don't have everything mapped is ridiculous. And yeah, we don't have any government assistance. So I know, but we've mapped the world. I'm not trying to be, again, I'm well, not you think you've mapped the world. We, well, when you say we, who is we? You said we went and we mapped Again, the world. Who, who was we? You know, to just to just disregard like everything that history has told us. I mean, I I agree that maybe not there's everything. some distortions in history, but I mean, we, right. you know, science and and you know, I'm, I'm not a cartographer. I'm not a map expert. Right. I just want to know like what map you guys use. Well, well, what? here we don't we don't have an exact map. For me, uh, I'm a I'm a fan of the Gleason's map. This is a representation of the Gleason's map on my clock yeah. app. And and what's that? 
here the the one thing I want to say is um, whatever time of day it is, if you look look at where the sun is. So when the sun's over here, I can call my friend PK up and say, "Hey, what time is it? Where's the sun?" He'd be like, "Oh, it's noon, and the sun's right above me." You know, and then six hours later, I call somebody in you know over here in Africa, and they'd be like, "Oh, the sun's right above me." Right. So it, there's something truthful about this because the sun goes around, and this shows you where the sun is at noon for each location. Right. Right, Which, right, but the thing is, that's not accurate because you can point like Wolfie sixty twenty did a video where he shows your app. No, he's wrong he, because Wolfie doesn't understand how east and west work on the globe. So. Well, I mean, I, well, we I can show you. I, you, show you. Any, I think I think anybody can find a way to go outside and, and point and see that the sun is not exactly. Let, the let me ask you a question. Yeah, but you can, you, think that. can you can you point west right now? Well, if I had a again, we can get a compass and do a test. We you don't can't have point exactly. west. West is a is right where you are anything past that is south okay well i, I don't know do you want me to show that. you do you want me to show you yeah. I know you let, let jaron show you a quick demonstration and then we'll go right back is that okay or you you, you want to press on i just, I just want to show I, you I, why i don't want to press on i don't let, let, let him press on right. okay. yeah let's let, let him get a little so bit we can more just go so i mean uh, the gleason map and i know you guys i mean the, the point that i have is this is an azimuthal a projection of a sphere and i've heard dave say that no the sphere is a is a you, you can't it doesn't go that way. Projections from higher dimensions to lower dimensions, you lose information when you have 2D. So you can't just say, oh, we took the 2D. And Wait, so you're saying if, 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 let's say we discovered a flat Earth and we all got together and said, hey, let's make this so it's a sphere. You're saying it's impossible for no, us to I'm put that on a this sphere? Is a perfect, this is a perfect as a muscle project. Well, of course, wouldn't it be though? You, hold on, you're not listening to what I said. If we showed up, saw flat land, decided to put it on a sphere, then if people later in life took the sphere and laid it out as a flat map, that's all possible. Okay, but you, you do guys you guys do know that there's been globes around. I mean, I've heard you say that the oldest globe is 1492. Okay, oldest fine, globe. but I'm just saying that I've heard you guys say. I mean, well, I studied a lot of flat Earth history, so I do know I do know the fact that. But Aristophanes and those guys, they knew that the Earth was a sphere, and they just no, nobody ever decided to make. I one. know, but 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 the but the geocentric model and the Ptolemaic model was even in the darkest of the dark ages, the educated world. Agree, you know, embrace the globe, even though they thought it was the center of the universe. And this is a very well documented historical fact. And you know, I, I disagree when you guys say, "Oh, yeah, it was taught in school." So why were we <laughs> taught about Columbus sailing the ocean blue and discovering the Earth was oh, round? Well, you no, know, listen, I, that's actually based on um, what's the author's name that wrote the book. That's actually a fictional account. He actually fictionalized Columbus's. There's this mm. really good so why one guy wrote a no. book? One guy no, wrote no, a book, I, and then it showed up in schools, and it showed up in textbooks. No, no, that's I know that that's. That's, that is an unfortunate thing that happened, but he never sailed across to, to, to discover the world wasn't was flat. I mean, he, that was never. He, they knew the world was a globe. In fact, what they thought, though, because this is before Newton, they thought that they had to go over the hump, and they actually underestimated the size of the globe. But so Aristophanes they, knew it. They, they did believe it was a globe. Well, I know, but maybe they didn't have the. I mean, uh, seventeen hundred uh, years later, they didn't. Well, no, they they they, they had the idea of the globe. But they thought that they were going to have to like go over the hump, you know, to get to the, to the. So they had this idea of the antipodes, which they didn't understand the South Pole. But then, of course, that all when Newton came along, that we understood it was gravity. So, um, hmm. but I mean, but 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 what? there's pretty good historical evidence that the, the educated world since since Eratosthenes so educated knew that they the thought world, they were going over a hump. It's pretty well, the proof they needed back well, then. No, 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 That's no, all, that was the only proof. Was now, going, wait a, now, wait a, now, wait a minute. Going down. They didn't have Newton's equations. That, you got to realize that oh. they didn't have the science to understand this yet. And yes, we can we can look back and say, well, why did they believe in the antipodes? It's because they didn't know gravity at this point wasn't known. Okay. Yeah, but it was a religion. It right. was that the perfect well, shape was a sphere. So the Greeks proposed it philosophically. It was an know, ontological but, premise but there, that the but perfect shape was. There hasn't been a time where we've embraced the flat Earth since. You got, you Bri got to go back Brian, and hold, hold on a second. You, we don't know anything past the early 1900s, right? There's no one left to tell heard, us. And, you, and, and you, you've, you've seen my interview with Ruth. And right. there's, there's people that say they were taught flat earth and globe earth in American public schools in the 1950s, right? So this is, and no, this is not what not we, we hold on a second. We didn't have instant communication. We had barely, you know, back then we, you, you could barely make a phone call across the state. Um, easily. So when they were <clears throat> switching over, you know, what people believed, you know, like if they did it I here in Connecticut, some people in California, they wouldn't know what's going on. It could be a decade before they found out. Oh, what's the name of that town? There was one town in the 1800s Zion. that didn't embrace the, 
what's it? Zion. Zion, yeah. That historically was the only town I could find that was well documented to have embraced the flat earth and their education. I don't think that the educational system, I, I think I don't, I just don't buy it. We, we have been teaching the globe earth for quite some time. And there, it, it didn't start in the 1900s. All right. Well, that doesn't I mean, mean I, anything. I, I, I saw the interview with that lady, but she was 102 years old, Dave. And I mean, I did. I wasn't. It wasn't very convincing. This doesn't mean anything. I, if they were teaching the globe for seven thousand years, that doesn't mean it is a globe. So it doesn't. Oh, mean- I, okay, I agree. But did, but you guys just say that it's you know they've been teaching flat Earth up until the nineteen hundreds. That's just patently false. Yeah, I don't say that. Uh, okay, sorry, well, yeah, they were on. a minority whenever Aristotle supposedly existed. There's no primary documentation for that, so we okay. we were just going to move on to. Okay, like, we can move on. You already agreed that you know this is not like a real map. Um, we did. So I just oh. I, I just want to talk about. What, we want to talk, talk about that. I did. T- I don't know. We, I didn't know we agreed to this. Oh, the Kabayashi. Well, you bring up Kabayashi in the documentary Next Level, so that's the only reason why I put it there. So where? So it's been proven that it's uh, a, a fake. Well, you, you got to take in the context of the art. This is the this is the article in the um, Hawaiian Gazette. Is that this was kind of the lost world sort of? They, they, oh, okay. It's kind of the, the time of that that era where this the lost world was a big thing to talk about, and everybody was fascinated by it. So you had some of these fantastical accounts that sounded real that were published in newspapers, mm-hmm. but yet we're mm-hmm. still based on a fictional thing. So well, you maybe it was real. Sometimes ancestry passes but, down but real this stories. Was the brother, this was the brother of the Kabayashi that wrote, that drew this, and he did it just by hand. I mean, so it's when you really look at the evidence, it's just not very convincing that it's really based on anything real. Mm-hmm. But Aristophanes with no primary documentation is convincing. I, actually, the Aristotle, we can get to the sticks and shadows experiment, which I know you guys like to make fun of, but it's actually pretty darn convincing. But it's not that we're making fun of it. It's that you're bringing up to our attention that this article in this newspaper, which, by the way, is hidden from the masses. Let's not act like everyone knows about this. OK, so this is hidden from the masses for a reason. But you're going to say or say, oh, you know what? This isn't real. It's just in this, some stupid paper. Well, everything you're reciting so far is in a stupid paper know, written I by know, some stupid guy. So. The Rockefellers. Right. Okay, yes. Right. Okay, right. And again, I, real. You know that I, we've already established how I feel about the Rockefellers. We don't need to go there. Um, okay. Well, so, you know, the globe uh, idea was disliked. I mean, the, the teachers were well, fighting teaching this in school. I, I, again, that's not, I don't believe that history. So newspapers, I, okay. So well, let's start I, I, all, all newspapers I'm is, is if you're going to say something like that, you have to have more evidence interviewing a 102-year-old lady. No, there are newspaper articles posted at the time that talk about them. So it's all, this is all sort of like not I'm real concrete you, anything. I, I looked and all I could find was Zion. It was the only place I could find that was teaching flat earth. There is really no, no evidence that it was being taught at all going back. It, to it, the, who cares? Doesn't okay, prove right. either okay, way. Cares, but you guys do say that, so that's the only reason I brought it up. So, yes, because that—that's what my research led me to. Yeah, there's evidence okay, that okay, there that it's not as old as the mainstream portrays, and there's no primary documentation for Aristophanes, etc. But who well, cares? Either way, and, and actually, let, actually Pliny, no Pliny, there is actually historical evidence when you look back. <clears> I, I, I will. One I, guy out of the whole world. It's still right. a story that you were told. So, so hold on, hold on. Let let let. Let, so Brian, Brian, all the history is a story. Go, yeah, go, you go, get to well, choose to believe it or not believe it. When, when stories uh, don't make sense, know. like you know, talking about well, how they got me, they got the distance to the sun by just guessing that the Venus was the same size as Earth. Venus. That's the pretty dis- lucky. No, the distance to the sun, you can find the elongation from Venus during its orbit. You can actually look for the elongation where it's at its longest point, and then you can take that when we actually have done radar and bounce. Wait, it no, 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 no. You're, missing, you're missing what I'm saying. I'm talking about no. when they first got the distance. How did they figure it out? They figured it out by guessing that Venus was the same size of Earth. And they got lucky that it was. The casino. So, okay, okay, but I'm saying, but we've been able to accurately. Oh, this. now, yeah. Again, but this is yeah. what we're saying is that their stories are just stories. Like, for instance, the same thing happens with um, how they got the distance to the moon or how they tried to get the distance to the moon back in the BC era, where they say, oh, they saw a half moon. They knew that there must be a 90 yeah. degree angle to the sun. And then they just estimated what the angle from the Earth to the sun would be. Nobody could do that today. Right. Well, I, okay. I mean, I, we, we've got more accurate ways to measure it now, but Allegedly, uh, yeah, but the story yeah. is that they I, I, did I don't, it back I don't then. disagree that there's been a lot of, you know, a lot of things through history where they didn't know, they didn't understand what was really going on. I mean, this is why we evolve and we learn things and we, um, but yeah, the, not the, evidence the, the either thing way. I really want to bring up now is, um, Aristophanes, please. Not, not the Aristophanes. Which yeah, let's talk about things that aren't hidden and buried. Like, so wait, okay, wait a minute. So you wanted you wanted to talk about Aristophanes, and then I had something. You know, we have a few things we want to say in that. So, do you want to bring that up now, or you want to go somewhere else? Well, um, 
I wanted to talk about Aristosthenes a little bit later, but if you want, if you really want to talk about it now, we can talk about it now. No, just it's go with you. whatever, whatever you want to do, well, whatever your order is. If it's in your order, just go with your the order. Only, the only thing I wanted to say is um, about Aristosthenes really was that if you have two data points, I agree, you can get it to work on a flat earth. I actually am in agreement. Okay. If you get three or more locations, especially like this one study that was done in 37 places around the world, what you end up with, if you map it out mathematically, and, and, ma and this, is, this is one of the points I want to get across, is mathematical models can be confirmed. You guys yeah, don't but have back then, hold on. But Sagan tells the story of Aristophanes proved it. Everybody talks about Aristophanes proved it. This is why the world knew that the Earth was round. But you yeah. just said right now, oh, but it also works with two data points on a flat Earth. So you can admit that. Okay, but, but, but they didn't do three point data point. points. They didn't do but three. They did two. Right. So that story's a lie, right? The story. I mean, Aristophanes did two, and that doesn't prove anything. I mean, the, well. And Carl Sagan in Cosmos no, no, drilled no, it into no, every no, kid's no, no, head. Wait, 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 wait. Two does work. All I'm saying is if you get a local sun at the right distance, right. you can also get it to work on a... On a, on a right. So you're telling me Aristophanes but, believed, even though he believed that the sun went around the earth, he thought it was an infinite distance away? I like, I like to stick more with like the here and now. An experiment right. by, oh, right, by, of course. By, 37, by 37 people around the world, where they... And here's the thing when you do the mathematical model flow of Aristosthenes is you end up with what's a, a linear you end up with a linear curve versus a, versus a power curve so it turns out and, and when they did this data when they mapped 37 different places it mapped it matched perfectly almost perfectly the what would happen on a, when you model this on a globe versus a flat earth you have to assume a distant sun with how did you how, you have to assume the sun's 93 well, million I, miles I, I, I didn't even want to get in i mean that's just more than i wanted to get into but also well, that's part of the base assumption to but do i'm it. saying there is no way you can get three or more data points to work on a flat earth it just there's doesn't no work. way no, but there's no there's way to no triangulate way. the sun that, that, anyway right no, can, you, it you actually show, does work. Can you triangulate? Does work. Can you triangulate the sun, Brian? Today, you can. You can. Well, I'm not. You know, I mean, well, the answer is no. But they, they they can't triangulate the sun today. So they also don't have the ability to triangulate. Now their excuse is it's just too far, so they can't get the. Well, again, accurate. you can measure the distance of the sun through you know through knowing how far Venus is away. And then you, you can get the angle. How do you know how you far tell Venus me, is yeah. away? <laughs> tell me how you get they, that. They, they, bounce, they have done it. They bounced radar off of Venus. Who's they? Okay. You've seen it? I've, I've yeah, seen radar, that. I, again, Wait. You, guys, you, guys just dis, you guys disregard everything. Do we have background honestly. radiation coming from the sky anyway? How do you differentiate between what you sent and what's already coming? And, and Brian, you're taking that you've never done it, and you're taking the word of NASA, a government-run agency, that you know they, that you know that they're lying to us. You guys, you guys don't even know how far your sun is away. I mean, yeah, we that's don't true. we don't make claims yeah. we can't prove. That's okay, the point. We're got, falsifying we've got that no claim. model. The thing is, with science, we have a mathematical model, and we find the results fit. The doesn't model. mean it's true. Science isn't math. I mean, any, what I mean by that is, when you look at the distance away, it all matches perfectly with the heliocentric model. So. So it's not that we're just using, using it radar. Does, it, does, it does. They made it match perfectly to teach it to you in kindergarten. They, of and actually, course, they change it all the time. They change it all the time. They just changed Polaris. And, they I, said I, it's and 100 just one thing. Closer. And now the moon's in our atmosphere. Okay, I'm right? not going to yeah. be able to get through any of this if you right. guys keep But just okay. about right. the moon real quick. When they launch a, a, a beam at the moon to get a reflection beam, they say they send one quadrillion photons and they get one back. One. One, one photon out of four quadrillion. And, but and again, that, come what on. the distances we have, if you understand, you know, Kepler's laws, you can actually see that it all works perfectly on the heliocentric model. All right. So yes. you, you wanna, we can it's maybe a, move on because I don't think we'll ever get through it. Like just okay. reifying the model isn't proof of it. Mathematic. Okay. I can show you a super. Well, my, my initial plan was just to kind of go through the slides and have open for discussion because we're never going to get anywhere near through any of this. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, agree. I think we kind of let him present some of his stuff. Go, go ahead. We can agree to disagree on that. Yeah. yeah just let's agree to disagree. Um, so. This is something that, I mean, I, I've yet to hear, I've heard you guys try to explain it, um, but there are direct flights. You guys realize that, right? There are yes. direct flights by, by, by two airlines, not just the one which you claim is like government. I, I've heard some, some of you say it's like government people and five co coats of paint on the plane. Didn't you say something Seven. Like that, David? Seven. Seven. Okay. Right. But I mean, you really, because you, you guys do realize that if these direct flights exist, which, you know, Wolfie 6020. Which they do. Which they do. And you can actually go to your, you see the great circle route. And you can, you know, if you're a pilot, you can load this in and see that it does follow a great circle. And you can calculate the time that it takes. Of course, they, they have all this in their flight plan. And, you know, you can download this flight data at um, flightaware.com. Mm -hmm. So you can mm -hmm. actually look and you can actually see for yourself, like the flight data at flightaware.com. Yeah, so we get that from a free account. And so, 
But if you put this, if you map this exact route on the flat Earth, it ends up going this absurd distance because if you go, you know, again, you guys say, well, it stops in Los Angeles. But then if you do that, we can actually see the time it would take to go to Los Angeles and back again. And I mean, you guys agree, right? If I, if I offered to pay a ticket for one of you to come with me from Los Angeles and we take, we all take our own GPS, right? And we're able to time the, how long The global takes. positioning system? We want it to know where we're around the globe. Radius right. value. That's going to help us. Okay. So, but again, you can do visual proof. There's a lot of things you can do. So basically you're going to deny everything, right? That's pretty no, we don't, we don't deny don't anything. We believe reification fallacies. If you're begging know, the but, question, but, it's useless. But so, how can you explain this? You guys can't I've explained explain it. This. We've explained it many we times. We can. There okay, is, explain it then. Okay. How so here's, here's one from, thing you need to tell me. So on, on a trip from Sydney to Santiago, if right. you're talking about on the globe, that when you do the mathematics on it and it comes out to say 500 miles per hour, the plane's going. Then yeah. you look at the at the winds aloft. You look at the jet streams there, and you realize that they go right. one fifty. Hold on, they go one fifty to two hundred miles per hour. So that means the plane was going three hundred miles per hour and taking a two hundred mile per hour jet stream to get there in the amount of time. Doesn't it make more sense that the plane would go its maximum speed of five hundred to take advantage of the extra speed and actually be going seven fifty? Well, know the time. It's like it's fourteen. It's fourteen hours one way and twelve hours the other because it, because yeah, there's wind. The world has wind currents where. You know, I've, I've driven back and forth across the coast. I know it's faster one direction than the other. I mean, but but these but not twice the time though. I mean, these who said twice the about, time? Why would it have well, to be twice the time? No, it would be twice the time if you took if you took if you map this exact route out. Which again, you can download the flight data and put these coordinates into the flat Earth map. You end up with a route that goes like this. And this, okay, so it's this well done. The, the GPS uses the the globe in contention, bro. It's well documented that planes can go over 800 miles per hour. It's documented mainstream that planes have been clocked going over 800 miles per hour. That little app you're using doesn't actually That's get ground gonna, speed; it gets airspeed, which is relative to the static pressure around the plane. So it's begging the question. Well, the air the air moves with the earth. I'm sorry, but you know, we'll get into that later. Oh, okay. no, no, that's not what he was saying. Because that's not what he was saying. The atmosphere. We'll, we'll get we'll get to that. Hey, so, hey wait, so, Brian, Brian, let me just interrupt for one second here. We're going to let you talk as much as you want, but when we interject, let us just get our quick point across without interrupting and then go okay. right back to you. Okay? And, and okay. let me just say one real quick. You also say like, oh, you guys are just going to reject everything. But you have to realize from our point of view, everything we're telling you, you're rejecting without even thinking about it. You're not even, know, you're not even you, entertaining you our explain. thoughts. Okay. But how do you explain this? I just did. We just did. I just did. And no, you weren't you even didn't. listening. What do you mean? What, what's wrong but with what I said? Can't. So the, uh, again, the plane that takes, this, hold on. You can map this distance on the flat earth and you get a ridiculous arc. This why do we have to fly all the way out yeah, there? Why would they yeah. fly Based out on there. the software you're putting this in. Who, who, who no, made all this? No, this is not this? the software. You can go This is the, not the flight route that, that we no, know happens you can, with these two. So we had, we had, Brian, we had somebody take, we had somebody take that right. flight and they did it live on my channel. They, they right. live streamed their flight. Go Brian, ahead, I, I, I'm sorry. I'm showing right now. Max, Max, this was Max Egan. He did it and he clocked. He said his compass, he was expecting to be heading um, south or west, you know, but he was going, uh, he was going northwest and then west and then southwest and then south. And we, okay. we, we, we clocked, we, we check, checked it out on a flat earth map and it makes perfect sense. Here's the plane right here. And it goes, it's just going uh, northwest, northwest and right there, west for a split second. Then it's going southwest, southwest. And south and his compass readings, his actual physical compass readings matched the flat earth map, but we're way off. Did not match yeah. the globe map. No, it didn't it, match what was on the back of the seat in front of okay, him. Okay, well, send, it, me, send me his information. I'll take a look at it. But I, right. I've seen a lot of contrary but, flights and, that have been done and been documented very well. And um, just, just one more, one more thing 40, 40 seconds. Um, we don't know how fast airplanes are flying. It is very well likely that, you know, to hide this information, on one way, they're going 400 miles an hour, and the other way, they're going 800 miles an hour to, you know, to um, make these times. You know, you know, I always notice a plane is like, oh, we took off an hour late, but we're going to make up that time in the air. They have the ability to make up that time in the air. The last thing is, think about this. On a globe, on a globe, northern hemisphere on the top, southern hemisphere on the bottom, go find a flight route between any two northern airports that dips below the equator. You won't be able to find one. They go north to north to north, and they never dip below the equator because that doesn't make any sense on the globe. But on know, a but you know, there's cabotage laws, right? I mean, you can't if you're an airline in the northern hemisphere, you have to go to the southern hemisphere to go back to the northern hemisphere. No, th th there's all of the flights. I, at least I haven't found one yet. It doesn't mean that, that there aren't. Um, but all they all make 
the line, the, the pretty much the line you would think. But in the South, deep South, going across the globe, they go all the way up into the North many times and all the way back down. Well, that's because of cabotage laws, but they also have direct flights. So, you know, like I said, this. No, I'm talking direct flights, but they'll they'll go. The, I mean, some of them are direct, right? Some of them stop, but they go they go these ridiculous routes that make no sense. And just in the just in the south, not in the north. Okay. Let me say one thing, Brian. Let me just show you one thing. So the other thing that's weird to me is there's always these cases where I'm like, well, if they have this, it would be hard to, for us to explain. One of those was undersea cables running from Australia or New Zealand to South America, because when you go look at the map of all of our undersea cables, there's no cables that run across there. So then I said, that's peculiar. Why wouldn't they have cables running there? Then I went and looked at, well, let me look for cruise ships. There's no cruise ship that goes from New Zealand or Sydney to South America. Why? Because it's way bigger of an area than they're to- than we've been told. So if a cruise ship went out there, they're going to get, you can't make a cruise ship get a jet stream like a plane. A plane can grab an extra 200 miles per hour. A, a cruise Again, ship can't. I, I have to research it. I don't, okay, well, I'm I mean, telling you, so don't just dismiss it, but think about it and that's research it. That's a great answer. answer. No, that's great a great answer. answer. Let's move on. It, good answer. Great answer. Yeah. yeah. You have to research so, it. Great. I, I didn't create this little, I mean, again, to me, it's an impossible flight. I, I've looked at it many times. I, I don't buy your explanations. There's just no way on the flat earth you can you can follow the actual coordinates that are in a flight log. And, and when you actually enter them, so this is not made up. This is actually entering when you actually enter the coordinates on, not here, but it's, it comes out something like this. Yeah, but you a plane a, just is put a, in. You, you, could, distance, you just you put, put in the GPS distance. route. You just put in the route and it just goes. The plane just flies itself. So it's, it's like dead reckoning. Right? Now, into it. now, if you said this, the, the planes are going supersonic speeds, then that could possibly make up the difference. They literally do. Admittedly, mainstream, they go over 800 okay, miles per hour in the way. north. I mean, that, that's that's the what we're way. saying I mean, is the way okay, that they can. That's the, it. The jet streams down there in the south. But again, you got to show me proof that they're going that fast. Uh, the, the jet streams. It's proof public that information. Okay. Yeah, the jet streams go 250. Then you'd be, you know, it's a sonic, you know, there's a thing called a sonic boom that, you know, you have But they can do it over the ocean. You won't do it on the ocean. No, but jet streams because of static pressure around the plane. People above will hear it, though. People above will hear it, though. Above what? Not out in the middle of the ocean. This one's out in the middle of the ocean. A plane goes. Well, they're, they're not going to hear anything. If they got static these, pressure. If they got to do these speeds, then there's going to be places where they're going to be going over land. Oh, yeah, above just water. Going, no, no, unless you could get out. Going, you could get out over really, the water. You would get out over the water and then really take fast. off fast. All right. Okay, let, let's just move on. To, let's okay. move on. Okay. We're not going to make any headway here. Um, so one little thing I just wanted to, um, again, I, I, I hope we can move on because I don't think that we're going to come to a come to any type of consensus on that. But you know, no. send me send me some stuff. You know, I'll take a look at. Um, that, that's a good answer. Yeah, we like it. No, I, I I look at stuff, you but know, you I'm have not, to have but you have to have an open mind. If you look at stuff with the already preconceived, I, I do have. A, well, we're saying things, and you're not even listening. We just gave you an explanation for how the plane can do it in the south, and you're just like, no, 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 I don't think that it's impossible. I think it's impossible. We're like, I, I, again, just, I spent a lot. I don't know how that. I mean, the, the faster speeds is the only way it's possible. Then that's that, what we that, said. I, I that we it's po- everyone knows that happens yeah. in real life, though. It's so. I mean, openly admitted. Supersonic. I mean, like fourteen hundred. No, no, no. It's not supersonic. No, if the wind, if the and if That's the eight hundred and nine hundred would do it. Nine hundred would. Nine hundred would do it. Nine hundred would do it. Well, not when you do that distance. You do it. You're, you're drawing a big view. You're drawing that line. So nobody who flies in that route ever sees Antarctica. You would see Antarctica from that route. Nobody's ever that seen Antarctica no from that. No, actually, south. they do. Actually, again, and if you no, they do not. Go look no, at the go look the at the ice. globe. Wait, wait. Go back to where you oh. had the data points and tell me how somebody sees Antarctica from oh, those no, data points. Not on that. And, and this, oh, you now you're see, changing. You see, you see the when they oh. when you look when you look at these two. Hold studies, on, that picture on the right. Nobody's ever taken that flight route. What is that? <laughs> this is not drawn as it should be drawn. This is not the great circle correct drawing. So what okay. are you showing us? If you for? look at his and story yet, though. He fly. Great circle routes on the no, meridian. I, no, are actually, impossible this might anyway this might be. It's, it's just the perspective of the. Um, no, that's not. So, is that what what's that right? white thing on the bottom? What is that there? <laughs> okay. No, like the white circle. What am I looking at? The top picture. Well, let's just let's just move on. I, is, is that supposed to be Antarctica? Okay. Yeah. It's yeah. like a cartoon. All right. It's not a cartoon. Duh. They I mean, should have a real. They should have a real photo. I know, but you I, think so, bro? You know, Dave, your 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 app has Antarctica on it. You know, you do realize that, right? Around the outskirts. How so? I I have your app and I went to Antarctica to look for someone, but it would kept loading and loading. Somebody told me that they found some people in Antarctica that downloaded oh, your app. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, we have, NASA, we, we, NASA. We have two guys in, in Antarctica. Okay. One of them at KC Station, and the other one was out in the middle of nowhere. Here he is, right here. Right there, yeah. Yeah. So I, I right. And I I was communicating with with <laughs> for a while, and um, it was quite interesting. Okay. Mm. So I mean, again, you know, these so. 
what I want to just go over some high altitude stuff is one of the things I've noticed that flat earthers or flat earth believers don't seem to understand. Oh, I don't have my drop with you. Oops, Bulb sorry deniers. guys. I didn't know that. Well, deniers, sorry, whatever you want to call it, be called. Is, is the Wait, sheer what? scale of the earth. Okay, so, sorry. so um, I don't know if you can, can you see me right now or, or am I? Just, we got it. Sorry guys. Good. Am I, am I sure? Uh, my, yeah, we can see. You are now. I had you. the wrong screen up, but go ahead. Okay, well, anyway, I'm, the, the amount of water on planet Earth, and I did the math, there's one one thousandth amount of water as there's volume of land, okay? You, mm -hmm. And so that's literally two drops on a bowling ball. I'm not a bowling ball, a billiard ball. So if you take two drops of water and just smear it around, okay, that's not much water, okay? The Earth is huge. It's not like this over here. I don't know if you can see my screen where you'd have all this water fill on the smaller earth and it looks like it's a lot of water. So, the spins so but wait, it's a wait lot a of water. Wait, it's wait a, a lot of water. Period. It, it, it's a lot of water. If you think about it, they, it you are agreement that 70% of the earth's surface is surface. ocean. Sur okay. Okay. All right. And, and, and let's say the average depth of that ocean is only 300 feet. Okay. So if it's 70%, let's just say we'll, we take half of that 300 feet and put it on the land. All right. That's 250 feet of water covering the entire globe that's a significant amount of water I know, it goes I, down I, to I, seven I, miles no what you're not you're not you're missing my point here the volume of the earth compared to the water is only there's only one one thousandth the volume of water because when you take i mean just do the math you can do the math and see I, all right you're well, talking about so the, what, whole, the whole the earth construction the whole yeah. earth well, the, construction the relevance is because when you get into these earth from space pictures um well in like in images like this when you guys talk about the atmosphere the atmosphere is incredibly thin. It's yeah, actually only this is, this is this is to That's scale. A cartoon. This is not a cartoon. Okay, this what? is if you Wait, draw. That what is a cartoon. Watch, what are we looking what? at? Right? That is a cartoon. At? That is a cartoon. No, no, I'm, this isn't meant to be an actual. This oh. is meant to show you that the. Why not? Then sure. let's get some real ones. You have any? Okay. Okay. But fair okay. enough. Go ahead with the with the visualization. Just, let me just go through the slides, and then we can have discussion. Sure. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, so this yellow line here is the Carmen line. This means that. 90 over 99 percent of the atmosphere is below this line mm -hmm. so pretty much when you have images like this that show the atmosphere looking so big and that you know how could the atmosphere be going this fast up here and so well it's not that big it's actually only relative to the size of the earth it's only this little bit so the point i'm trying to make is that when you got these you know these pictures at high altitude you're not going to see much curvature i mean the curvature is there but it's if the earth is huge, right? Mm -hmm. You're not so, going to see any so yes, curvature. So I agree. You know, the Red Bull skydive, that was a fisheye lens. It's clearly way too much curvature. So mm -hmm. right. know, it, it goes both ways. And then, you know, you agree the if the earth was flat, you wouldn't see any curvature either. Well, no, it, what you guys do is you cherry pick images from, and I actually have looked at the actual originals of all of these and you can actually see, if I can just load this here. Um, and That's a, a simple a, question, a, though, Brian. If the Earth was flat, a flat level plane, there would be no curvature, correct? But I know, but you guys don't have any actual good images to show no curvature, except these mm -hmm. ones that are cherry picked. All the hot air balloon ones without a fisheye lens show no curvature. And, and, and also, it's, it's, show it's no actually curvature. the opposite. I'm sorry, it's actually the opposite. The what? ones that are done very carefully. When you center the frame on the horizon, you guys realize oh, that, Oh, that right? happens a lot that, from a balloon. They center the frame. Let, let them finish. Let no, them, no, no, you, finish. you center the frame on the horizon. And you always see a curvature. And Walter, and, and the cool thing about Walter Bislin's calculator is that you can use a model, a mathematical model, that validates what the actual curvature is. So we know how big the Earth is, and we can model how it should look from a certain altitude. And what we see is what we get when we properly center the camera frame on the horizon. So you guys do realize fisheye lens. Let me get this. Not, yeah, go ahead. Dave. In, the, in the middle of the actual photo, or the middle of the fisheye lens. It's, per, it's straight is straight and curve is curve. And right down the middle, same thing. But above and below, that is where it gets distorted. Have Brian. you seen any of these without a fisheye lens? That's what I'm asking you. Well, well the fisheye lens, yeah, but, without well, the mage project. Without. Yeah, yeah there are, there are yeah. There's but no let's, curves. Let's say this too. Right. You, do no, know that every, you do know that every single true. camera and every single eyeball is spherical and has uh, problems with that, right? You're never going to get a flat image, period. That's I've awesome. heard I've heard Bob say that. That's when I was. That's when I threw my hands up and just quit debunking flat Earth. When they said, "Oh, if we go out to space and there's in, in the window and it's my eyeball is always going to see a curve," it's like, "Okay, no. how, how can you debunk?" Well, that? no, for no. He's said saying that. that you see in a circle, so you would see that. And then also, it's called Rayleigh scattering. You get circumference of light, a radius of light over a flat surface. You would potentially see that. And in addition, Neil deGrasse Tyson tells the whole world that you wouldn't see curvature oh, from Neil sixty deGrasse, miles wait, up. No, no, hold on. 
Neil deGrasse Tyson was wrong. 63 miles. All right. I don't know why okay. you guys think well, Neil deGrasse Dave. Tyson is somehow the so, mouthpiece look, for all of Because he's your oh, spokesperson. That's what, that's all right, what right, guys, no, guys, guys, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah. So, so Brian, the, do you realize that on a flat earth, you wouldn't see curvature? You, you, we can agree on that. And yeah. on a globe earth, if you think you see curvature, like you're showing us those pictures, you have to yeah. follow that curve around. And by the time you turned around, you'd be pointing at the ground. But that's not on a globe how you would see because it would remain at the same level. So we see in a straight, we see in a, um, in a, in the same distance in all directions. Radius. So whether it's 10 miles or 100 miles, we're seeing that same distance at 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, all the way around. So we see in a circle. Right. So here's my guy standing here. And this is where he sees. This is the limit of his vision where the sky meets the land. And he's seeing in a circle. And if you carefully look at that, draw a line across it. Here's the curvature that you're seeing. It's just the limit of your vision. You're drawing right, a wait, line. Hold on. I want to know why he shakes his head at that and says no. So what, what about what Dave just said you don't agree with? You don't think we see in a circle? Well, this this is what you can't you're just seeing. say no when he, uh, I, I, on a flat. Just think of this. If the earth was if the earth was flat. And we see, you know, the, where the, the sky meets the land, that's the limit of your vision. Well, if it's 10 miles or 20 miles or 50 miles, whatever it is, at one at a, one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock, I'm seeing that. But you draw a straight line. You're drawing a straight line. And the point right in front of me is is the 50 miles away. And as it goes out, it's getting farther and farther and farther away beyond where I can see. So you're drawing an imaginary line like this. And this is your curvature of a flat earth. And by the way, this doesn't prove the Earth is flat. This is this is this is is what you would see on a flat Earth, but that's also what you would see on a globe. But that's a fact. I, what law of perspective is that, though? I mean, what? What do you mean, law of it, perspective? Do you are you telling me you, you can you, see you're further? Telling me that you're telling me that that's if that's a flat Earth, you're gonna you're gonna see curve on a flat Earth like that. This is yes. we, we, you can so. If it, let's say there's a cumulus cloud day, and all those clouds are sitting there, I don't know, five thousand feet above your head, and then 20, 30 miles in the distance, those clouds are touching the ground. Well, that's the limit of your vision, okay? Because you can't that's see. The it's the convergence point. So that's yes. the oh. limit of your vision. So I whether that's, but, but so it's 30 miles that way. It's 30 miles that way. It's 30 miles that way. And if you connected all those dots, you're drawing a big no, no, that's, circle. I'll tell you where you're, I know you're getting this. It's a, it's a 0 0.02 degrees of, of angular sphere. No, I'm not talking about that at all. Not, not I'm talking resolution. about but that's the, the, the vanishing point, Dave. The, the vanishing point the, comes from the 2.02. Okay, so you realize that, right? No, no, no. I'm not talking about. I'm talking. That's 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 you, that's you trying to squeeze in between the sky and the ground. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about in these images, the the farthest you can see the land is the farthest you can see the land, and it's in the same distance in all directions. That is a circle. You're looking at that because of your programming and saying, oh, that's the curve of the globe. Sphere. It's not it, the curve it, of the globe. No, but you guys do know what Rayleigh scattering is, right? Yeah, yes. I just brought the it up. Rayleigh, I, I, the Rayleigh I, limit. I mean, the Rayleigh, the Rayleigh criteria. I'm sorry. Yeah, I literally, literally just brought it, brought it up. one that brought it up. So yeah. the Rayleigh criteria says that even though our angular resolution can only make out a certain level of 0 0.02 degrees, light is still hitting our – photons are still hitting our eyes. So we are still receiving light beyond that. There is the vanishing point of perspective – is not a point. It doesn't end there. It's just that's the limit of our vision. We can get a telescope and extend that further, but we're Photons. still getting light beyond that. <laughs> yes, we are. This is the this is the Rayleigh criteria. So okay, but yeah, no, you have a block light, of light with a local light source, and then you would literally actually be able to see a curvature, or like imposed with the convexity of your eyes, you would see a slight uh, convexity, and you can replicate this in Blender or whatever you want to do. It's just like objective and yeah so and if the earth was flat brian and you were looking across the the atlantic ocean let's say from the east coast of the united states to spain you do recognize that you it doesn't matter what telescope you have you're not going to be able to see through the atmosphere yeah well, again but you can see if you're on a uh, and that's another um well you didn't answer my question do you do, would you agree that there, you would never see across the atlantic ocean whether it's a sphere earth or a globe I, earth i would I would say that on certain conditions that are very clear, you should be able to. Wow, we can't see 500 miles, and you think we could see 2,500? I'm not saying we can see 2,500 miles. I'm well, saying that's how that far it is across the Atlantic the, Ocean. The conditions, I don't know. I mean, the conditions. Continuation of light, bro. Come on, man. Light, light keeps going. You do realize that. Not through an light, atmosphere. No. <sighs> My goodness, it's okay. continuation of just like just like sound, man. Sound travel. light spreads light out. Light travel. has to fill. Light is right. going out in a. Just say it's, I, it's it's radius becomes a sphere. It's, I, I know it's going what, in all directions. It's getting thinner and thinner and thinner to the no, point it, where you can't see it. Dave, Dave, it's I've done the calculations with the star. Let me just go to that point now since you're bringing it up. Um, 
because yeah. I actually did an experiment where I to my that I proved that I could see further than the than my angular resolution. And I, I did it right here. And I, I bought this little little bulb here and I measured I measured the how the radius of or the radius of it and I and I figured out exactly what the limit of how far I could see it, which would be 30 about 30 meters away is where my angular vision disappears, right? Yeah, you but can see I, light further away. Yeah. You can see light a lot further away. And this is and I've heard Dave talk about this and it's provably I mean, I did the whole calculations with uh, with um, Alpha Centauri, and you can. There's actually right here. It's very it's very easy to explain why we can see Alpha Centauri. Pre here. No, it's not. You have to. Pre how do you know the uh, mass and the brightness? How do you know the mass of that star? Because guys have figured it well, out. Alpha Alpha Centauri. You know, again, this gets into like like many decades of astrophysics and astrology where it's Pseudo mapped out. We well, but again, if you can make the the easy assumption that, um, and this is based on good science, not an assumption. <laughs> but even if you don't believe, I'm saying, I'm, I'm talking to you guys, you don't believe mainstream science, that, that Alpha Centauri is about the same size as the sun. How do you know so that? How do they know that? Again, it's, it's it, the equations they use. Um, how yeah, far equations, is Alpha Centauri? Equations are not, you, Alpha Centauri are not reality. Is 4. 4, 4, right. And again, I, they just look, I did the calculations here. And we know that the sun, because by your argument, even if it wasn't Alpha Centauri, if we put the sun where Alpha Centauri is, you would say that we couldn't see it. So let's and just, you would say we could. Can we just and walk again, it? The calculations wait, are right here. Wait, the way, the, just, hold on to the calculations. Just one question, and then you can keep going. Do you believe in the inverse square law of light? I, I, I've actually done videos on the inverse square law. It, yes or no? Is it a, is it a real yeah, thing? But I'm showing you that this, is the, this thing takes into account the inverse square law. And what, huh? the, what the conclusion is, is we actually have, you can do the calculations, the amount of photons that hit your eyes. <laughs> no or, photons hit no, anybody's freeze. eyes. Stop no. with the photons hitting the eyes, well, man. You're tripping me listen. out. <laughs> How do my eyes protect myself from that uh, kind I, of speed? Well, I feel like you're threatening me crazy. physically or something when you say that. It's, it's the amount of light. Okay, you don't, have to use, you don't use the word photons. It's the amount of light. There is light hitting our eyes. Provably, if you say the sun is where Alpha Centauri is, you can do the calculations and show that light is hitting your eyes from that location. To do the and calculations, so, you need the mass. No, you, well, you, you just agreed that we could assume, just for argument's sake, that oh, we assume? could put the sun where Alpha Centauri is. And based on Dave's rationality, we would not be able to see it. We would not okay? be able to see it. Well, no, we would. Right. You actually okay. can prove. So, but hold on. So, let, so wait a minute. Let, wait, let, I just want to ask a quick the question. The actual amount of, you know what, Brighton? You guys if know we what, went what, halfway to the sun, would the sun be four times as bright as it is? Hey, Dave, I've heard this argument. That's why I'm trying to. I'm like, asking a question. Do you believe, am I wrong or am I right? Him. Yeah, disprove no, I'm tr I've heard all that. So I'm trying, to I'm trying to explain the answer to that. He's asking, okay, so, would it be so, four times as bright? Would it be four times as bright as the inverse square law dictates? This is why I didn't want to go four against. I mean, this no, is no, no, no. I'm just asking I, you one question. That's I, it. We can I be quiet. We can be quiet. Let Dave do it. I've actually taught the inverse square law. I know, understand, like your balloon analogy, how the balloon thins out. Okay, that's that. That's not incorrect, but it's you've got to realize that if you're using light, it would have to be a ridiculously thick balloon because the amount of energy coming out of well, again, we could say the sun or Alpha Centauri. Is, and again, this is based on, on four, many decades of astrophysicists doing lots of careful research to map out the stars. And, and again, you, when you study this and get appreciation for the predictive power, and, but you know, if you don't study science, you don't really appreciate how all these things can be predicted and how everything falls into place. <laughs> but if you can just take the, uh, this amount of actual luminosity, which is the brightness of Alpha Centauri, and take that inverse square, yes, it does drop off by an inverse square, but there's still... What does luminosity as constant mean? Okay, no, luminosity... Yeah, luminosity is constant. Brightness diminishes by inverse square law. But the luminosity, the power output, is... This, this, here's the power output. It's like, let's say, 6 times 10 to 26 watts. So that's a lot of light. That's a real thing. Luminosity is constant. What do you mean by that? The luminosity is the brightness. So that's, that's the amount of power that's getting radiated out, okay? The brightness is the inverse square. This is what's, there, what's called a radiance. So a radiance is measured in watts per meter squared. So that, that's what spreads out by inverse square, okay? Okay. So when you get to the Earth from that distance of Alpha Centauri, you still have measurably 2.7 times 10 to the minus 8 watts per meter squared. And we know the minimum detectable amount of light for our human eye is actually, we can detect that perfectly fine because we can detect as little as 10 to the minus 10 watts per so meter. So you did the math on the closest star. The very closest star that I know, is, but right? the closest star, but there's still, there's more than enough, but you do realize there's only five to 6,000 visible stars. So 
We're, it's not like we're seeing like the whole galaxy. We're only seeing our local vicinity. You don't know the distance to the stars. They just changed Polaris distance by 100 light years and minute they were off by 100 light years over 30%. I've, I've, got, the, I've got the data from Polaris, but we can. Um, but wait, yeah, the data that they changed already. They okay, changed which, one, by, which version do you have, Brian? Brian, right. I've got, uh, uh, can I? I, I can, I, you know, I do want to ask him though, Dave. Let me do this one because I just want to ask him. You guys, you guys think that Polaris is staying in place, but it's probably moving. But wait, wait, that's called a little. That's called a diversion, right? Because you're bringing up this something that requires the distance to the stars to make your whole argument. So I'm like, but you don't actually know those distances. For example, Polaris. This is where where science comes in. For example, Polaris was just to come out and admit that they were off by over thirty percent, and it's a hundred light years closer at least. So you admit that. We don't well, actually know for sure that these distances and okay, masses are correct. But I'm saying the actual movement of Polaris, we map we map very carefully. Okay. Okay. You're changing the you're changing it now to a well, different conversation. Well, I was trying to explain I'm, before that that light. The reason that we can see light, um, we it is a good explanation why we can see light so far away, and it doesn't drop off. Brian, can I, okay, can can I we, ask a question? Can we just walk him through the distance thing? Because I want to know where he thinks right. that we're wrong. See, I, I can't debate four people. No, it's not debate. No, no, I'm no, asking we're, you a question. We're, we're, it's a we're asking a question together. We're having a, a simple debating. conversation. I, I, can't, I just get into one thing and I bombard. Like, no, we're, we're still talking about, talking about the sun and whether we would be able to see it far away. But you know, Yes, Dave, you would be able to see it far okay, away, probably. But hold on. So Dave, always talks about, Dave always talks about the sun if it were right above our heads and still 867. I've seen him do that. Okay, it would take up the whole sky, right? So then we move it 93 million miles away, and now it's the size of a dime, right? So if we did it again, doubled that distance, then it would be smaller than that dime, right? Let's say okay, half as big. Going by angular resolution, though, I already okay. know where this goes. And you, when you get down to the 0.02 angular resolution, where we couldn't make out details, but remember, we don't. We our eyes are photon receptors. It's not about. Uh, you know, and this is why I did this. This is why I did this little experiment because I can show that even though my eyes could only see it 30 meters away. I was able to see this light like 300 meters away. Yeah, but if it's we keep our, our eyes are our eyes are photon receptors. It's not about angular resolution for a star. No, but we didn't bring up angular resolution. We're just talking about the sun. If it reduces in size at eight minutes, yeah, but that, eight it is minutes. angular resolution though. When you reduce it and reduce it and reduce it, the point. Okay, but where then you have to multiply it by you, just to get to a, a, a light day. You have to multiply it by 24 eventually, and then you have to multiply it by 365 just to. Get, you're talking about the sun reducing, doubling know, its, its distance yeah, 365 it's times. That you're going by size of like something like when we look at angular right. resolution on the planet, we're looking at things that are reflecting light. Stars are incredible. It's the same powerful. thing though. It's the same thing. It's not, no, it's not. Wait, the inverse right. square law. I hold on, hold on. I want to ask him though. The inverse square law. Are you the saying the inverse time. square law only applies to light sources, not reflections? No, the inverse. But it's well, reflect. It applies to that. But the the thing is, the light sources have a lot more light than the reflections do. Okay. It's right. the number of photons <clears> that hit our eyes, guys. It's not. How far something away is? All right. So, so can I just ask a I question, and you can you school this, me? This is easy to do if you if you guys can just follow the math. It's so, easy, it's easy to show that the sun could be visible to our eyes. I mean, the, the light from the sun could be visible from our eyes if it was an Alpha Centauri distance away. Meaning, it would look like a little point in the sky with light, but it, it would hit our eyes because it's not about how big it is. It's about the photons hitting our eyes. So at what point would it stop being seen? Again, I, I, I know that when you're, you know, I've done the calculations with like, say, Pluto versus Alpha Centauri. Never. And the, if you look at the size of Alpha Centauri versus Pluto, Pluto would be like 10 times smaller. But the reason we right. can't see Pluto and we can see Alpha Centauri is there is just an enormous amount of output of light and energy coming from stars. Can, can I ask just a couple questions yeah. as a, as, you know, not a scientist? Yeah. There's a certain amount of uh, would you I could be wrong. Is there a certain amount of photons coming off of off of uh, a star? I mean, there is there is a, a a certain number. If you could calculate what they are, it would be what it is. It's ridiculously so, high. Yeah. It, so yeah, yes, yeah, so forget the number. It doesn't matter. So so as you increase the radius of that yeah. that those photons are going to be getting less and less and less, and that's exactly. where the inverse. Hold on, exactly. let me let me ask my question, please. Yeah. So so that's where the inverse square law comes in, where. Every time you double the distance, it's one quarter of the brightness. Right. So, so when you get so so, if I went halfway to the moon, would the moon be four times brighter? Wait, yes, wait. right. The answer is yes. Would you agree? The moon is not a star, Dave. I can't. Not, I, okay, so it, the, it doesn't matter. Just hear, hear what I'm saying. It actually the, doesn't matter. The, wait, wait, wait. So, so the inverse square law does not apply to the light coming off of a photon. Oh, it's again, it's not. It's not about the inverse square law. It's about the number of photons. That's what. Right, but, but okay. So the number of photons is four times as many when I'm halfway there. 
in the same square foot of space. Okay, right. Yeah. When you got, when you got so, so is that is that a yes? Right, but there's a lot less light. A lot less. Uh, oh, so hang on. I'm not I'm not comparing the amount of light. So I got a square <laughs> foot box. I'm looking oh, okay, okay. I would be done with this in 30 seconds if you just hear me out and and, okay, and just okay. answer. And then I want to throw it back to you because this is about you getting your information out there. We don't want to stop you. So I got a square foot. I got moonlight coming in. I go halfway to the moon. Now there's four times the amount of moonlight in that square box. Agreed? Halfway again, there's now 16 times. And if I go all the way to 100 miles from the moon, it should be over 60 times brighter than the sun. According to the inverse square law. No, the, According to math. The, the surface, you, you do know the inverse square law goes by the radius. Just of leave the your camera on, object, Austin. Right? Sorry. When I yeah. take, like, what, for instance, the gravitational drop off from the Earth, the, the one over R squared is not R from the surface, it's R from the center. You got to take the, the center of celestial bodies to do the one over R squared drop off. All right. It's a, very, it's a very big R that you're doing one over R squared. It's, you can't, I see what you're doing, but you're, you're going to the surface. You got to look at the R squared as the radius of the moon. Okay, that's a big radius. So when you, when you, I mean, this is gravity, but the light holds the same way. The surface area is going to be related to the curvature, you know, space, time, and gravity. So it's the same kind of thing. You got to look at the radius, and it's a, you got to go the other direction from. Okay, so we're off the inverse square law. We're onto the radius. Go ahead, next, the next point, wherever you okay, want to yeah. go. But all the, all I was trying to get at with that is I've heard your discussion of that, and it's the flaw with that thing is it's not angular resolution it's actually light that we see that's mm -hmm. why we can see distant stars because the amount of power the amount of radiance the amount of luminosity is just unfathomably large but but, it, but we don't but see no some stars how, right we don't some of them are not, we can't see no yeah some we can't see but i'm saying there's again the, like i'm showing these calculations here if if you do the one over r squared from the luminosity if it drops below 10 to the minus 10 watts per meter squared then our eyes don't then our eyes won't pick it up so right, that's why we only see five or six or seven thousand stars in the night sky. And I, and I think, all, isn't it true? Worlds. Out of all the five thousand stars or six thousand stars, whatever it is, that the sun is the third smallest. They tell us that it's an average size star, and but it's actually the third smallest I, 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 out of I, I, all stars. I, I have to look it up. I don't yeah. know the answer. Well, of course they need them to be bigger yeah. because they need them to be bigger because they need to explain why we can no, see it's, them. It's not about that. It's about luminosity. It's not about the size. It's about how much light it's emitting. Because so, that's, that's what's dropping off one over R squared. It's not the size of the orb. It's the amount of light that's dropping off one over R squared. That's what you're, that, that was the mistake in your Alpha Centauri argument. That I so heard if, you, if you do the math, the closest star, how many times brighter than the sun would it have to be for us to see it? Well, I mean, it's, it's over 100 times more. And, but, 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 you know, like, like um, Polaris is like 48 times the size of the sun. It's much bigger than... I mean, Alpha Centauri it's, is about the same It's 48 size. times the size of the sun, and it's like 900 quadrillion times farther. I know, but again, if you, again, you've got to take the calculus. Again, this is why when you don't do math, you can't see it. Wait, wait. Again, for you, for you guys, oh, did you, Dave, can you just repeat everything you just said, Dave, your last <laughs> sentence? Maybe but, he didn't hear you. So I, I did hear him because I could okay. do this. How many times brighter is Polaris than the sun? Is it twice as bright? Because I, I can't know. imagine something twice as bright as the sun. It's not, a, it's not, it's, it's way more than twice. <laughs> I know. I'm just it's saying, not, I can't imagine it's, twice it's as bright. Unfathomably, it's, it's unfathomably bright. It's very, it's unf the, the, I'll, we'll agree with that. I mean, again, that it would that's, have that's, to be unfathomably we, bright. Well, but again, we have, you got to realize that astrophysicists map out the stars and have very precise equations where they do very, but you, I'm you, not an astrophysicist, but I mean, I look but at But all the stars data. don't move, right? All the stars relative to each other don't move. So they could legitimately make up any number they, that they, they wanted, move, right? They do move. But they do move. No, they, they don't move in relation to each other. So I'm saying you they could actually do. The parent motion of the stars does move. But parent I, motion? I, I'm skipping over. But right. do you recognize that if, if we all got together before anybody got here and we assigned distances and luminosity to the stars, that we could just assign not, to them? How is somebody going to disprove it? Do you, do you guys understand how astrophysicists work? It's a lot. It's like years of careful looking through many observatories. And, and they're, they're off by a hundred yeah. light years. They look real careful. Polaris. We're close. We're close. I mean, I'm, it's not that they don't make mistakes. It's just that um, I don't know about that, so I have to look it Trust up. Trust the science. Don't question the science until they tell not you the about science not is wrong. Questioning the science is that a lot of things fall in perfect alignment and, and make a lot of sense when you study it. And, hey, if I made um, a model about Superman flying, and then I saw got, a shooting you, you star, guys, and I said that Superman flying, you, you, and the math guys, matched, but that means Superman one, was flying. You guys picked like one 
you guys look for the one flaw and then ignore all the other things that are making excellent predictions. You know, and then uh, because excellent cherry- prediction doesn't mean that it's true. It doesn't mean that who's, we just accept it. Then what who's prediction? the scientist that said or that they, uh, they made in- predictions about the uh, eclipses before that they knew the Earth was round? They knew about eclipses yeah, back. Your well, model can't even predict eclipses. I mean, what do you mean, they, dude? What are you talking about? A geocentric model and the Sarah cycle to this day, they don't have a three body equation. But I, 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 this is the problem. Everyone says predictions, but that's the not geocentric true. is still a spherical Earth. But Brian, know. yeah, okay, but it's not moving. And so, but the problem is it's not predictions, it's post dictions. Okay. We make observations and then we take the math and we make it work in our model. It doesn't predict things that aren't already known. It takes what is known and then it reverse engineers. You guys, the math. Have, no, you guys have no model. You can't even predict why things fall. So that means it must be not true. Well, we, I hopefully we'll get to that. And I will show you you're drastically <laughs> wrong about that. Oh yeah. I can't wait to get to gra- hear what you guys have to say about gravity. That's why I'm hoping we just move on past all the, the reification fallacies and the, you know, Okay. Yeah, we, all, um, we all went to kindergarten. I mean, we know the basic stuff that you believe, you know. <laughs> Easy, John. Yeah, yeah. Easy. I mean, this is why I wanted to do Poke it. number one. No, Brian, yeah, I'm yeah, just no. playing. Brian, it's a joke, I know, man. But Brian, like, Brian, like, and by the way, by the way. I can't have a discussion with four people. It's just well, like, we're, we're all making the same. It could be one person saying all of the same stuff. This is just a no, little more efficient. I can Go agree ahead. to be quiet. I'm kind of, I've got a toothache going. Go it's not the we'll greatest, be quiet. So I'll be Go quiet. Ahead. Everybody mute. <laughs> Go ahead. I, Good, this, Brian. This is what I feared was going to happen, but anyway. No, uh, the, don't. What are you fearing? We're we're having a great conversation. Come on. Yeah. You were you were afraid that maybe we'd make some sense. Maybe no, that's it's not. It's not making sense. I just can't explain. I mean, I've heard all your stuff, Dave, and everything. I can, you know, it's it's not difficult to. But you're just dismissing outright. everything outright. You're not. I'm not dismissing it outright. I can do. I've you, I spent hours doing these calculations and doing experiments. Okay, so that, I can show to myself that this is not true. Okay, so show back so, the, the image you had before this. You just had the sun above the, the flat okay, earth. Okay, yeah, so again. But, hold on, go back to the image you had. The, you showed us the sun above the flat earth. You had arrows drawn to it or lines drawn to it. Said, can we, yeah, one more. I mean, this, that again, I, I know, again, I, okay, I know you but, guys get this all the time, but I, I've heard your no, but argument. Do you, but, do you realize how close the sun and moon would be to the earth? That is do, ridiculous right there. That the, the sun and moon, if they're 3,000 miles, how, is what? Are they? Are they 3,000 miles? No, I'm saying even if, if they, they were. Right? A lot of people think it's much, much closer. And the sky is much closer. If there's much, much closer, then, then we'd be getting hotter going up in altitude. I mean, we, No, we, we because the sun lights up, up the sun altitude. heats up air. It doesn't heat up just because of the, it's the sun. You can get closer to the sun and it's not going to be hotter. <laughs> really? You're going to really say that? But you can get closer to the sun and it's not going to get hotter? Really? Uh, have you ever been on a mountain at the equator? You think it's sunny and, and right, beautiful there? Right, because the sun is 93 million miles away, and the reason that it's colder at the uh, high alt- altitudes is because there's less atmosphere. That's what I just said. That's what I just right, said. But I'm saying if you have a local sun, that doesn't make any sense going up in altitude for it to drop in temperature. It does. It, it does hotter. the same. What? What? If you have a, if you have a local sun and you go up in altitude, you should be getting hotter, not colder. Why? It's and the same atmosphere being lit up. It's the same atmosphere being oh, warmed it's up. A lot, I know, but 93 million miles away, is the, the light comes in more or less parallel, not exactly. And it's, you know, it, it's, it's, it's coming in at a much more uniform. If you have a local sun, you're going to have hot spots right below where it's what's floating. And we say hair is less dense. All right, let's agree to move on. Okay. Okay, like... Okay, now sunsets. This is one I've seen in your documentaries where you have, and even Dave uses this sometimes, where he has the sunset fade back and disappear. Well, I lived on Siesta Key for seven years, and I actually did sun gazing for a year. And I watched almost every day when it, when it was sunny and I could do so, the sun sink all the way down. I mean, I was staring at it, and it really did look like this. It wasn't just vanishing or disappearing or getting smaller. You know, the sun does not get smaller when it sets. It stays the same relative size. And anybody with a good solar camera and a solar filter, um, solar, a solar filter on a camera, can see that the actual size of the sun does not get smaller. And again, and so there's, if you've looked at certain people, they've shown that if you take two tennis balls and you take that camera up away from the tennis balls, then they don't reduce in size when they're away from each other. So no, that, that's, not how, that's not how his perspective works. I'm but sorry. It is how perspective works. So. No, it doesn't. Perspective works. You understand? The, the equation for perspective two arc tangent of you know x over cool. or d the distance. Oh, right? that's how it works. So I didn't know the math on it. No, no, but I'm saying that, that, that what that equation is, is showing is that it's basically angular resolution. That's the angular resolution equation. Is that as we see things in the distance, they get smaller towards the vanishing point. 
but not things sense. not things on a ceiling that are far away from you they would be they would maintain you can we can we, i can show you that, everything that let me i have it right here oh, thank you there i, you ha go. I have Perfect. i have an example right yes, here so I, hold on let me just show you're you already because, shaking you're already shaking your head you're, you're making a claim but hold on we're making a claim hold on brian you're saying you don't believe it you let us show you brian, i don't let us show you the example he says then, has, then, then we'll move on but i don't understand why when you say you have an example he just shakes his head and he's all upset like i'm not going to look at anything why wouldn't well, you be I, like that? Why, why wouldn't you look at why not let look? us show you what but what he said? Let us show you a physical example, not a calculation, an actual I mean, measurement. You, he's already dismissed it. It's kind of like pointless. What are we what are well, you gonna, not, I've seen it though? I've seen and what, you've so seen so this. What, so now why are you just said how perspective works and he's gonna about to disprove what you said? So how how I mean, have you seen it and a, you still are saying a the same meme thing? versus reality is what no, I'm talking this, about. This here. is a camera. This is this is not this is a meme. Your eyes, this is not how your this eyes is exactly how, how your eyes would see it. No, your yep. eyes will see that ball getting smaller in the distance. It is smaller in so, the distance. Look, you see the ball in the distance right here. It's smaller because yeah, right. it's farther away. Right. That's okay. how but when, now when, when but when something is already far away from you, so now we're up high. You could flip it over if you're looking up in the sky, and they're. They're both pretty close to the same size. And as it moves, it does it. It's almost the same size. Okay. Well, and, and when you said, and you said, depending on a camera, good solar filter, the sun doesn't change size. Many times it has changed size. We, 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 we show that the sun does change size, but it's, it's a little different every day, depending on the atmosphere, what's going on and what you're looking at. Yeah, but it does clearly change size. It, it changes sizes a little bit throughout the year based on our distance from the sun, but it's not much. It it's changes over that over the changes. same day. The so same day. It changes throughout the day. It actually gets not smaller and bigger throughout the day. Stellarium data does. Depending on what, I mean, the weather conditions and what part of the earth right. you're on, in my opinion. There might be but. some refraction, but in general, the, the sun stays the same size during the whole it also can magnify at times too it's it's but, a, it's it's an optical little, illusion in my bit, opinion a little bit and, oh, and brian, i can do it at all i'm i'm the same distance i'm straight over this ball and the other ball is pretty much the same size but that's not the perspective works perspective that is exactly from, how perspective works no it isn't perspective is from your eyes going out dave not oh. from the top looking down well, when when you're looking no, at the sun, is it your eyes good. going out or is your eyes looking looking up? Same thing as looking down. No, looking when down, you're looking at the sun, no, if instead, the sun was right in front of you and literally in front of your face and went away, it would get smaller. But because it's up high, so your sun's this is this would be their sun and it would get smaller, sure. But because it's up high, you don't have that perspective. Picture looking you, that in this that's in the sky. Don't picture yeah. like we're looking down. Flip it up in the air. I'm looking up in the sky. Here's the sun at noon, and here's the sun at sunset. Yeah, that's how perspective I, I works. I'm showing you. Helpers, that's not how perspective works. But okay, As we're looking fine. at it. All right, all right, all right. Listen. All right. This it's is okay. Listen, it, listen, guys, guys. This is this is this is okay. We can agree to disagree. Yeah. Everyone makes up their their own mind on how that one worked out. Let's go to the next point. I know, but this is okay. This is perspective. This is how you. This is how perspective works. But okay, we'll just move on. That's not. Hold on, hold on. That's not. I'm not going to let you say that. That's not how perspective works. A this meme, is, no, not at all. Reality. No, it's not. I, a meme. It's a calculation of. This is angular resolution. Is based on this. Accurate. Okay, but nobody ever has seen oh, this, from the side view like this ever. That's not how perspective works. Well, it's not from the side. It's just trying to show you the. This is the equation for calculating how how your angular resolution when an object goes off in the distance it gets smaller. Halves and it's doubles, right? Kind of, it's uh, this is this is again this is a known perspective. I you know this is how perspective works. When you look at something in the distance, it gets smaller by this relationship. Halves. It's just uh, it's called halves and doubles when they talk about art. In art, perspective is halves and doubles. The arctan is not a, yeah, but this is again this is just a it's a pretty well known equation that even okay. like op opticians and optometrists know for for angular resolution. Um, and so when you take this idea, it's just a simple. No, but that's not how we see sun, things. That line that you've drawn I know, but, there. But the sun can never set. And get close. In fact, that's you not have true. to go like a million miles away. From no, 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 no. So imagine that you're in a Brian. Imagine you're in a big room. That's uh, the room that you're in right now. Now I'm picture that it's five miles wide. Okay, just picture you're in a five mile wide room, like you're in. If that light above your head started to go away from you, would it not connect with the floor very quickly? No. What do you mean? So not, you're going to see not for five. on this. No, it's based on. I asked you to take the room that you're in. Imagine that it's five miles wide. Okay. okay. Five miles wide in every direction, and the ceiling is still there. Now, the light that's on the ceiling, if it starts to go away from you, it's going to merge with the floor, hit the floor, and set. And it, okay. it, it'll even get dark where you're at. In your location, okay, no, it would get dark, and it would light up the other end of the room. Okay, but, but again, the, the, the ceiling is very close to five so miles So is the away. sky is very close to the earth. Again, I, 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 
if the, in the brightness, the point is to the brightness of the sun. You're not going to get something as bright as the sun down a hallway. Because if you did, you would see it. Because okay. Again, it's photons that hit your eyes, not it's Brian, not a resolution. Uh, Brian, I, I, is it possible that you've never seen my sunset kitchen? Vamos a hacer de cenar rapidín, pim, pim. These little Okay. But I have a question for you. Is it possible you've never seen it? I don't know that I've seen this one. No. Okay. So let me, it's one minute. So just watch before you shake your head. No. So this line here is the path of the sun and I'm viewing it from a celestial point of view and I'm watching up. Oh, it's not playing. Oh, now it's, it's playing. playing. And, and so it's moving along. Now this here can be mountains. It could be cloud deck. It could be just the atmospheric deck. I never go below it. And the sun moves along. Now I have another camera on the deck on the ground on the other side, looking at that same thing. And when I look, the sun goes down due to perspective. And this opaque barrier right here, which is now at my eye level, what it's really not, but it looks like it is, the sun looks like it's going below it, but it's not. It's going straight. And when I look at it really close, look at this line. This is a level line. It's level, but it looks, hold on, I'm not done. It looks like it's going down. Now let's compare it to a real sunset. We're just gonna compare. Here's the sun. It went down, 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 down. And now look what's going on. It's going behind this atmospheric deck or mountain ridge okay, or I whatever. See. Okay, now that I can tell you is not the way sunsets work. I have seen countless sunsets on. So what are you saying? That's a fake. That's a fake video. It, no, this can be one sunset with a certain atmospheric conditions. But in general, what you get more than often than not is a hard. And I, again, I used to sun gaze on. So, but in, in general, you're going to get the same effect once it hits another tree line or mountain yeah. range or, but, or artificial but, horizon. Wait, but but also you see the oh, space the space here between between where it's setting. Right. Hold on, hold on. Just let me just make my point, and we'll go right back to you. I'm telling you, the space between here and the ground, you can't see it. It looks like it's the same. It's compressed. I'm zoomed in here. And if I zoomed out, this would literally look like it's going behind a hard horizon. But it's just because it, your eye can't see it. You zoom, you zoom in, and this is what you get. No matter how far you zoom, you're going to always get a hard cutoff with the with the right. Yeah. And, and here's the hard cutoff right here. Here's yeah, the hard above, cutoff. If I put if I put a solar filter on, you wouldn't see the difference between this water and this hard thing. You would just see the sun, just like you're seeing it in yours. But that's not fully set. That's it's still it, like it I, is fully set if you zoomed out. I know, but I can't see because you're so small. I mean. Well, but I, okay. I I think I've seen this picture before though, and I remember s saying to myself, "That's not really going. That's going behind some refractive effects." Or so, something. so look here. Here it looks like the sun's going behind a hard line, but if we zoom in, it's really not even setting. Okay, so here we go. We're going to zoom in, Jaron. Can you make me big so you can see it? Yeah. Uh, as I zoom in, you look. Oh, right. look! It's not even touching the horizon. No, because it hasn't set yet. And, and but again, but it but it will set because it's going to go behind this opaque barrier. This opaque barrier is thousands of feet above my eye line, but it looks like it's at eye level. This opaque barrier. Why are you is shaking? Thousands of feet. How can that be thousands of feet above your eye line? What do are you mean? these clouds above my eye line? That opaque right. As they go into the distance, everything know, merges in. The clouds you, are all at the same height. If you guys buy into a flat earth, then that's how could it be a thousand? It doesn't make any sense. So, so hold on mm -hmm. a second. So, so when, I, when I'm looking down Long Island Sound here, the clouds touch the water 25 miles away. They literally touch the water. So the curvature in 25 miles is only a few hundred feet. Okay. So you're telling me clouds that are at five or 10,000 feet have gone over that much curvature and are actually going behind a curve? Or is it just perspective? I mean, I just proved no, that it was just perspective. perspective. No, it's, you didn't prove anything. That's not proof of anything that this, the sun <laughs> so is So is it curvature? Out. Dave, the reason I'm I talking about the clouds. Is, listen, I told you I lived on Siesta Key for seven years, and I did sun gazing for a year. I watched mm. countless sunsets, and I'm telling you, almost, yes, there's some days where refraction, you got clouds going on and all kinds of different things. But almost right. every time the sun goes not behind, it goes down below the horizon. That horizon is not beyond. A Go ahead. It's not a, it's not a thousand feet above my head. It's dipping below the horizon. That's impossible on a flat Earth. What? It's going, away, it's going away from you. Away. What's going no, on? it's it's going it's it's dipping. It's below exactly the what would happen if anything in the sky was going away from you. If, well, what, what what do you yeah. think you're supposed to be seeing if a local sun was going away from you? What do you think you'd be seeing? 
you'd be seeing it. You wouldn't fall below the horizon. It's impossible. For so what would it be? It's going to set way. Dave, before. can you get your can you get, get your smaller. Legos it's, out? It's going to get it's going to get smaller. And it's going to go. Um, no. You know, no, 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 no. The video. No atmosphere. He just said that you can't drop no something below a horizon. You know, if you have a local sun, that's perspective. It should get smaller. I've even seen. And it. sometimes it does. It has in some conditions. It has, Brian. That's what we're saying. No, sometimes it, it does, depending on the weather conditions. No, it depending on it, if it's dry, if it's humid, it, everything. Wait, here, here's one where it was dry and humid, and the sun should just be dropping below, but it's going away. It's getting smaller. That's it's getting dim. That's the camera. You, if you get the right filters and the right, oh, the right filters, it's always the same size. Any really good photographer that takes pictures of the sun knows it stays relatively. Again, different are you times. watching Dave's screen or no? I'm seeing it right, but that's through a camera. That's through. Who knows if it's auto exposure or you set to manual? I mean, to really get a true picture of the sun, you got to set to manual because some, I know some telescopic, I, I, telescopic cameras will they 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 like make things look distorted because they're that's autofocus is doing stuff like that. I know you said you saw my son fade out videos. I, I have a that, whole bunch total. of them. You have my app. I have the roll on there. But the sun went down, 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 down. Forget the fade out. It went down, 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 down. And then it stopped. And it, it sat does, here. It doesn't stop. It I does. Watched, no, no. It's not I've going down hundreds. anymore. It's going away. Oh, it's not, David. I've watched it's, hundreds. Oh, it's going like, down? Are you talking to people that don't live on the beach? You must be talking. No, no. To but but no, no. Actually, oh. during the filming of this one, I was talking to people that on the beach. Happen. Hold that on, doesn't... hold on. I was on the phone with my friends that were at the beach and they saw the sunset from the bottom up 10 minutes earlier. Yeah, I mean, again, there, are, there can be exceptions when you, when, you, when you have some, no, when you have some type of refractive things going on, there can, but you're never going to, I've seen hundreds of sunsets, Dave, and they fall, but they go below the horizon. They don't. Well, you're seeing the same thing a hundred times. You are seeing the same thing. You just don't understand the power of perspective and the power of the opaqueness, the opaque deck. It's just going beyond it. That's all. Perspective makes things smaller. It doesn't keep them the same size. And they sometimes get smaller, but when you're looking out over water, water is the thickest. The, The atmosphere um, the non, what is it? The, the non-uniform transition zone. I probably got that half I, wrong. Go, um, I'll tell you what, Dave, t- take that picture of the fade out and, and pull, go to Siesta Key or some beach and pull a hundred people and ask them, is this what they see every night when they watch? No, it? they would never see this at Siesta Key because they're on the it's, ground. It's He's from a drone, Bryant. And this is not over water and it's, and it's below freezing. No one's going to be on the beach because they're going to be freezing. Even if you're high up at an altitude, you're going to still see the sun go down below the horizon. Over the water. Yes. Like, but it just doesn't, I mean, that, that, that air, that air column, as you're looking farther and farther, it becomes opaque, period. It's also right? magnifying. You can't the see sun. through and atmosphere and like and that. Water. It, it becomes opaque. And when the sun goes beyond it, it just goes beyond it. It just, uh, let's just move on. This doesn't. All right. Move okay. on. No problem. No problem. Can, can, can I, way sh- to move on. Can I show a video about perspective though, real quick? It's a short one, but I think that. I, no, I don't want to watch any perspective. Videos. All right. Let's. <laughs> Let's go on. Okay, but we're, 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 we're never going to get out of this topic if we don't. Move all on. right, True. but people see perspective the wrong way, and everybody like when you talked about those guys who did the test and they have the arrows drawn to the sun, then they draw the flat Earth arrow to the sun. They're completely off because that's not how we see. Well, it. another thing I wanted to bring up, and I'm just getting a little kind of uh, steamrolled here, but um, we don't. We're not is, steamrolling. Is, yeah. is that the, one of the points I wanted to bring up? The common common denominators is that we have confirmation that. The sun and Polaris and many other things will have the same angular. They have a right relationship between latitude and where you live on a sphere. So we, we see these different angles because of us living on a sphere in different locations. And it's really just really hard to explain. I mean, you can't really explain on a flat earth that you've got a different angle of sun and sunrise and sun, the way that sun pass traject is based on us being on a spherical earth. That's based on perspective. That's not perspective. Why? Well, I, I wanted to that? show you a video. I wanted no, to show you a video, but you won't at, look. You look up at, no, it's real simple. But you can look up at high noon and you can see the. the but that's not how we see things. If you, you need to watch a video where if, if you stand next to like a, 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 a gymnasium, um, the bleachers, okay, you can see how perspective actually works. I, I don't even. Yeah, this is. The globe model claims we never see the actual position of the sun. Like, it's no, it's not. Be, but I'm going to show you. I mean, this right here is what I was going to show you. Like, this is how we see. When you watch this video, you can see. That it's I, I, not. This is how the sun sets from different locations. Everything converges to the same point. 
you're talking about perspective like we can draw lines this way. That's exactly how perspective works. All right, listen, Darren, we're going to have to let it go because I showed him perspective with the actual physical thing. He says that's not how perspective works. We agree to move on. Okay, These are go. little models you're doing. This is not, you know, these little models you can do. I've seen tricks with aperture. You know, like the camera when you open up the wide angle. Do you, do you, you have any models? Oh, you're showing memes, bro. Like what? you're I'm showing memes showing, and calculations. We're you, showing you calculations and and physical I, I things. That, but these are based on things that you can see in the real world. I've seen sunsets, and I know that they. We've all seen they sunsets. They don't yes. Fade out. We've they also heard people say they yeah. see the, mo- the mo- curve agree, from a plane. Bro. But they most don't sunsets out. don't shrink. I, I agree. I most agree sunsets too. do not shrink in size, especially because most sunsets are like to be viewed over lakes and water. We can agree on that. Most yes. sunsets we like to watch over water. So it's magnifying. There's a lot of factors involved. So yep. we can agree, agree to disagree. Maybe you just don't understand where we're coming from here, man. No, I That's all. Basically, Brian, you it, comes, you know. it comes down to either the sun's moving away from you on a flat stationary earth or we're falling backwards 700 miles an hour in the United States or a thousand at the equator. And it makes the sun look like it's moving. So we'll agree to disagree. I don't think I'm falling backwards during the sunset. I know you're not not. backwards. It's so that's, that's, we'll get to that in high speeds and slow rotations, but um, (laughs) let's, let's just, let's just move on to gravity because I don't think it's the same. You're just going to use the same perspective arguments for. It's oh, not oh, an wait, argument. I, I, it's reality. We're not giving you anything that's not memes. We're not. So, whatever, I've bro. seen some of your perspective like videos and it's, it's not. Which video? It's not based on real. Well, um, there's nothing that we're showing that's not based on reality. I think the ones I was reality. watching were Nathan, Nathan Oakley. I was watching some of his huh? videos. On- well, we, we haven't been watching him. So. <laughs> okay. okay. So. Well, anyway, um, I, I've seen, the problem is I've seen like different flat earth believers have different views on what perspective is where in general, like an ophthalmologist or an optician kind of, it's like, there's what, there's just one simple type of way to see perspective. It's not simple, but all right, listen, let's go. Well, you have a lot of points to get through. Okay. I I wanted to to go through the one that professor Dave didn't answer, which was how you, you like to, uh, you were talking about how the seasons where it should be arctically cold because, because the earth, you know, in the morning, it's the, the angle coming in is going to just be skimming the earth, right? But, so, did you get an answer to that, or do you still buy that you should be arctically cold because it, of the it, angle? I shouldn't be able to feel the heat the same way I can um, in the summer. Okay, but you do know that the atmosphere stores energy, right? And that the ground heats up and stores energy. So, in the summertime, what happens is that this whole latitude that's getting, or down here, that's getting more more heat. Is actually the whole band is heating up the earth like all 20, you know, it's going around and every day it's getting heated up and the ground and the atmosphere contain and hold that. It's called specific heat. And it's the reason why you are, you're always going to be warmer near a body of water than on land. That's why deserts get hot, cold, really like wild swings where live on Hawaii, you've got the same temperature almost all year round. It's because the specific heat of the water holds that energy and the atmosphere holds that energy too. So the reason why, and you're right, when it's colder in the morning, you know it's colder in the morning because the sun, you know, the sun's been gone for a while, but but the atmosphere is still holding a lot of that energy. So it's not going to be arctically cold when you wake up because the ground and the atmosphere are still retaining a lot of that heat from the daytime. I mean, does that make sense? That well, I, I, I do agree that the ground maintain, you know, keeps um, radiating heat and it stores it and it releases it uh, overnight. Yeah. But um, when I'm looking at the sun in June, yeah, I could, uh, the the I the heat the heat's strong and and I'll get a tan. You know, yeah, yeah you can get a, you can get a, you can still get UV rays in the winter and burn get burnt, but it, you don't feel the heat. It's it's like far and it's closer. But you say that that percentage doesn't matter. At noon, <laughs> at noon, in December, I look at the sun and it barely has any heat. Okay, but at dawn. In the summer, when the sun's farther, I, I can feel the heat. Yeah, it makes no sense. But uh, now, yeah. again, th- listen, you, you have to go to jump to big hurdles to say, well, it's because of the Earth and the, the atmosphere is holding, holding, uh, you it's know, not, you radiant find- heat and stuff. But it, it can't be that big of a swing. Here's the thing, though: on a flat Earth, the idea of a lo- local sun moving back and forth that works out perfectly. We could actually test that. We can actually oh, test yeah. it. But this is this is sci- this is science too. I mean, again, the specific heat equation well shows that land. It gives you a way to measure and quantify how land and atmosphere hold on to heat energy. And if you, you can again, 
it makes perfect predictions. And then by the way, the, I did the calculations on the 91 versus 94 million, you know, the difference of 3 million miles in the Earth, sun's trajectory. It turns out if you actually look at the perfect, it's all based on the perpendicular angle that the sun's coming in. So when you take, it's basically taking the sign, you know, whatever angle is coming in, you take the sign of that and it gives you the, the component that's perpendicular, right? So I did the calculations and it turned out even being 3 million miles away, the amount of, you can calculate the irradiance hitting the earth at a certain latitude. And because the angle is closer to 90 degrees, you actually, I wish I, had, I don't have the calculations here. I, I did them though. You actually end up getting a lot more energy, even with it being 3 million miles away. You, you can do, again, because the, the 3 million miles compared to 93 million miles is so small compared to how you can have these sharp angular differences from the seasons. And that's the reason why it can be hotter in the northern hemisphere, even though the sun's further away. And again, I did the calculations and it, and it works. Wow. Um, it's, actually, it's actually significantly, I no. mean, it's, it's, it's very, not even close. It's very easily to show, very easy to show that. And any one person want to make a comment? Maybe Austin. Mm -hmm. So basically you're saying that uh, when the sun's 3 million miles further away, it's, it's warmer. No, it's again, anybody that's in the because solar, of the angle, the perpendicular. Oh, no, it's the angle. Oh, yeah. If you're in the, my friends in the solar panel industry, and I explained this to me, he understood it right away because solar panels, they have to find based on a certain geography, right? What, what's the best angle for the statistically the time, like how many sunny days are there that whole year, right? And, and, they'll, and they'll put the angle of the solar panel to where it gets the most of the direct, it gets best direct hit, 90 degrees. So it turns out that the irradiance, it's going to, you know, you got to take the sign that's like, you know, it basically, op, you know, opposite over hypotenuse, right? And it's basically- You're saying when the, they hit the earth or when they hit the atmosphere? It's the perpendicular component that, that, that is really what's heating things up. And again, anybody in solar panels understands this. So when you just take a simple solar panel analogy, you, you can see that you can calculate the irradiance, how much less it is in the, in the winter versus the, or in the summer versus, you know, the Northern hemisphere summer versus the, and, and it, that 3 million miles does lower. the. Do you know that does. scientists don't know how they, solar they panels they work? Well, they might not know, but you can, you can still read how much is it, heat is absorbed. Energy. You can look on your meter and see how much energy is getting outputted, right? So what I'm saying sure. is the amount of energy, it's based more on the angle than it is on the distance away. And again, you can do the more. Things. Well, again, if it's for the, for the case of the sun, yes, because it's all, it's, you understand three million compared to ninety-three million is a small percentage. Not really. It's compared to that doesn't matter. Three million miles. But it's ninety-three million. That's what. That's one one thirty. Well, now it's ninety-three million, Bryant. In the past, it was one million. Then it was, I think, three ten million. Then thirty-six million. million. Yeah, it's pretty. And it even went past ninety-three million. I know, but again, point. one away. Brought it back down for you. So. I know, but with the heliocentric model, we can see that the, the, all these distances perfectly fit with the equation. No, with the new model, yeah, yeah. Again, it used it's to not be a new model. The, yes, Bryant. It used to be a different um, dimension away. It was not. It wasn't always Newton, ninety-three million miles. Newton didn't even history, know. Newton didn't have a clue how far the sun. No was. idea. Yeah. It's changed. Oh, like I just want to. I want to see the project or science experiment that shows how they proved the sun was ninety three million miles away without telling me equations. anything about other stars. Equations. About how to, I, I, yeah, I, the equation. I, sure. I showed you. Well, you, but you won't. You won't take. You know. Again, you, I can tell you that they've that they've shown where they. We can. We can shot. We can ra put radar on. He's not Venus. talking about now. He asked you how they came up with it. Yeah. Well, that's how that's, they came up with it. They, they've changed can, it so many times. That's so. how you can measure. They haven't changed it in the past couple centuries hardly at all. I mean, it's. It's yeah, you go back far enough and they didn't know, but but since we've been able to get the measurements of Venus, no, no, meaning oh. these scientists at that time said it is exactly 36 million miles, and then it changed to 60 something, then it goes up to 93, then it goes past, I, I then they bring why. it back and, to 93. And, and, and the it's fact that they changed like, Polaris by a third, maybe they're well, going to change it a few years again. ago, a few years ago. Okay, a few well, years I'll, ago. I'll, I'll look at that, but I mean, sure, thank you for good answer. You'll look at it, thanks. Good Can answer. we get to this magical gravity? You got me all excited, man. Okay, let's let's. Um, Gravity's real, yeah. It's real. <laughs> okay, so. To relief. By the way, I, I had a little experiment that you can actually. Well, I don't. You guys don't need to do it. You can actually calculate. You know, this is kind of cool. You can calculate pencil. the nine point eight meters per second squared. Sweet. Which just a with a with a piece of paper and a pencil, and you're in your mm -hmm. smartphone. Are you under the impression that we uh, are we contend nine point eight meters per second squared? Well, I'm just saying there's a way that you can. It's just kind of cool that you can show, and for people out there. That don't know that you can measure the acceleration of the gravity. It's not hard. You don't have to get a ball and a meter stick and a stopwatch. Yeah, your phone has an accelerometer in it. Yeah. 
Well, it's just, you don't even need an accelerometer. You simply just, you can look, you can kind of look at the frames. Well, 9.8 meters per second squared is programmed can, into it, the phone. So yeah, but you guys yeah. agree that, we all agree that things fall 9.8 meters per that's second. an agreed upon average once things go down yeah well it, it's it's pretty the gravitational fields are pretty constant across the globe actually it's agreed well, upon average but there's, no there's globe, also but... atmosphere here so it's gonna, not going to be 9.8 meters per second squared anywhere on earth oh, it's it can be measured wait 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 this doesn't prove anything though we the, oh, we no, know no, you know I, things I, fall down on a flat I know, earth too, I'm, right? I'm getting to, i mean I, i'm getting to that this is this okay. is just the first um things fall down, down is down on a flat earth brian you know that right down on a flat earth down is down there's no one upside down in Australia right now hanging on for dear life. All right. Okay. Down, down is down. towards the center of the earth. This is I, know, I know heliocentrism. I, I grew up with it. I this understand. Is I'm saying heliocentrism. This is how, yeah. this is how down it's not. No, this, this is, is a heliocentric we were taught, theory. Yes. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Cause it's there's not no, the theory. It's a, it's a very well proven theory of gravity that hasn't been. Uh, it's proven theory. So, of, okay. Can you, what is proven. the theory of gravity? Okay. Again, uh, this is. Yeah, I, well, not, I just want to talk about gravity. Man. I, I thought would, I was going to be able to go through some slides. Give your presentation. Go, go through gravity. the sides, and then we'll interrupt them. you. Yeah, there you go. Go ahead. This is. I should next. Maybe next time we can just talk one on one because this is. Uh, this Give is, your presentation on gravity, man. All right. Well. Well, anyway, um, one of the things that flat Earth believers don't seem to understand is there's a difference between laws and theories. So yes, gravity is not proven, but yet it's a, it's a gravitational, it's a law because we can use it to make predictions and to build things. In fact, most, I don't know if you know this, but most of the world around us is built on Newton's laws of gravity. In fact, you know, if you look at, I mean, if you look at skyscrapers and bridges, and again, I took in, at Georgia Tech, I took uh, classes on, you know, statics and dynamics, you know, civil engineering type of classes. And you use Newton's laws of gravity and, and to build and make all of these things. So this is one of the problems with the flat earth. The flat earth doesn't really have a model that can build or make anything. I mean, you're, you're, you know, if you, if you go to school, if you're a flat earth believer, maybe you won't uh, do that. But if you really want to make things in the real world, you use Newton's law of gravity. I mean, okay. it works. It just works. So, so the, the difference between a theory and a law is that laws are analytical relationships that basically are true in, 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 their, in their given sphere. So here on Earth, with low gravity and low speeds, you know, relativity, if you got really high gravity and really high speeds, then you got to use general relativity. But for, pra for practical purposes, we call these things laws is because we can use them to make very accurate calculations to actually make, make things. You know, the Industrial Revolution was a big part of you know, because of Newton's, Newton's laws of motion, you know, that we were able to build steam engines and all these structures. And so, so it's very, it's very pragmatic. Um, and uh, it, the thing about gravity is very elegant. I mean, <laughs> basically, well, it does, it, it explains all of these things. Everything kind of works because. No, of no, it doesn't. Okay. Okay. Well, just hold on. We can good, good. let him finish and then we'll respond. No problem. I just don't see what the point is. I mean, this is. Well, to just go ahead. Maybe we're wrong. I'm open to being wrong, bro. So let me know. But yeah, I mean, the things that you're showing us are things that we've all had to obviously research through to be flat earthers. We have not, this is not new to us. We've gone well, through this. We maybe he's going to okay. teach us that. Maybe, maybe right, we're well, wrong. Well, I mean, but the thing is, is, you know, I've done the Cavendish experiment. And I know you guys, oh, boy. Have, you have your reasons. I mean, I've got a Cavendish device here. Hmm? Um, What's a Cavendish but, uh, device? A Cavendish torsion balance. It's a torsion balance, it's a gravitational torsion balance that you're able to calculate the gravitational constant. And it, in and your house? Very, in your house? Yeah, yeah, he has one. He has one right beside him. I don't see it. Oh. I've never seen that before. We just maybe present your argument and then maybe uh, I can become a believer. Yeah, do that. And the the little G or big G, I don't know which one I'm supposed to believe in that created everything, the big G or little G, but it's, um, not, it's about again, you are able, able to make predictions. So we use Newton's laws of gravity to, to make You got a little quiet for some reason, Brian. Just you know, just can you get back towards your mic or something? It was really quiet there. Just so people can hear you. Okay, so there um, you go. So the so they have the Cavendish device, which I the Cavendish experiment I've done myself and it gives you, I mean, if you do it yourself, you're not going to get a, a very super high level of precision, you know, within, you can get within 2%. But the, but the thing is, 
is that this has been done thousands of times in labs around the world. And even if it's off by a little bit, the fact that you're getting almost exactly the same answer every time, it's very, very good proof. In fact, um, and it's not just the Cavendish. There's, there's other ways that you can measure gravity. You know, the Shahilian mountain experiment, they're able to very, again, calculate G pretty relatively accurately. Um, this is a Von Jolly experiment. So the, the bottom line is we have overwhelming proof or evidence that mass attracts mass. Again, when I say a law, I mean something we can use analytically to make predictions here on earth is that mass attracts mass and there's no other way. And I've seen your electrostatic stuff and density and buoyancy, it just doesn't work unless you invoke heavenly energies that we have to look at what that is. But, um, but the point is, is these are gravity measurements. This is now uh, mc2.net forward slash G. Oh, good, you can good just source. see, well, but again, you can look at, you can click and look at the studies mm -hmm. yourself. So there's just, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, overwhelming the number of times that these num these experiments have been confirmed it's not just one person or or even just one experiment they, they've been able to confirm it in many different ways not just by cavendish but by doing other things like i told you with the shahillian uh, uh, experiment and the, um you know von jolly um it's just two examples but so there's many ways that we can show that mass attracts mass and it's typically, you know, the force between masses is typically, you know, the gravitational constant m1, m2 over r squared. And we can, you know, uh, unless you're in a really high gravitational field, like in a black hole, or you're going near the speed of light, th these equations hold very, very accurately. And again, yes, gravity hasn't been proven, but no theory is ever proven. So a theory versus a law is something that tries to explain what the law is saying. So the theory of gravity went from Newtonian's theory so, and then Einstein updated it to a better theory of general relativity. And the interesting thing, though, is that, you know, Newton's equations aren't, weren't proven wrong. They actually are special cases within relativity where space is really flat and time is not so fast, or and the speeds aren't really super high. So you actually get Newton's equation. So the new theory didn't, you know, it, 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 it transcended, but it included Newton's equations, but just as a special case. Okay. Um, so... You know, and again, with general relativity. Wait, well, can we can we talk about one at a time? Is that cool? Instead of like, you're saying Newtonian, well, gonna, and then you're, I mean, go ahead, go ahead. I guess just. No, no, I was just going to go through the gravity, then we can talk about gravity in general. Then, I'm, then we'll get to the flat Earth gravity thing I have set up. So, oh, so, so we're not going to get to rebut all your claims right now about gravity. No, no, we are. No, 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 we are. I, gravity. no, 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 no. I, I said let's just get through this, then we'll have a discussion, and then you know. Okay, we'll, fair enough. Um, so um. And I, I know you guys have seen this stuff before. So, you know, there's a lot of validation relativity. And, you know, I'm sure you guys know with LIGO, which, by the way, the, the long interferometer arms did have to account for curvature of the Earth. Mm. Um, I mean, incredibly accurately confirmed relativity to like eight decimal places. I mean, it makes it one of the most accurate theories as far as making predictions that we've ever had, along with mm. quantum electrodynamics. So. And is very, it, is very, it true about LIGO, the LIGO, it, the amount of the string displacement was smaller than a proton? Yeah, well, it, it has to be smaller than um, the diameter of an atomic nucleus, actually. Wow. It's not wow. a full point. It's, it's amazing. No, it, that's incredible. Exactly. It is incredible. It's incredible, incredible precision that has to happen mm -hmm. to detect a gravitational wave. But this chirp that took, you know, took place in two locations, they didn't just do one location. They did it in Washington and like Louisiana. Mm -hmm. They were able to, to confirm the exact same gravitational pattern exactly as predicted by general relativity. So and I, it was just an amazing. amazing a couple of weeks ago, I read a story. Cap, bro. A couple of weeks ago, I read a story that they they first faked the experiment to see if they would if everybody would agree with it, and they did. They they faked it the LIGO the first time. Everybody showed up at the press conference, and then they were told that it was fake. But nobody knew. Nobody knew it was faked. Yeah, but again, that's just conjecture. I mean, no, it's not, I just told you they, I could give you the article where they write about it. It's uh, called okay, an article. Well, send me the article and I'll look at it. I'm not Isn't that weird answer. if that's true? <laughs> Isn't that weird if it's true, bro? I mean, I'll look at it. I mean, I've I'll look just on, I, I will look at it. I really will. Um, okay. So, but I, I'm not convinced until I can see it and take a But look. if it's true, is that not really weird? That's what we're I'm saying. I mean, that's it. We're, you we're confirm just, we're, we're just playing what ifs right now, though. I, I'm no, not, but it just to be it is intellectual honesty thing, right? Like, hypothetically, yeah. if mm -hmm. they lied to everyone and, and just to see if they would believe it, I mean, that would be kind of weird, right? And it would be weird if it I happened mean, to be I mean, 100. Yes, yes. 
a hundred yeah. years to the day that a hundred years to the year that Einstein predicted them. That'd be crazy. Like what are the chances it would be on the hundredth year? But that's just a coincidence. That's oh, a, it's coincidence, coincidence, argu yeah. a coincidence argument. That doesn't make it's amazing. Doesn't yeah. No, I didn't mean it's not, it doesn't prove anything. It would be okay. weird. Okay. Go I mean, ahead. it's just, it's just like Stephen Hawking being born in like exactly a couple hundred years after like, what was it? Galileo or something. It doesn't prove that he's a reincarnation. Of they said that they faked it, bro. It's weird. Well, so we we'll, can... well I'll, I'll look at the information, but I'm, again, I've, I, I've spent, you know, the, the Nobel prize by Kip Thorne. I mean, it was a really big deal. And I, I've looked at the, uh, it, it doesn't seem like it was faked. I mean, everything that I've seen looks pretty good. Obama no, no, no. got the peace prize from We're the same the people that yeah. I put, yeah. I, put yeah. it, I, put it, I put it in the chat, yeah, by the, the way, pure, it's in the chat. I know, but the, again, I'm with you with Obama, but okay. with, with, with the pure sciences, this is where I disagree with the you. The same I, people. Well, we'll see. I mean, I, but again, yeah, the title, this, this, and this, this is written, to me is, this, this is to me is just common sense. I don't know why you guys put like upside down boats like on the. I mean, this so, is the, that's the old because that's what's happening in reality, right? I mean, it's it's what's happening is if you were to be looking from space, there is a boat sitting at the bottom of the Earth upside down. Now I know you say no, it's not oh, upside no, down. It's no, right. the, yeah. you, no, you realize that the satellites upside down, looking at it right side up, though, you're you're missing. The satellites go. You do get that, right? Yes, yeah, but but one boat is antipodal to the other boat. Or... The antipodal theory was from the Middle Ages. They, like I told you, no, there's the antipodes ends. now. Things are antipode to me on the Brian. Oh, so I'm when sure. they showed us the picture oh, the, of the I, Earth, right, and I, they the show the moon the in front of the Earth, Brian, think about it, right? They showed us the moon in front of the Earth. If that if that satellite had zoomed in on the top of the ball and then zoomed out and then zoomed in on the bottom of the ball. It would have saw stuff upside down on the bottom of the ball from its outside perspective. It, 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 yeah, but you can't you can't get zoomed that far. Well, we know that, but we're. <laughs> but, but, but we can zoom in on like you know newspapers things, from satellites. Of miles. Again, yeah. The way that gravity works is that everything is getting pulled towards the center. That is a center of mass. We know how they tell. We us know that. Okay, this. Is, so again. I, well, let's just go to. Okay. So we just need to buy into. I mean, the problem I have with it is like when they go up in these uh, high. Whoa, 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 whoa! What's this? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Well, no, 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 can I address? Can I address some of that? We're going to discuss. No, I'm, I'm just pulling up. I'm, we're going to discuss. So, like a paradox, some of you said first. If we okay, dropped a bunch of skittles, why don't the skittles get together? Why don't they come together in the in a zero g plane or in the ISS? How come the skittles just go everywhere? Why because don't they... the skittles are very low mass. You understand how we. So how did how did the Earth start then? How did any planet or star start if they if low mass doesn't do it? You understand that everything is spheres because everything is getting pulled in. The yeah, but you just said that was, you just said that if something is too small of a mass, it won't attract anything. So how did they start? That's a massive amount of energy density. When the, when the hey, gas can I go can ahead, address Austin. your arguments, man? You, you you made a few fallacious arguments. So for one, yeah. you're talking about mass attracting mass. Yeah. Please just give me a couple minutes, please. You're talking about mass attracting mass. That's way outdated, right? That's like. Uh, you know, superseded in 1905 by special relativity, then turned into well, general I, I, relativity. I explain 19 that. I explain bro, that. bro, you got to give me a couple seconds, man. You said a lot of stuff that's just all provably wrong. Okay. So then you brought up Cavendish. Well, when Cavendish did it, he didn't even account for the variable of electrostatics, which is an attractive force. And so the torsion part, like the actual mass itself, whatever, he had to run away and use a telescope and barely saw it move. And even if you use something to control for that variable, you can never eliminate the variable electrostatics, right? Because all molecular and intermolecular attractive forces are electrostatic in nature, and that's an attractive force, and you're barely getting any change, and it's not consistent. So it definitely doesn't prove gravity. You're claiming it proves mass attracting mass. That's not even the claimed model anymore. That's just really, really oh, old. No, that's Hold on. Let him finish. It's, a, it's a his turn. Just let him go. It'll be quick. Go ahead, Austin. Yeah. And so then the whole relativity thing, you said that it's been proved and then you brought up like the, you know, the fifth of a proton, whatever. But the theory of relativity has been debunked on the cosmological and quantum scale within your own paradigm. It isn't accurate at all whatsoever. It's never been proven. And then when you looked at the Arthur Eddington thing, like, dude, they, they admit that that might not be actual bending and warping of space time. So Simply put, there's actually no empirical evidence that's ever verified gravity. And then when you're talking about the downward acceleration, that's an effect that we observe on the Earth. It's not exclusive to, to the idea that we're on a magic spinning ball in a vacuum. Things go down on a flat Earth too, bro, on a stationary flat Earth. That's just the effect. You're claiming the cause of the effect. We want to prove the cause. The fact that we engineer things based on the downward acceleration agreed upon average isn't exclusive to the Earth being a ball or gravity or something. The fact we use 9.8 meters per second square to engineer things has nothing to do with the earth being a ball so those are just fundamental misrepresentations of what's actually going on we're questioning your your cause claim bro and mass attracting mass isn't what your cause claim is anymore because that was debunked a long time ago and newton did not even propose a mechanism for gravity 
I know, but that is empir- you, you do you hear what I said about theory, the law, the law of gravity? I'm saying that's that's empirically how we can use it to make things. And I then I said that general relativity was warp space time. Yes, that superseded it. And, spe- and, and Newton's equation wasn't it wasn't proven wrong. It was proven as a special case. But no, I mean, no, they're different because Newton's Newton's no, doesn't no, they're work. Not different. Newton, Newton, is, Newton is basically Newton's take, doesn't take, work on the solar no, you system can take, scale. You can take relativity. No, you can take relativity and, and take the the curvature down to close to zero, very low curvature, and you take the speeds and you reclaim Newton's equations from general relativity. Rel- Newton's <laughs> equations are in general relativity. They're I'm there. trying to help you out here, okay? So downward oh, acceleration I, on the I, Earth I is not this. because that the there's mass attracting mass. That's not what your model claims. And gra- electrostatics is yeah, ten to the thir- yeah, Listen, man, electrostatics is ten to the thirty sixth power stronger. I, I I than know. gravity even claims to be. And then you can look at um, Walter what? Lewin from MIT explain to you that all effects observed on the earth is from electricity or electrics or electrostatics that nothing to do with downward acceleration or anything observed with how your body is on the, the earth electric, or anything. We'll get to is that anything next. other than electric. Uh, this is MIT professor for four decades within I've your own paradigm videos. astrophysics. No, I've watched so, that video. No, I've got his book and I've watched that video. So it's but 10 again, to 36 power stronger than if, gravity claims to be. Watch, so but if, Yeah, but if you watch his videos on gravity he'll tell you that everything is electrically neutral which is why you don't see that you know again why we don't get much large scale electrical i mean right he says that out on the planetary scale that gravity takes over okay so when you're talking about all the planes and trains and automobiles on the earth and we couldn't even do anything on a flat earth because we have to use gravity that's patently false that isn't true electrostatics is way stronger than gravity just a fact it's mostly electrically neutral though no, it's, it's not, it has it, just because things cancel well, out doesn't mean it doesn't have electrostatic potential. Well, and its resting gonna, potential is 10 to the 20, 36 power stronger than gravity claims to be. All molecular and intermolecular attractive forces are electrostatic in nature. Go, These are all let's, objective let's things. Let's go through man. that because the electrostatics, I wrote a book. I understand the Earth's energies very well. So this, let's just go through. And I know you guys um, don't believe it. I'm just saying if gravity was true, you, you guys realize it'd be ridiculous. You know, things would, things would all go towards the center. But I, I know you don't. What? Believe it. I don't. Well, this is okay. If you had a disc and gravity was real, which you guys say it's not, the center of mass is going to be right here, right? We don't. We don't. That, we don't. We, we don't believe in gravity know, pulling you know. to the okay. center. So, so why uh, don't bother showing that? That's an old okay, Vsauce my, my, video. My whole point is that you obviously you can't believe in gravity because it's never going to work on a flat. No, earth. we don't believe in that fairy tale of gravity. Gravity is nothing more than incoherent dielectric acceleration. If you want to get super super it's technical, not it's, it's not. You can't it's, ex- not well, it's, you can't it's not. Explain. It's not point specific. Okay, it's let's, incoherent let's, electrostatic okay, well, for, acceleration. Okay, forget object, all that. That's why I jumped over. That's why I jumped over. So. I just want to show why it can't be density. You don't think it's density and boy. That's the thing is you guys can't agree upon. Is it electro? We don't, we don't group it's, think it's, like it's, the cold. No, no. The, the density and buoyancy sorts everything else out. Exactly. Right. Density and buoyancy depends on gravity. Uh, no, it doesn't actually. The Ar- Archimedes okay, principle okay. was long before I know the equation Archimedes, with G we'll in it. So Archimedes what are you talking about? It doesn't require. Well, so let's, let's start with density. Okay. So. <laughs> so if I have two two pails of water here, they're both the same density, but yet one is obviously is, is weighing more than another. So if things fall down because of density, shouldn't these be the same height then as far as the balance goes? You have to determine what causes weight and what gives something density. So you seem to be missing the point. So you're reifying no, gravity with mass times density, gravity as density weight. Density is but mass it's- divided by volume. It's not, it's, it's not how – density is mass – these two have the same density. This amount of water – this has less of half the volume, twice the volume, twice the mass, one half the mass. They have the same density. There's a different amount of them. It's a different amount, right? But it's, you say things fall because of density. They don't fall because of density. So okay, say, so uh, first so, of all, you're talking about weight, which is if you have two, yeah, yeah, you're so saying if you have weight? two liters of water, it pulls something down more than one liter of water, but water has the same density. Yeah, it makes density is part of the thing that determines it going down, right? And then how much you have is going to have a certain amount of downward pressure. Okay, but that, that's mass. As, I mean, yeah. Now you're okay, cool. I just explained everything that's material is electrostatic. So what gives something mass? What gives something its density? What gives something and weight? Not, well, Electrostatics is what holds it together. It's not gravity. Gravity is not holding okay, the okay. molecules together. So at higher at higher air density, things weigh more. So again, so what? So you did you did you guys deny gravity, but so at lower altitude the air is more dense okay so, and things um and objects will weigh um uh-huh. 
Okay, I'm just going to... No, a helium balloon on either low altitude or high altitude is doing the same thing. A golf ball is doing the same thing. It's dead city and buoyancy sorting everything else. And we have an electric everything else on it. Sorry. We have electric gradient on the earth, bro. So like 100 volts per meter. So yeah, we have an electric gradient. We have a pressure gradient. That's cool. There's a bunch of reasons we have a pressure gradient, which has to be contained, but I think you're going to get to that later. So anyway, the point well, is that look. there's a... the way. listen, man. There's electrics that sets the, the up and down, okay? On the flat plane earth. And then work. density and buoyancy, why does it not work? Because it's provable okay, well, and measurable, and yours is a fairy tale okay, that can't be proven at okay, all. Okay, so well, I'm, first of all, again, I'm I know confused. the electric fields of the Earth. So, so we know the gravitational field. Again, we can measure this. is relatively constant across the surface. You know, you can, you can mm. actually measure the gravity. Again, okay, gravitational acceleration, you guys call it 9.8 meters per second. You call it whatever atmospheric acceleration, whatever you want to call it. I don't know what you want to call Incoherent dielectric acceleration. What okay, whatever. That. So whatever this number is, is, is an empirical number, whatever you want to call it, can be measured across the Earth. And it's roughly by very high precision, the same across all of Earth. Again, this is empirical, measurable. You, you know, you yeah, can yeah, welcome to the yourself. flat Earth. Yeah. Okay, right. So you don't disagree. So now the no. problem with electricity, and when you guys use the 100, and I, got, I wrote about this in my book, so I know the, the, the global elect electrics very well. So the problem with, is that the electric, the electric um, potentials across the globe. There's a really what good is this? study by, by Carnegie. Well, I'm just believes trying to show in the you globe, that, though, bro. I mean, no, no, no. Listen, I'm trying to show you that this is very uniform and constant. The electric field across the Earth varies wildly. It, it it's not a constant thing like gravity. So you can't use electricity to, to describe 9.8 meters per second squared. It just doesn't okay. work. Based okay, on, so. Yeah, you know, you're not understanding. You're not understanding. For one, we don't live on a globe. Okay. For two, well, everything's electrostatic. The air is electrostatic. So we're saying that the electric really nature of the earth creates the down and up, the, the objective up and down. And density and buoyancy sorts the rest out. All no, matter no, 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 is but, electrostatic. You're not, you're so if we want to say it not. simply, it would be electrostatic no, you're, you're acceleration. I'm trying, even if this was flat, whatever. This is a uniform acceleration across. I mean, if you want to use your disc, I'm just trying to show you on your model this doesn't work. That you're wrong, though. No, I'm not wrong. I'm trying to show you that we have empirical evidence to show that the electric fields are very wildly across the planet because lightning strikes. You do realize that during a lightning storm, the potential, you know, the 100 volts per meter potential goes upwards to 10 to 20,000 volts per meter. And, so and during a lightning strike, sometimes things go flying in the air like they're weightless for a moment. No, they're not going to go <laughs> upwards 20,000 times stronger than normal conditions. Wait, I'm let's not, look. I, I, I had a, not. I had a, no, Dave, I had a lightning strike the corner of my house here. No kidding. I didn't levitate up in the air. The electrical potential would have had about 20,000 volts the other direction. Okay, I, would, doesn't, I should, doesn't I should matter. have levitated straight up. It just doesn't make any sense. Hey, Brian, can I ask you a very simple question? Yeah. Can you explain why the clouds are not being forced down to the ground by, by your gravity theory? I just want to hear your oh. version of it. Well, I mean, the, the clouds, I mean, it's the, 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 de the actual density of the atmosphere at that level. It's going to be the similar. There's, you know, there's millions of tons of water in the clouds. It's spread out very thinly, though, over it, large distances. Gravity that's doesn't why, make, uh, gravity has a mind of its own now? Well, gravity, I mean, come is, on, man. gravity is keeping those clouds from, I mean, gravity is- The helium balloon, atmosphere. too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, yeah it's we electrostatics. Know, the, the helium balloon, yeah. you know, it, things are, buoyancy is dependent on gravity. You know, gra the gravitational acceleration is right in the equation. That's not so the right gravity, answer. Well, it is the right answer. I mean, no, it's, it's, it's admittedly in your own paradigm, electrostatics that holds clouds together. It is, yeah. again, we're going back to this. If it was electrostatics, it then the, there should be a uniform electric field across the earth, giving us a downward acceleration of 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay. That is, that is not what we observe. We observe wild variations of the electric field across the, the electric circuits of the earth. Okay. You're misunderstanding nothing, again. No, this so. is, this is, this, 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 this proves that it, it can't be electrostatic. No, no. How, so just, how can it be electrostatic? Because everything I'm is trying constant. to tell you, man, I'm okay. trying to tell you, brother. So, okay, so we have an electric gradient on the earth. That's cool, 100 volts per meter. There's some variance. There's some variance in different places. That's that's not relevant, though. It that is sets absolutely the, relevant. Man, calm because... down, man. Calm down. I'm going to help you out, man. It sets the up and down, okay? So we have positive energy increasing. We have negative at the surface. It sets the up and down. Everything that falls is electrostatic. So well, that means it's electrostatic electric. acceleration, dude. You can't have density. You I, can't I, have mass. You can't have weight work. without electrostatics. Well, it's just what sets the up okay, and down. It doesn't matter if there's way more 
uh, positive okay. energy up higher, positive charge the problem up is, higher, it doesn't matter. It okay, doesn't no, matter. it doesn't matter. Listen to me. The electric field falls off exponentially faster than the gravitational 9.8 meters per second squared. On the top of Mount Everest, it's like 9.73 or something, right? The electric field I don't field think is you already, get it. No, you're not getting it. The electric field but beyond 20, beyond 30 kilometers, there's hardly any electric field at all. So how is it that we know gravity can still pull things down beyond 30 kilometers when there's no electrostatics up there? It, because gravity there's, doesn't- There's no it, electrostatics where? No, it's very low. No, if, oh. if you look, if, no oh. I've, I've researched these charts. If you look at how the electric field drops by altitude, it drops off exponentially faster than what we know the gravitational acceleration drop. Yes, it does. Look no, I'm saying up. you're not understanding it doesn't matter I, because what it, the electric nature How? of the earth does is sets the up and down because there's positive energy or electricity, positive charge, which is really just charge. There's no such thing. And then it's, there's discharge at the surface or what they call negative charge. So it sets yes. the up and down. Everything that exists electrostatic, we can prove this with a test. We can use a Cavendish, right? We can use a, or, I mean, not a, not a Cavendish, which we can actually, that is electrostatic too, but we can use a Van de Graaff oh, generator. Listen, Brian, I've check got, this out. I'm going to stop Cavendish, talking so much. I just want to help you out here. That's bro. patently wrong though. I've Van de Graaff Cavendish. generator. Have you heard of that? Yes, I've used them. I used to teach physics. Okay, can we make okay. things float with a Van de Graaff generator? You, yeah, if you, if you electrostatically charge them, you can get them to stick, you can get a balloon to stick to a wall. Can you make something float though? <laughs> if, oh, the, you're talking about the aero electrostatics, the, the research from MIT. Electrostatics, you can make things float. Okay, we also see it in okay, nature, well, hold bumblebee, on, hold on. bumblebees, beetles, uh, no, no, spider can't. ballooning. No, 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 that, that's something, that's the, that's the electro, that, that's the new technology, for this right here. They, new te bumblebees aren't new technology, man. <laughs> bumblebees you generate, have lift, they have wings, they generate lift. But their wings that's aren't the, aerodynamic, their bodies aren't aerodynamic, they use electrostatic they're resonance. Generating, they're still generating lift. No, and spider but ballooning but also but uses electrostatic you, levitation. And we can, it, this it, is it, what it, science it, is, Brian. What science oh, is, is that we manipulate an independent variable to prove the cause of the effect. No, and we can do this with electrostatics and make like things You close. can't do it with electrostatics, it varies. And we know David's that literally doesn't. showing it right now. He's literally know, showing it. I know, but if you take that same charge and put it against the wall, it'll stick to the wall. Okay. So you're, you're making my point stronger, which yeah, is that no, the I'm primary not. causal no, agent no. of the directionality of things going up or down or to the side. That it was, you just agreed that it would stick to the wall. Because you increase electrostatic surface charge, what happens once it runs know, out? It goes back fall, down. No. Electrostatics is called the dispersion or the van der Waals, of course. Yeah. Okay. What happens when it runs out of its surface charge that you added to it? It's going to no, fall gravity, back down to the ground. No, gravity's always downward. It doesn't go, you can't stick a balloon to the side of the. Because gravity is not real, my man. I'm sorry. It it's is, not like you're manipulating the bending again, and warping of space time. You can time. rebrand it into whatever you want. I spent a year studying electrodynamics so I could do a course on PMF because I did energy. I've done energy medicine for 25 years, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. I'm telling you that the what we know as the downward acceleration on planet Earth, so, is, it's very uniform. The electric field and electric volt is not uniform at all. It w varies wildly. And the Every, can I say one last closing thing and then I'll move on because I don't want to take over the whole thing. Okay, <laughs> Just check me out so you can know our position. You can decide if it's true or not when you look into it. Okay. I, I've into just, let me say one last thing. All molecular and intermolecular attractive forces are electrostatic in nature. So all matter is electrostatic, like even insulators, right? Rubber, glass, you name it. Okay, now that's an attractive force. It's attractive or repulsive. And so, and so listen, man, everything that falls is electrostatic. You can't find any matter that is Dude, electrostatic. I mean, if we manipulate that variable, we can make things float. Now we can prove that. We cannot manipulate the bending and warping of space-time. Relativity is a theory that has never been proven. And it's actually been debunked on the quantum and cosmological scale. Therefore, electrostatics I, I, let's, is the let's, only let's, viable let's, option. Okay, but- you know, I'm done. That's just, that's just, it's just nonsense. I'm it's fine. just a fact. It's all just objective. No, electrostatics does not have a directionality. You can stick a balloon to a wall. Gravity is always straight down. I, I told down. you that positive energy increases above the surface. We have an up and down that's set by the electric energy. nature on the earth. Positive it isn't complicated. Is positive, okay, tell me where that comes from. Positive energy, tell me where that positive energy the comes earth. from. The earth. So yes. let me ask you a question, Brian. Right here, this is MIT. They have a silent drone and it has no moving parts. Is it I, defying gravity or is it defying electrostatics? I'll tell you what it is. It's actually what's called corona discharge. So the, 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 the front part of it's a wire. I've seen this technology and I've looked at it. It's basically shooting out a stream of ions from the front thin wire to the back thicker one, okay? Corona discharge. That movement of ions is actually moving air under the wing, okay? It creates a very, very weak lift. 
but it will move it a little way like that. Now, they even admitted this only works in the atmosphere. You have to actually have air for this to work. That, what you just showed, will not work at high altitudes because there's not enough air up there for the corona discharge to shoot ions from one electrode to the other. And again, I spent a lot of time looking at this. This is how it works. It's called electro aerodynamic thrust, Dave. All right. And can we, can, all right. So um, we could agree to disagree on uh, half of what we said. The, the question now is let's take gravity and the atmosphere adjacent to a void. Can you explain how the atmosphere stays on the earth? Let's, let's get to that. Um, well, and first of all, we have to um, look at the rotation, which we didn't get to. So I wanted to, ex to explain the high speeds and slow rotation thing. And one of the things I've seen you guys share, where'd it go? Um, I think, I'm sorry, it's loading very slow. Um, oh, no, wait, it's not here, it's this rotation. Oh, I'll just go, to, I'll just go, forget it, I'll just go here. Oh, shoot, what's happened to my internet? Oh, it's the ether messing with you, man. Do you know that you can't fly north to south on the great meridian circle routes? Uh, you you would have the earth spin underneath you like thousands of kilometers over a five hour flight. It's, okay, well, what we can, we can, I, that's, no, I, I can explain that too. Um, okay. Okay, so, so first of all, we have to understand the atmosphere, it's not a hard division. So you got this very slow, very slow gradient. It's, it, it's a gradient that, that tapers off very slowly. And like I said, this is the Kármán line, right? The Kármán line is 100 kilometers above the surface. And it basically is like a thin bubble around the Earth. The, the atmosphere is not some big, thick thing like I see. Thick or thin, go ahead. Paper thin, right. So these speeds, I did the calculation. So you can actually calculate like, with the atmosphere rotating with the Earth that you end up with only uh, like a, a 12 mile an hour difference between the surface and that this altitude based on the whole radius. So these numbers are just way off. I mean, whoever shared this is just... So, Forget all those numbers. We have an atmosphere so, okay. sitting on the earth adjacent right? to a void of no pressure. So it's not, well, first of all, when you go, when you take this gradient, all right, you're going it, very slowly from a high pressure slow to no pressure. I, I got it. And it goes until there's nothing left. So and now you're like, in it. Not, like, so, so what's holding it down? Gravity. Okay. So here's a question for you an experiment. I'm in a room and I have a shoebox and I, suck all the air out of the room, an open shoebox. I suck all the air out of the room from underneath. So now I'm in a vacuum. Is the air in the shoebox going to stay in the shoebox? Is gravity going to hold it in the shoebox? Yeah, but in that situation, you've got all the atmosphere pushing down on you. No, no, no. I suck all of the air out of the room. So the room is now a vacuum. It's space. It has no air. The only difference from space is the room has a container. But that shoebox of air, according to you, the gravity should hold the air in the shoebox. Because if that doesn't work, if you say it wouldn't no, do no. that, then your entire no. gradient argument is off the table. No, the, if you're talking about six, a six sextillion ton Earth. It's a huge mass pulling... So that's a lot of mass pulling the, the atmosphere that's very paper thin, like you agreed on. The so it, it's oh, holding listen, the air down, to but I can pull the air up and away with a straw. No, you're not. What you're doing is you're actually you're, you're sucking out the air, and it's the atmosphere pushing down from gravity that's pushing the water up. This is how the straws work. You're, you're creating a partial vacuum in the, in the straw. I used to teach this, Dave. I mean, this is what, this is what it is. Uh, uh, and can, what happens is, you know, well, here's, here's one. But Dave, ask him again because I, I didn't understand his no, answer no, no, for no. this shoebox. Yeah, you understand that atmospheric pressure is fourteen pounds, fourteen point seven pounds. Yes. Square inch. Yeah. You know, we all know a, that. So this is a fifteen pound weight. So this amount of atmosphere—it's a huge. Have try this experiment. Mm -hmm. Hold up a fifteen pound weight. Okay, every square inch is fifteen pounds of pressure. So when you create a partial vacuum in that straw. There's one atmosphere or fit or 14.7 pounds per square inch pushing the water down and up. What about my shoebox? I don't understand the shoebox. So why doesn't so, water wait? Why doesn't water come out of the straw when you just put a straw in a glass in? Because there's no there's no partial vacuum. The air is still there. You've got to actually suck the air out to get that's a what you're saying. So it, and I guess the shoebox is the wrong example. Let's not, say it's not hard. It's not hard to understand. Hold on. Let's too. say that there's a box that is sealed. It's got air in it. Okay, we suck the okay. rest of the air out of the room so that there's just the box there with the air in it. When we slide okay. the top off the box, will the air then stay at the bottom of the box? 
because what, of gravity? To, I don't know what you're trying to say. Gravity. Why don't you just listen for a second? Listen, if you're in a room. I, I am listening. Okay, then answer the question. If you're in a room and there's a and we suck all the air out, but there's only a shoe uh, a box in the middle of the room that has air in it, and then we remove the top of that box. Where is that air going to be? Is it going to stick to the earth or is it going to How does that relate to the I'm asking you a question. It doesn't matter how it relates. I'm just asking you. I want to well, know because because you said that the gravity holds the air under the earth and the air gets thinner and thinner and thinner. Okay, okay so we okay. removed all of the air out of the room, so there's no pressure okay. from the atmosphere okay. pushing down on this box. We open okay, up I the understand. box. Gravity okay. holds the air in there but or we, not? Yeah, but do we still have gravity or not? Are we? Are yes. We trying to yeah, say, we have on, gravity. on your Earth. Your gravity. Yes, on okay, your but Earth. But have you actually done that experiment to get down to a zero yes. vacuum? Yes. Yeah, people have done that. People have put a chamber inside of a vacuum chamber. It's not that hard to do it. Okay, yes. But, it, but so, but here's here's the thing, Brian. I mean, a little bit. If the answer is the air would not come, it oh, would come okay. out of the box, and the entire okay, pressure I mean, gradient next to a void is 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 off the table. No, no, no. And here's the other thing: there's nowhere in science, nature, or anywhere that you can have high pressure next to low pressure without a without a container. Nowhere, anywhere. What do you mean Ever. high pressure next to low pressure? High, any, any higher pressure next to lower pressure or hey. no pressure in hey. any orientation. Okay. It doesn't matter. Listen, do you, do you have a little app that can measure the pressure in your house, the atmospheric pressure? I don't. You can Wait, why would you not answer his question? No, no, listen, I'm answering his question. You can, you can literally measure the pressure at one altitude and go up and higher and see that it drops at the altitude. Okay, but that, he asked that, you what that, would happen to the pressure in the box. That is lower pressure next to higher pressure. That is lower pressure next to higher pressure. You can measure no. that probably. What would happen with the pressure in the box? The, the kinetic theory of gases says the gases are, are, are going out fast. So but when space, you have yeah. the sheer scale of the Earth and the gravity well of planet Earth, they're not going to go outside of the gravity but, well. They might, they might in that room scatter around because gases do that. That's the kinetic theory of gases. But what's different about it? It's the same gravity. On the surface yeah, it's of the, the Earth. same, same right. gravity is pulling. I, I, yeah, I know, but you're, you're not looking at the whole that, that those gas molecules aren't going to escape into out, out of the space. They might gravity is actually pulling on them, but you have to look at like again. I don't you have to do the calculations. You got to see okay, mm. here's what the kinetic theory of gases says, and gravity is going to pull down. And there's going to be some energy that might be moving them around, but gravity is still there pulling them down. But isn't gravity have, stronger at the surface though? But there's other forces than just gravity. You guys realize that, right? There's I'm just asking like a simple question. Isn't gravity strongest at the surface or technically at the center of mass, right? So the oh, right, surface. But, but it's a very slow, gra I mean, it goes off very slowly though, you see? So that small gradient, it's not a very fair experiment because you've got to get on a larger scale to see a, a, a big difference in the gravitational field. Do you not see his point though? Like if we take I, gas I, I see and it's in a point, vacuum on not, the surface where the gravity is the strongest. Is, but, it but goes we, in all directions. I know, but so we, how would it stop it next to a vacuum where gravity's weaker? The gravitational field of the it, the reason that's because you see you see less gas up there, right? So that's the reason why there's more pressure at sea level because it does have less. That's and less a non sequitur gravity. to the question, though. It isn't. This is why you're getting close to a, a vacuum at a kilom at a hundred kilometers up. It's almost a vacuum. Yeah, you're just I mean, you're, so the, you're repeating the, the same thing. Line. So this gradient is because of gravity. That's why you know the gra gravitational field decreases with altitude. That's why you know less and less. You know you get. That's a begging the question fallacy. Well, well, yeah. what are you trying to? I don't understand what you're trying to. We're saying it. Listen, listen. If we have gas pressure in a container on the surface and it's next to a vacuum, once we open that box, it's going to fill the vacuum violently, right? It's immediately going to seek equilibrium. Second law of thermodynamics. Oh, wait, wait, about, Second law of thermodynamics. Oh. The gas is going to fill the vacuum because high pressure goes to low pressure, right? Kind Entropy of like this, will... railroad, this railroad tank truck, how it just implodes like this. It has nothing to do with what we're talking about, but yeah. Do, why why can't you just hear me out and answer? Just listen so to we Austin. Can hear I'm just trying to understand what you're so saying. So listen to Austin. Just listen to him. He's going to explain something. Just listen and, and take it in. Yeah. So like if we have a container of gas on the surface of the earth, and then we have a vacuum chamber and we open the gas next to a vacuum chamber. That gas from the container, once we open the lid, it's going to fill the vacuum violently, right? It's going to immediately seek equilibrium and fill that vacuum, fill the available space. And that's on the surface where gravity is the strongest. I know, but the gravitational field is still acting on all those particles, but there's other things going on. You know, again, the gases are very, they have a lot of motion and energy. So that's the, what we're saying. Oh, oh, yeah, actually, I know. I know the reason because at the at the surface of the Earth, the temperature actually makes gases move faster. So, 
that's the problem when you have something like a gas, you've got a higher temperature, that's where they're gonna move around. So gravity is still pulling on them, but there's other factors at play there besides just, besides just uh, gravity. Vacuum chambers are actually not uh, very warm, bro. So even we're on the surface level, when we have a vacuum chamber where it's not warm, well, again, the gas is still going to immediately that fill the vacuum. The point is that it's filling the vacuum. It. And That's if it's at the isolated exp experiment, if you want to send me the experiment, <laughs> fine. You can do it a million times, man. Do you not see the intrinsic contradictory nature well, of I mean, what you're did saying? Do you see the contradictoryness of you're what you're using saying? One little isolated thing. It's not an not, isolated thing. We're trying to explain to you that gravity isn't sufficient to, to hold down gas when it's adjacent to a vacuum. The gases have kinetic energy and they're moving around. That's, I mean, what, we're that's saying. what we're saying. I know, right. But I'm saying when you've got a large scale of a huge six sextillion ton Earth that creates this gradient of different pressures. So you, yes, you've got a lot of mo movement going on at every, you know, nobody doubts we have storm systems. I mean, we've got all kinds of stuff going on, but as a whole, it, the gravity is keeping everything. But it's on. not, it doesn't keep it down the surface where it's the strongest. And the, the strongest vacuum you, we can replicate is pressure. like 10 to the negative six tour, right? They yeah. claim space is 10 to the negative 17 tour. So that's where gravity is the weakest. It's close. It's know, next but, to a much, much different know, but, pressure but, but differential. Vacuums, the vacuums aren't sucking things out. I mean, no one said that gas fills the space. Vacuums know, don't suck. That's another non sequitur The gravitational though. field is what's keeping everything in place. That's why. So why doesn't it keep, the, why doesn't it keep that air in that box in place? Okay, so the bot. Well, again, I haven't done that experiment. I haven't, okay, but I you don't even need to do the experiment. Just think about it and let's pretend. Yeah, yeah, use your mind and, and yeah, let's come pretend. I'm using my solution. mind, so, but you're using a little tiny room. Okay, no, hold on. Of like entire huge, um, a huge. I mean, so it, you're it, saying it, that the it, little tiny space. room gas or the little tiny room vacuum is stronger than the vacuum of I, space? I'm saying that gravity is pulling down on those gas molecules, but they also have a kinetic energy, and they there's a lot going on there that you're just. So why energy. doesn't the kinetic energy of our atmosphere go off into the fill the void of space? It actually does. We lose we lose atmosphere oh. every every. Day. And who told you that? And where, where? How did you measure this? Measure this is just I've a theory. Actually, this is just no, a theory. I actually heard David Murphy, Dave Murphy, say, saying this is it some kind of like you're losing atmosphere. I'm like, yeah, you're right, Dave. We are. But we got about 150 million years based on this calculation of atmosphere still up. A theory. No, it's but a yeah, theory. so no, we can no. One of your own flat earth people has brought this up at a, at a debate. Okay. Okay. Why well, you're appealing to, yeah, they're talking about how well, your saying, model has a theory. No, I'm saying that's... that we do lose uh, atmosphere every day and it's actually a lot, but it's compared to how much atmosphere there is. It's a small amount. That's what we're saying. That doesn't make sense. That's not how the second law works. I know, but it's. Why does some escape and not all? It's because again, it's, it's a little. Gravity's holding it. It's, it's a statistical thing. You've got a little bit of you've got a little bit of gas no, at the fringes. Statistical. Is it like rolling? You got gravity's out here shooting dice, bro. No, no. Like, it's, not... You just have because there's a lot less up there. There's not that much that's going to come out. But but yeah, because the pressures are so low, there is going to be some of this that will you know escape out. But it's, it's but then the stuff lower the stuff lower down small, is being held by the gravity, a small right? Percentage, yeah, to the, to what's left. So. Okay. Yeah. You know, this debunks I mean, the model, bro. It doesn't debunk the model. It does. It's physically impossible. It's contradictory to natural law. It's not though. I mean, it literally is. Gra gravity it works just perfect to keep the. You can't have a pressure gradient. Without but we just gravity. explained. We just gave it a, a thought experiment that but shows that gravity doesn't. Really? Do you think electrostatic? Electric gradient on the Earth. Yeah. Awesome. Electric what was the difference gradient. again? The Austin? electric gradient falls off a lot faster than gravity does. It doesn't work. How much stronger, Austin? Work. I want to hear it again. How much stronger is the electrical? Uh, oh, would, 10 to the 36 power stronger than gravity exactly. even claims it's to be. also electrically, because it's so strong, it, it attracts like that. Everything's neutral because of that. And, That's and such a non sequitur. The, the, the electric force on the earth. I just now quoted MIT four decade long professor Walter Lewin telling you that all observations we see on the earth are electric. And the only time gravity begins to account for anything is out in space on the planetary scale. Well, you have, yes, you have electrical phenomena on the earth, but most, for the most things that we deal with in everyday life, everything's electrically neutral for the most part. But it's all has electrostatic potential and it's all electric and the air's electric and everything's I know, electric. But the, but the point is that the 9.8 <laughs> meters It's not gravity, per second, bro. 9.8 meters per second squared is uniform. We can measure this uniform across the planet. Yeah. The electric field varies wildly. There's no way that that can account for the 9.8 meters per second drop. Not only that, the electric field becomes basically zero at about 30 or 40 kilometers up. Again, measurably so. What? 
Yes, it the, goes I, up a hundred volts per meter. It gets stronger no, as you go. No, it you doesn't. Have, where where, no, where did you come up with it gets it gets weaker? It gets weaker. I, I, what are you talking about? The electric field at a hundred volts per meter, as you go up in altitude, that that drops off. Mm-mm. When you get to like the ionosphere, where it becomes highly con- no, this is look it up. The ionosphere. No, the, I'm saying there's a highly conductive realms within the atmosphere that then the electric yeah. field gets blocked. You, you don't the electric field drops. How high is up. that? It's well, it's, it's it's pretty high up, but it's not it's not it's not out into space where gravity still works. Gravity's not real, man. So the point oh, is there's that there's no electric fields up there. What's what's pulling things towards the earth? I mean. It, no, okay, we, we said it's up and down. Density. We've explained it, but I got a question. When you would you like to admit you were miss you misspoke when you claimed that all this stuff to do with trains and cars and stuff has to have gravity exist? When when I just now no, quoted the, from your own paradigm, MIT professor, right? I watch Watcher Lewin. You, you said watch, you watched it, but you keep denying what he said. No, I don't. I'm not denying electromagnetism. I'm just saying that you that when you actually build structures like bridges and buildings, you always use Newton's laws. Of, of motion and gravitation cool story it's just nothing it's to do not with downward story. acceleration that's hey, all it is up. coulomb's law is the same thing except you replace your your little fairy tale just, gravity with a charge you, you have a constant velocity the known, and the same thing the known the known values oh. of electric field vary wildly across the planet where we know the gravity that's a non sequitur bro it's not it, it, it you don't understand it then it debunks the electric static model is what it does no it doesn't all, it does all molecules do you agree that all matter is electrostatic you just agreed that the, that, that the uniform acceleration across the surface of the Earth is uniform. And I just showed you that you can easily find out that it's not. Do you agree that all matter is electrostatic? All matter is electrostatic? Yeah. Why would you say the word electrostatic? All matter that exists is electrostatic. I would not say, I would not put it that way. Can you name one thing that isn't? When you say electrostatic, I mean, electrostatics that deals with just, I used to teach this, right? It's, it's Colum's law where you're dealing with just pure charges without magnetism. So when we, okay. study, when we study electrostatics, we're, we're not using magnetism at that point. We're just looking at Colum's law without a magnetic field. So no, okay. it's not all electrostatic because there is magnetism, there is mass, and there what? is other forces. Can no, you name I, one piece of matter that's not electrostatic? One mean? type of matter. That's not, how you, that's not how you define matter, electrostatic. Can you name one type of matter that's not electrostatic? That, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> All molecular and intermolecular <laughs> attractive forces are electrostatic in nature. All matter is electrostatic. Matter has, again, it's got, you know that matter ha, it has mass, charge, spin. So there is charge in there. Yes, I'm not denying that there is not a charge on oh, electric particles. In all matter. But there's also mass and there's also spin and there's also other things. It's not. Yeah, you get charge to mass ratio. You're always looking at charge. And that's what holds the matter together. And that means everything that falls down to the earth is electrostatic. No, it's not. You can't. Oh, my gosh. Show me a model. Okay, with your electrostatic theory, I'll give you a challenge. Show me how you can calculate 9.8 meters per second down. Give me an equation where I can use your electrostatic model to verify that things fall at 9.8 meters. Because with Newton's laws, I, I can do that. Okay, we can use the same exact equation. We just have to properly define mass. Gravity is nothing more than downward acceleration. Little g is downward acceleration. That's just, re- that's just rebranding gravity. You're just wait, wait, listen, it. buddy. You don't, you don't understand that little g is just downward acceleration. It isn't a cause claim. And Newton just, literally said that anyone that claims mass attracting mass through the vastness of a vacuum on innate brute matter without something, some medium acting between it, is incompetent beyond belief not, whatever it is i mean yes i agree we, we have a law of gravitation that gives us powerful tools to make calculations to build things but the theory based gravity, on downward acceleration right, so it doesn't right. mean it's is a okay. constant across the surface and it decreases okay. very, very predictively with altitude that based on the one over r squared drop off of gravity that does not that. happen with the electric field it, it provably does not happen uh, provably all matters electrostatic and so you have that's incoherent not, electrostatic no, excel no if you're trying to give a model that talks about electrostatics being the downward reason that things fall down i'm telling you that the, that the electrostatic field of the earth does not match the 9.8 meter drop it just doesn't it, it drops off very quickly 
and it becomes so almost- you don't understand it's not that electrostatics is pulling stuff off in, in a vacuum down to the earth that's not how no, it works but, it just but, sets the up and down i'm, I'm i don't want to take but, over but, the whole but, thing but, and make but, it really but a light, but again around a lightning storm i would be i had a lightning strike hit my house oh. that's like that's a thirty thousand, like a 10 20 to thirty thousand volt reversal so why didn't i go up into the clouds because your much house like, is grounded it went into the ground that's why yeah, you, know, it had if, to be really strong. You'd probably die. I know, but if you stand near, a, if you're in a lightning storm with that kind of potential, you don't start levitating up. Things you we don't? can levitate things with electrostatics. You know, literally. You're telling me that people are levitating all the time around yeah. lightning. People storms? have gotten hit by lightning and go flying in the air. All sorts Straight of up. stuff happens. Well, I know. But right, there's, so, there's, so there's hang seven, on, hang on. I know you have a bunch of other things you want to get into. We're gonna we're we're gonna come up on three hours. So would you like to let's agree that we don't agree and let's go on to I something know, else you guys got to rework your electrostatics model because it doesn't work it just doesn't mm, we disagree it, we, we disagree. disagree agree or disagree so you're agree to disagree you a little balloon experiment dave where you have it go to the ground and you can stick it to the wall gravity doesn't get stuck to, i don't because hmm? gravity is a fake force exist. i know but yes. if, I, if i if i take if i take this lead ball a little piece of a little piece of wood this is more dense than that it should stick to the lead. no it doesn't, it goes down but no one, no one thinks that. Why I know, are you saying that? No one thinks that. I understand, but electrostatics, you can stick a balloon to the, or if you're the little experiment, you can also put that near a wall and it will stick. Why doesn't gravity pull it down? Yeah. What do you mean, why doesn't gravity? Why doesn't gravity pull it down if gravity's real? If, there, if there's electro, well, because there's force, other forces at play. Because electrostatic okay. is so way we, stronger. We, there's there's, I, no, there's I all imagine. sorts of electrostatic no, 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 forces just, that we can lift things off the ground with. We haven't been able to do it with gravity because we can't figure out what gravity no, is. No, no. Let's move on. No, yeah, I'm just when it falls, you, it's still electrostatic and never goes away. You know so agree to disagree. You know what a free body diagram is? You've got to draw all the forces acting on the body. So with the, with the balloon on the wall, there's going to be an electrostatic attraction from the van der Waals dispersion force. There's going to be a downward force of gravity. Okay, so you've got to get the resultant force to see what's going to happen. In that case, the resultant force is stronger from dispersion or lunar or van der Waals than it is from gravity. Okay, okay. Because, because you're adding charges by you know rubbing the balloon on your sweater, you're transferring charge. Okay. I'm saying in general, when we're not doing these things to create charge, you're not going to get electrostatics to create the downward 9.8 meters. Even second. when it falls, it's electrostatic after it loses its charge and comes off the wall. So just agree to disagree, bro. I yeah, know. But, hey, but no, but I, I wanted to say one more thing because if you're going to you get the final word, go ahead, Brian. If you're going to get use electrostatics, you've got to use Maxwell's equations to actually Must. calculate mm -hmm. 9.8 meters per second or Coulomb's law. If you can do that, then I'll believe electrostatics is real. But you've got to have some equation besides. You believe it's real. <laughs> you're, you're basically just taking the gravitational equation and saying that that's electrostatics. All right. It's Oh, you are. Yeah, you really are. So, uh, he said you have the final word. Agree yeah, that was the final word. Agree to disagree. Um, do you want to? Do you want to do? Um, you were talking about you could show drop, a horizon drop, uh, and you don't, don't know, like I the. Don't do, I don't want to do that. Just you crazy. don't want to do that one. Oh, well, because the perspective stuff. We're just gonna. We're just gonna. Oh uh, yeah. yeah. I was really but hoping you, for some proof of curvature. I mean, I've been looking for seven years. You, you had an. You had on. an image that uh, on your sheet that was quite interesting, um, of of um a, a lake or something where you where you could see below it you could see the drop i think this image right oh, yeah, here I, I, this image right here which one can you see oh, my yeah, screen yeah, yeah. oh yeah 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 I, I did the calculations on that right so you did the calculations i have to ask you a question where's the horizon is it right here the horizon is below eye level it's a little is it bit. but is this the horizon here the horizon well, that's the that's the apparent horizon. The, the but but this is is this the horizon you're you're measuring, saying that it's below eye level, right? Because eye level it's a drop, and again you got to look at the actual the calculation because the geometric drop. What he yeah, did, but where actually, are you putting that? I'm, I'm asking you a question. Is this the horizon? Where did you calculate it from? Hori horizon, horizon. Is this the dropped horizon that you're talking about right here? Well, let me let me see what you. Okay, Jaren, am I big so you can see? You're small. Oh, can you make me a big, please? Mm, it's not really my job, but all right. Great. Um, but the, my so in your in your paper, I was looking, and I think you were talking about this being the dropped horizon. Yeah. So you're looking right. So the is is so this the horizon? Yeah. So you're looking down right. So that would all be right. The so horizon. that's not the horizon. This is the horizon. Okay. Oh, that's, that's this is high level. That's no, 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 no. Yeah, this is a, this is eye level horizon exactly. If you can see, everything is mirrored here, right? So this isn't an apparent horizon. 
but this is mirroring. Now, if there was no land here, if there was just ocean there, you would, you would think that this was the curve of the earth, but it's not, it's just mirrored. And, and you, the, now this is just a, an image, but if we, if we actually look and we, we see um, this is a boat going beyond that horizon where there's no land past it. So let me just fast forward here a little bit. This boat is floating in the air because your horizon's right here. Well, let's look at some of my boats in our day. But, but, but uh, first I'm showing you the image that you showed us is uh, where you thought the horizon was, where all your calculations were done is not. This is the actual horizon, oh, not this. No, and, and, and by the way, the, having land or something in the background, it's super easy to see. Having nothing in the background makes it an argument that we can never win. Right. Okay, because because you, you'll be like, no, that's not, you know, but I, I'm showing you on this other image on this video, um, this boat is going far over that it's floating, but you see the horizon here. If these trees weren't here, this boat would be flying in the air. That's, okay? not, that's too close, though. That's way too close. It doesn't matter. The farther it goes out, the worse it gets. That's and by the way, and by the way, if, if you see the horizon here, if let's say the boat went another 50 miles out there. It would just get harder and harder to see, and it would mirror the sky, and you would think that this is a physical horizon. This is an optical horizon. The real horizon's out here. Send me the video, and I'll look at it. I can't see it here. Okay. Well, you you have my app. Go to Boats Over the Horizon. There's a hundred of these videos. Okay, let's look at some of my Boats Over the Horizon. All right. Beautiful. Bring on the waves. Small, you got. Okay, can you see my... Okay. Yeah. I see a big wave in the foreground, but go ahead. It's not a big wave. Oh, it's not. Okay, go ahead. You think that's Let a wave? That's, that's the bulge of the earth. So how, I mean, <laughs> this is the Yo, problem. You can't just say you, it. Well, the, this is the problem is you guys will take boats that are not over the horizon, and then you can, yeah, you can bring them back with the zoom, but if they actually go over the horizon, like this one with critical things. So do you think that any boat can be seen to go over the horizon with just your naked eye? No, you you got, you got to... Now, I well, asked a question. Somebody, somebody, could, could, can you well, see both? Because it matters, if an optical because, it matters because they tell us that that's the way that they figured out that the Earth was round hundreds of years ago, which is ridiculous because they would have never seen any boat go over the actual horizon. They would have seen it disappear from their eyesight. If they would have had a zoom camera, you know, they would have pulled it back. Bottom, bottom up every time. I mean, it, it disappears from the bottom up. Just like your son does, right? Mm. So here, here's a building, okay, where the bottom few floors are missing. But if you look, these balconies, which are all the same, are getting compressed, 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 compressed. And hang on, there's a there's waves here in the foreground. This horizon, this apparent horizon, is dozens of miles closer than this. And these little waves, again, it's the same way the sun sets. It's being blocked. My finger can't hide my face if it was a wave, but if my finger was closer, I can set behind it. It disappears know, behind but the, it. But little waves can't explain this. So yes, a millimeter above your eye level can knock out an entire Dave, city where, skyline. Where's your Lego? 100%. Where's your Lego video? This is this is not from. I this don't know where it is. is. Oh, that was a good Lego video. <laughs> no, I'm just showing that when you zoom, when this is zoomed out, when you zoom it in, it doesn't matter if you take you can take the original screenshot and just zoom that original. It still gives you the same. So you're not able to bring this back from a zoom. Because when you take that that image and just zoom in the actual image of the distance, it's still the same as if you actually zoomed in with the camera, and that is very much over the horizon. Those are not well, but but see, that's what you don't understand. The that horizon that you're seeing is called the wave front edge. It's a it's a horizon that is way closer to you than those objects. Okay, well, those sure. o- hold on. The hold maximum on. distance is like three miles, right, of the so waves. If this, if this was a boat, right, and this is the wave front edge, which is that which makes it look like it's at your eye level. This boat is just going to go beyond it, and it's just going to disappear behind it, okay. right? From the bottom up. From the bottom up. Correct. And that's okay, just show, perspective. Okay, it's not. But show me a picture. Okay, it's not. <laughs> well, no, it's, no it's show not. me a picture. Show me a it's not. Show, it's not. show it. What, what do you want to say? Go ahead. No, show me your, what you're talking about, the wavefront occlusion or whatever it is. Uh, so, uh, again, okay, so, so in, think in the, the app, in the app, just watch the boats over the horizon. It explains oh, it for you. Brian, if you're, you can only see the edge of the... The edge of show these spheres is three miles away, right? showing you. It's not, sh- you're showing me tricks. I mean, all these things. They're not tricks. I'm showing you tricks. They're three miles, three miles away would be the furthest We're you could s- see the edge of the earth, right? The, the curvature of the earth. So if there's waves there, what? 
What? There's little, this is a huge boat. Little waves are not going to include it. This is a big steam liner. Oh boy. It's going to hide the whole thing. That steam liner is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller until its angular size is too small for you to see. That Wait, wave, right? that wave front edge is going to block it for miles okay. in, in front of it. Okay, you see what I'm doing right here, right? This is getting off in the distance where your angular resolution can't see it very well. And we're taking this original image and blowing it up, and it's still the same as if we actually zoomed in. It's it's no different. So it's both cases. It's already it's over. You can't bring back a what, ship. What, what kind of horizon. camera was this? Can I ask what kind of camera was this? What kind of zoom? Uh, what kind of zoom optics were you looking at here? This is this probably isn't... a P nine hundred. I mean, I didn't do it, but I mean. Okay. So you obviously you've seen one P nine hundred still image that you're fixed on. No, Have it's you seen not. The yeah, wait, 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 wait. Let me finish. Funny. Have yeah. you seen the thousands and thousands of others that bring the boat back into view? Right. Uh, can we have you? No, you know yes or no? Is. Have I'll, you seen I'll, them? I've seen a lot of them, and I'll okay. tell you what it is. It's boats why are you picking on one, Bryant? Why are you it's picking like, on one? What about the thousands with, that bring it back? And it's Brian, boats. the ones that when you can't see the boat, it's always that a rough, is. windy, wavy day. No, it's always a rough, windy, wavy day. Those boats that are coming back are not over the horizon. They're small boats that are near the edge of the horizon. But when you actually get a boat that's over the horizon, you can't bring it back. But yes, you can bring That's back because boats. it's behind a wave that you cannot get by. You can't see through That's it. Not a wave. That's Absolutely, the is That's exactly how perspective works. Right? I showed you with my flat Earth sunset and my kitchen sunset. Yep. That's exactly the same on That's the water. It's a experiment. It doesn't prove anything. But <laughs> science experiment doesn't prove anything. But your memes <laughs> that you found on Google does. No, yeah. no. These science exper these memes are based on science that has peer reviewed studies where you have independent labs validating. The stuff you guys are so what kind of science have you done bryant with boats over the horizon can we see what you have done because we've done freaking tons of stuff can i see what you have done when you say science it's nothing but no, no, no. a energy. science experiment i said have you done one with boats over the horizon and if you have which it sounds like you have many i mean you might you what you're bringing it up can we see it D dave uh, can i show I, the legos I, 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 I'm just um, yeah, you have it, Andy. Okay. Yeah, I have it. Okay. I mean, let's just move on then. No, it's okay. Let's just move on then. I see our lies. Let's just move on. Imagine that they're okay. making up all these boats over the horizon. Jared's going to show. Jared, hold, hold on. Yeah, let, we'll give, give us a, a moment. It's going to take a second for me to get it. Oh, Brett, he's he's pulling pulling it up. But again, when we look at large boats, um, when they disappear, the only some of the times, the when they disappear, they don't always disappear like that. Um, it's because there's waves in the foreground, and those waves, just like like um. Those waves Here's my biggest will, problem. Oh, will block an entire city skyline. See, these, these are big waves out here, right? And this boat is going to disappear behind them, right? There's all sorts of optical effects going out here, and it's never the same. It changes every day. Yeah, I it live changes. in California, so I go out to the, the beach day. sometimes, the Brian. I'm sorry, guys. That's the curb you're seeing well, right I'm there. sorry that's not because I've, I've been out there, and here's the problem I have with it. Because you know what? Eventually, you know what? The boat does appear to go over an edge. Eventually, it looks like that. I've been Way out to the beach edge. and looked at it. Right. But the problem I have is why do they continue telling people that the reason they knew the earth was curved is because they saw boats go out and go over the edge? Because that is not true. Because when I go out to the beach with my plain eyes, I see boats disappear and I can always bring them back with a zoom in camera. Now, eventually, always. you're right. Event yes, always. but listen, eventually yeah. the boat go. What do you mean? You, you don't think with your eyes, you think you can see a boat go over the curve? I'm not saying that. I'm saying you can't always bring these boats that are well over. Right, because no, sometimes you're not listening they're behind to what I said. the wave front You're not listening edge. to what I said. Let Darren finish. It's not what I said. Darren finish what he's saying, bro. I said. The front edge doesn't make sense. I said uh, that with sense. my so eyes. Let him finish. With yes. my eyes, I always see the boat look like it disappears. Then I pull out the camera and I can pull it back. So if that's true, then there's no way that Aristotle or Ptolemy or any of these guys saw boats go over the edge and then knew that the earth was curved because that's impossible. They couldn't have seen yep. boats go over. Well, but there's, there were some pretty big boats, though, right? I mean, Brian, this <laughs> is the wave front edge right here. I don't have the video. I wish I did. But the entire deck of where these fishermen are, you can't even see it because it's behind this wave front edge. When I zoom hard. out, hold on. When I zoom out, all of this water beyond the boat becomes unseeable. And the boat is missing from half down. And it's behind the wave front edge. Now, we know this is in curvature because we can see water back here. Right. Okay, this is the way. Hold on, this is the wave front edge right here. Zoom out. This is going to look like a horizon right here. This boat's going to look yeah, like it's behind it. Boat. Hold that's on, hold on. If that boat was out here, way out here, it would be totally gone. Right? You wouldn't be able to see it. And big boats, the same thing. A, 
a big boat in the distance will get as small as a small boat closer. It doesn't matter. And the farther out you go, the worse it gets because that wave front edge doesn't keep moving away from you. It stays close. Do you have a paper that goes over wave front edge? You have to have a paper, Dave. You have to have paper. No, just anything. But I mean, this doesn't, this does no, this does nothing to back it up. No, we go, we don't, we don't, the government doesn't back it. We don't. No, we I just want to see some. We don't write of, papers. We go out I mean, and make but, observations. But Brian, do you understand? Just because there's a small wave in front of a small boat doesn't mean that a, a wave front edge. Okay, Dave, which one do you want me to show? Right. This one you'd rather see a paper. Anyone Brian, you want, Darren. This one, you'd rather Press see a paper, Brian, Bryant, than an actual experiment done or go do it yourself. You'd rather see a paper. How your proof that a wave front edge Here, can include a huge this. boat. Watch this. Watch this. Wait, I don't see that. You're not sharing, Darren. Yeah, I am. It's on the screen. Is it? Oh, okay. Yeah. There you go. It's I not. Well, I might. Yellow brick in the distance. So it's just all showing you that, that all these bricks are falling behind this blue br- brick here. You break. What? Oh, you were breaking up for a second. Oh. Those are all very level, but just because of the way you look, it can be a mile away. You can see this blue block away. covers all the white bottom pieces I of can't the, really see it. I mean, okay, well, I mean video, I'll look at it. Can you make it I'm bigger? I'm not sure that's but, the case, but well, just, just I'll look at it. Just send it to me. I'll, I'll take a look at it. Okay, and then here's another one. There you there go. You go. I've, I've seen some of these videos. Yeah. So there's your wave front edge. Those blue bricks are, and they're covering up five or six layers of of um higher. I know, but levels. Here, but the camera is. The no, the, you can still see the table. You can still see the table. Know, I'm above but, the table. But you know that sometimes the actual lenses, when you put a, a bigger zoom. But my eye sees it. My eye sees it the same way. My point is those blue, oh, those the blue line there. Those that's the wave front edge right there. I can't see any of the counter beyond it because the wave is blocking it. Okay. And then as those Legos get smaller into the distance, they disappear behind know, the blue Lego there, wave front edge. Days where the water is calm, Dave, and when the water is calm, there's no wave it, front edge to block you both. You're right, and you can see them much farther. However, yeah. there's the non. What is it? What is it? What does Karen call it? The non. Uh, the there. There's the 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 thickest part of the atmosphere. The thickest moist um, is right above the water, and yeah, it yeah. becomes opaque. Mm-hmm. It'll yeah. mirage the boat out. Like, yeah, yeah, opacity. Yeah. Yeah. Depending on pressure and temperature. The non uniform. Yeah, but always it would be the case, right? Like it that. always happen. You can get, well, but it's, it's it, it, the, the effects can vary wildly. Depending sure. On but it always right. happens. You understand, we're saying that the horizon is just an apparent horizon that fluctuates based on Atmos, but the globe claims it's a physical place. But we know it's not a physical place, just there's water and you can't see forever and it changes drastically throughout the day. That's that's our position. But I had a, maybe I forgot to put the slide in. It's not a, it's, nobody says it's a physical place. Yeah. The horizon is just where the eye, it's, it, again. So are you saying on a ball, there's not a physical horizon? Well, it's based on a circle around a sphere around you. And, you know, you looking but at, at a certain the, point, that, 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 that sphere, you cuts off the rest of the globe. So you see. Brian, a, do you know where the word horizon appears, comes from, Brian? Appears to be a horizon. Do you know what the, where, Brian, where the word Brian, you'll have to share again. If from? you want to share again, I accidentally, I think it took it, you off. It, it, Brian, look, look, look here. A, this this is Skunk physical. Bay. This yeah. is Skunk Bay, right? And uh, Glober would say, okay, well, those houses are hidden. Um, but then as we pull, as we move throughout the day, we can see the beach. The buildings disappear. This is all just apparent horizon, okay? Yeah. This is just showing you how it looks different all the time. Yeah, but there's a lot of mirage going on there. I see all kinds of discussion. Yeah, there's a lot there of things going There would on. always mirage. be mirage. There would always right. be mirage. Right, that's our point. The distance. The thing no, but I don't think any scientists would say the horizon is a physical thing. It, you're you go, claiming that the Earth you go is up blocking. You just said the Earth is blocking buildings. You're, yeah, you you're the saying the, 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 the big boats, boats are going over the curve. That's a physical horizon. What's yeah, blocking like a it? Where you're, but again, it's where your eyes are. If you're higher up, then yes. If you're, at, this is why you got to use the curvature calculators because then you we can do. See. So if you're at about six feet, then your eye level is going to be different than if you're up a hundred feet. So yes, yeah. but yeah. But yeah, the curve you are, that is kind of where things disappear over the tangent of that point on the sphere. You can't see beyond that. We can't. Well, show them can Show That's them all the places we yeah, can but see. But that tangent will, you know, it will vary as you go up, up an elevation or down. So downs. what about like there's, it varies there's at this, the same height. Brian, there's this mountain, Mount Canagoo, that is 175 miles away. And from a thousand feet up, you can see it when it should be about a mile below the curve. Is your. Is that, is that, is that, is that, 
what's his name? Who was in the Beyond the? the here, here it is, right here. It's MJ. right here. It's right here. As the sun moves away, appears to go down, all of a sudden it backlights the mountain, and you can see it. And it's not a mirage, right? Your only excuse is that the mountain and the sun are already over a physical curve, and they're refracting up perfectly to stop at eye level. Wait, I don't. Okay, this is going below the horizon. What if, I don't, I'm not sure. What so that mountain right there is called Mount Kanagu. It's it's nine thousand feet high, but from a thousand feet, if you use your curve calculator, you'll see it should be sixteen thousand feet okay, or something I, below. This the top of this mountain should be over half a mile below the curve, but it's not. It's right there. But people say people on a normal day will look out and go, look, you can't see it because it's below the horizon. Now you would claim this is your physical horizon, but the light that's bouncing off of Mount Kanagu doesn't have the power to push back all the way to your eyes because the atmosphere blocks it. However, the sun is much brighter than the reflected light coming off the mountain. And as the sun moves beyond it, it does have the power to push back 175 miles. And all of a sudden you can see the mountain. Now, there's two answers for what this means. That means the Earth is flat, or the Earth is a thousand times bigger than they're telling us. Yeah, but is that is that what's his name? Media. What, what's the guy that did? Um, Jay Tolan Media. Jay Tolan Media. Yeah, he's been this is, soundly by the, the science guy. I mean, I, I watched some. No, he hasn't. No, he you hasn't. say the science yeah. guys, you mean like fight the tight shirt oh, no, and Bob Simon the Dan. Si- Bob you, the you science. Oh, Bob the Bob science guy. <laughs> Bob the science guy, the, the, the pedophile or the, whatever. Well, whatever. Is. I mean, I've read through it and it's very convincing. Allegedly. Are, are allegedly. Not. Yes. Well, allegedly. Yeah, but well, you're legally Brian, here, here's the problem what with like peer review. About- you're you're yeah, explaining but, you know, the problem with peer review. Peer review is a problem because you're saying anything that comes from Bob the science guy, oh, it's so soundly put together. Well, no, but- Hold on, I'm, yeah, yeah, but you're this, saying the same thing. You're saying one person doing this is a proof. It's no, no, we're saying thousands of it. people have seen this observation. It happens twice a year. Okay, but if I use it, might have bought curvature calculator. I'm, I'm positive I could find the reason why. Let's do it. Let's do it. Do it. Let's do it right now. Do it right now. Let's do it right now. Let's go. I don't want to do it now because you guys. Oh come on! You just said you'd be able to figure it out. Listen, I'm not there. So again. They they've debunked that Jay Tola Media guy because he doesn't report. Oh yeah, because we're, we're, you, you know no you're right because we don't have no right will. Because soon as we started to see too far, they fudging, added refraction. The, I know, but if you're fudging the numbers, like he's nobody's show, fudging you, the numbers. What? You're gonna get different. I always like, err to the I, side I, of the I globe. A always. Scrolling page on on Jay Tola Media, how he basically. Misrepresents well, of numbers. course they're going to say that. Otherwise, Bob the Science Guy's out of a Professor job. Dave or, or no, Psy Up Man Dan? Not Professor, neither of them. I mean, it's a long page. That I'll, Bite I'll, the fat I'll, shirt? I'll, it's definitely like Bob the Science Guy oh, or it, Wolfie it, it, or whatever their names oh, are. It, we, yeah, they do very careful. and like um, No, they, they do they very they careful. They're known liars. They they're will put no, down on anything. Right, very and, careful and, psychological and, and they all hold the same thing. They all believe all of the same Nonsense. I've caught you guys in so many lies too. Those, those Bro, what lies? One, name, name one. Name one lie. Name one lie. Oh, you can't sorry. say that without I'm naming one. You, I'm not saying you specifically. You just said I, you okay. guys. I've caught you guys. No, I'm, no, I'm saying you, flat Earth I, community. Okay, well I can't. We, explain we, we don't know the whole flat Earth community. You know, so you're talking. I'll put, to a, us. I'll put an end to that right now, guys. Flat, flat Earth, knock it off. Stop lying. All right, there. You okay. stop lying. I put an I'm end to it. We don't lie. I'm talking about these images right here. I'm showing on the screen. What images? You have to share your screen. You have to share your screen again. Oh. I'm going to get Dave off here. He's scaring me. I can't scare myself. <laughs> Don't look at me. Mount Kanagu is scary. Mount Kanagu is scary. That's the specular reflection impossible on a globe, by the way. Okay. Well, no, actually, that's just a hot, that's just basically a reflection on a, on a shiny surface. Yeah. You got a shiny Yeah, it can't be convex or concave. You can't get a specular reflection that way. I know, but you, you will agree that this, I, I can show you the original footage from this video. And then the thing, the thing is bobbing up and down. Uh, I was talking about your wallpaper. What? Your wallpaper debunks the globe. You can't have specular reflections on a, uh, a body of water with any convexity or concavity. It has to be flat. So. Oh, the specular reflection. I did a whole video on that. That's actually, you can, you can just prove that with like a little, it's because you've got to not use a shiny surface. If you've got like a rough <laughs> piece of aluminum foil over a basketball, you can see the shine, the light comes all the way to your eyes, where if you have just a shiny surface, then you get a, you know, what looks like a hot spot. What? But, no, no, no. I'm saying on your wallpaper. Okay. Like if you have a body of water and you have mountains and you can see the mountains in the water with a perfect specular reflection. That's impossible if the water is concave or convex like vex at all. Like it has to be flat. I don't, I don't, 
Like that's, that's, uh, okay, well, well, that's a fact, but it's all right. It's, it's a, a fact. Go check, check it out. Um, go you go get a reflective piece of plastic or, or you know, I'm a mirror it. thing and bend it a little bit, and it it it, it changes. Well, it, well, it, it, it doesn't. It doesn't. You the same. You haven't done this because then you would agree I, with us. No, right? I've seen. I've what are you seen, talking about? You I'm haven't done that. About that it's not a sh- it's not a flat surface. Yeah. If you get that same experiment with like a basketball and put like aluminum foil that's got ripples in it, like the the water, you will see the, the light come all the way to your eyes. It doesn't just stop at a spot. Do you want to bet money right that? now that you can, you can show get that? a I'll specular I'll reflection on a curved body of water? Hold on. Let me just bring up my, my video. I can see Please. Can see I think we need to remember, though, he, he is, we are standing on the shoulders of giants like Bob the Science Guy and McToon. Oh, so Bob the Sci- I'm just saying, oh. debunking some of those, I've gone through them, and you, it's pretty clear that like one they, of the they, Mount Shasta. That's crazy. Be seen. That's, the CIA is yeah, crushing, bro. The CIA is really good. It wasn't, even, just, it wasn't even, seen, it was even shown to be not even Mount Shasta. You guys are yeah, seeing I hope these Aren't, these, aren't these same guys pushing another agenda? Just saying. Yeah, for sure. And so Dave's quick with it. You see Dave's picture, right? You understand what we're talking about? I was just letting you know that, it, you know, you might want to change your wallpaper. It debunks the globe. I was just trying to help you out. It doesn't debunk the globe. All right, bro. Let's see. What did I put there? You see how pretty that picture is Dave has? That's a perfect specular reflection. And that water can't be bending or you wouldn't get that perfect reflection like that mirror effect. That's- so, I mean, are you talking about like this here? Um, hold on. Just- Hello, this is Brian. My yeah, name. Turn- Your channel well, name is Debunking a- Flat Earth. <laughs> no, no, no. no. I'm talking about oh, is this what you mean by, by just being seen like on one spot here versus like. Well, that is a local reflection, which is interesting, but just a specular reflection of a reflective mirrored image. So that's not quite what that is, but yeah, I mean, even the local reflection is interesting. I don't see. So what is your what is your answer on the picture on the right there? Yeah, how's that work? I'm just saying you can you can get like a little ball and put like the. I mean, the point is, is that water is not perfectly. You see that it comes through like this. What? Well, the point is that it wouldn't be a local reflection like that if it was 93 million miles away. It's just light. It doesn't matter how far. Light is light coming in at that angle. It would be a and, 90 degrees spread across the, the whole sky. No, it, it, it's coming in from your, this is your angle of vision. You're looking right at it. So th- it doesn't just hit a spot and, and not come all the way to your eyes because, because the water surface is not, you know, it's got some texture to it. So when you add some texture, you can get the light to all the, come all the way and not just to. Okay, we we're, we're talking about specular reflections, and that's that's interesting in my opinion. And I think that's a local reflection, which is impossible if the sun's ninety three million miles away. But that's a different thing. Specular reflections a mirrored reflection, and I was just not even trying to debate you about it. I was just letting you know your wallpaper debunked the globe. So uh, I don't know what you were about to bring up. All right, well, oh well, specular reflection. Well, dude, you can come hang out with us though, man. Flat Earth is way cooler, bro. It'll take, it'll take, we don't expect you to change your teams tonight. It'll take you a month or two and then you'll have a couple of restless. No, never, because I know, because it would call into. Well, listen, electrostatic theory, I spent, I I know electrostatics very well. I know electrodynamics very well. And it doesn't work to describe 9.8 meters per second squared. So you've you've spent literally zero time on it and you say it doesn't work? No, I'm saying that you can provably show the electric field falls off a lot faster than 9.8 should be falling off. So you're not understanding it yet, but maybe we can well, talk about it. Not it's not what show we're me, not saying it pulls things through the earth. We're not saying it pulls anything to the earth. Show me. Yeah, we're not saying it pulls things. You know down why you want a model from... so bad, Brian? No, the reason you want a no, model so bad is because you were handed one as a little kid no. and you hold on to it. Where's your where's your model? No, something that can make why do you need a model? We're giving you facts and science here and experiments. You're like, where's your model? Jaren, read the Brian. Jaren, read the George Ellis quote. You've got nothing that makes a prediction anywhere. George Ellis or Hubble? Only NASA could do that. You mean the one that says, we're going to see Canada can't, can't predict anything. Miles away if there is flat. <laughs> That's you my guys think that you, you don't need a model to make actual predictions to be science? You think you can just make stuff up and it be... Uh, no one's making anything up. Observations that. and common Look, sense. Look, here's what we thought. We thought that when... Scientific method. Don't you understand? Hold, but hold on, Brian. Hold on. Let Jaron talk. Brian, let don't you talk. know that if it was a deception, that look at what a great job they did by convincing you guys all that we have a model and everything works perfect, then anybody else who comes along down the road who says, I think that maybe it's wrong, you're going to, well, where's your model? How does everything in the universe work? Well, I don't know. I'm just saying that these things are wrong. Well, if you don't have everything in, known, if you don't know everything, then you can't be right. That's what you're, that's but, your but position. The electrostatic theory is provably wrong. You I'm aren't saying. even understanding no. what it means. We don't, I we understand don't. understand electrostatics very Okay, well. time out. Do you think that we think that electrostatics is pulling things to the ground? 
You think it's density buoyancy plus electrostatic somehow. Yeah, it's, it's something sets the down, but then it, right. density so and buoyancy it. works out. You keep, okay, well, you keep well, straw manning us like we're saying it's pulling it down, but we're not saying that. We're saying it sets the up and down. There is an up and down set with the electric okay, gradient on the earth. I can put a balloon on my wall. It doesn't set any up and down. That's well, just Brian, the Brian, listen, okay. Let me, hear me out, okay? If you take the balloon and rub it on your head, right? It'll stick right. to the wall. Right. Eventually, it'll fall back down. When the balloon falls down, you're claiming it's because gravity pulls it, it gravity, to the yeah. earth. The problem is that balloon that falls to the earth, it's still electrostatic. It didn't all of a sudden stop being electrostatic. It lost its char- Electrostatic means it has a surplus of charge. It's probably neutral by the time it hits the ground. Now, you're trying to say at the atomic level there's electrons. Well, guess what? Those electrons are tied up in chemical bonds. And overall, the object is electrically neutral. It still has so, potential. It still has potential. And I'm not claiming electrons. It probably That's doesn't have potential. It probably doesn't. It doesn't have electrostatic potential? It, when, you, when it's neutral. No. I mean, if, if I rub it on my wow. head, it's going to. No. Yes. Oh, so it does have potential then. When you transfer electrons from, you know what that means? You transfer. I know electrons is pseudoscience, but yeah, I understand it. See, okay, if you believe in particle physics, <clears throat> you believe that electrostatics is. Physics. This is just simple. I mean, this is like 18th, 18th century. Oh, yeah. You believe that it's virtual electric- photons? Okay, I'm just saying that electric. They claim in quantum mechanics and virtual pi- it's uh, not particle ele- physics. It doesn't matter if it's electric or photons. Dude, or I'm not. just trying to let you know, man. It's okay, it, that, it, everything's intrinsically saying, electrostatic. It's actually dielectric gotta- field. There's only charge and discharge. That's electrical field theory. It was thrown out because they said the Earth was a spinning ball. That's okay. a whole bunch of stuff. But You'd but have you to open your mind to hear the truth, man. We I can can't measure. We can measure. You I can't can do it for you, man. Measure what? You can go up to the top of Mount Everest and and measure how long it takes your ball to hit the ground. Calculate 9.8 or 9.7. But you've never done that. You just you're just gonna say everybody else. Yeah. And that was predicted before but Newton. It's, that it's was predicted inverse, before Newton. It's the inverse square law from gravity. The electric was predicted field. before what? Newton. The electric field on the Earth drops off a lot quicker than that. It can't. I'm, I'll, be I'll, I'm going to cite it for you in the chat that that was predicted yeah. bef- and explained before Newton on Way a before. flat Earth model. On a flat Earth, it was explained why you would get it downward acceleration flat, consistently no, long before Newton. It so wasn't just so on you know. a flat Earth. No, it was. Yes, it was. I'll show the you the model. Earth, the, the, I'm telling you that they they use the the what like the you guys like to quote that NASA study of non rotating flat sphere Earth what, by what's his name? It's not a NASA study. It's what NASA claims they no, test it, their stuff over no, is non rotating Earth. It's, what do you mean? It's in all their documents. You're saying that they don't say they that? They have it in, I'll tell you what it is. They have that in quotes because it's an approximation. It's no, they don't have quotes. that in quotes. Yes, you are quotes. literally lying to no, your whatever audience. Whatever it is, it's, it's an approximation. Stop lying. It's we a, don't lie I'm to not, you, so don't lie, Bryant. I'm not lying. Don't lie, Bryant. That's all. Please no, don't I'm lie. Not, it's not in quotes, Bryant. I've seen it. It's not in quotes. It's multiple documents. NASA, the military. Why are they saying the this? The military has ballistics manuals that talk about the Coriolis. Dude, ballistics. I have a ballistic oh missile right God. here I can drop in the chat that says that it's a flat, non-rotating surface. A ballistic missile okay. document. Okay. Documentation. Document you love your documents so much. I've got a Might as well show them a few. And if it's a deception, but, we shouldn't be surprised if they throw the it in some manuals, but nobody ever the uses Earth it. Because rotates so slowly. Oh. Maybe we can talk like, to him about that. Can we talk to him about that? You think non the earth is rotating? Okay, let's talk earth. about this. Not the, slow wait, can, rotating. Can, can I show you yeah, what you the edge? Slow. You said earlier that the air is connected to the earth. Coriolis claims the opposite, right? Coriolis claims that you have to have an accelerative and an inertial frame, inertial systems, and then that you see a difference, right? So then how is it that you're now claiming a singular system where the air moves in lockstep with the earth? At the same time as it being disconnected from, you can talk about relative velocity. There's nothing wrong with that. But the thing is, the atmosphere and the Earth do move together overall. Now, (laughs) again, we're we're looking at the the, the overall large scale. I'm not talking about local storm systems are going. I'm talking about the at the global level. The atmosphere is moving with the rotating Earth. Because it has to No, be. but Coriolis Forever. claims the opposite of that. It claims that there's an inertial and accelerative system, right? And that's how you get Coriolis effects. The Coriolis force, has, is, it's, it's actually imparted by the rotating Earth. So when you go north from the equator, you shoot a ballistics north, it's going to get deflected to the right because the initial velocity has a stronger it's got a higher velocity at the equator. So why doesn't does the air do that? Down. Why doesn't the air That's do that? That's what we're saying. So why isn't the air? It's, it's saying it's detached with oh, the, the air. That's the, the whole air, point. No, it's not. The air, it's, it's like you're, it's all moving together, but it's that the air is a little faster up there than it is when you fire it away. How does the air outrun the spin of the earth at 40,000 feet? That's, it's, you're, that, you're using that again. I already showed you that diagram that the atmosphere doesn't go. 
Hmm? No, it's outrunning ground speed by oh, 150 miles an hour or more. Yeah. Where did you go it, north so of- the earth is spinning to the east. So where, did the you get air that that, where did you get that number? From, I, I done from, the from, hmm? it, there's, there's wind There's wind charts that show it, and they, they admit it. Oh, you know, no, FAA no. uses it. But which, it's out which means it probably is faster the spin than of the no, earth. That's not true. The spin of the earth. I did the calculations. When you actually look at how you, you did the hold on a second, hold on a second. On your hold clap, on. Your you said that the, oh, you, you can do the clap calculations based on the fact that what are, the, what's the on? atmosphere? You said the atmosphere is spinning with the, the earth. If it's is only twelve miles an hour faster at the Carmen line than it is at the that's surface. not what he's okay, asking no, you. That's not what he's saying. Mechanism, so what's the mechanism that makes it go faster? What's the mechanism that makes it go faster? Gravity. Gravity is the the gravitational column is holding it. What's it? Come on. That doesn't work. Gravity. Gravity doesn't work. I'll tell you why. Because at that level, there's very little part. Got so so here's the question i have anything, anything you said there. you said it's spinning and the higher it's only 12 miles an hour faster great how come that molecule that's at, at the carmen line that's going 12 miles an hour faster than the spin just to keep up with it how come it's going an additional 100 to 150 miles an hour oh, faster than that outrunning the spin of the earth oh, that's that doesn't make sense that's no, you're this, right it doesn't make sense because the earth isn't spinning the earth is flat it's the jet streams the jet that. streams how do the do have, can you pull up the hold on jet stream? No, but ask them okay listen it's hold on brian together. brian they you just said earlier brian you said earlier that planes go faster one direction than the other why is that why is it why do they go faster one direction than the other that was well that was based on wind currents you know the, okay the so hold on that's what he's saying that the wind exactly. currents that blow uh, to I, the I, east I, listen i know that there's no i'm not talking about local weather i'm talking about the global atmosphere as a whole okay but there's winds oh. inside the global atmosphere that are moving faster that, the than whole... the earth spins right here here it is these are these these white and pink ones i think oh. are 200, 150, 150, 200, 200 miles 200. an hour, and they're outrunning the spin of the Earth. They're going east. Can you see? It doesn't, yeah, but where do where do those where do those forces come from? You guys don't. What do you mean? Where do the forces a come model. from? It well, doesn't matter. We need a model. We need, we need a model. Over to a that's model. A flat, that's a flat Earth though, model. Where's your model? Uh, that, no, that's, flat Earth. I thought you said there no, is no, no flat no, Earth no, model. You're, you're right. Per- this is a flat Earth model, but on the globe, they're they're heading east. Right, yes. it, it's the same thing. They're heading east. They're outrunning the spin of the Earth. You have it no explanation for that. We're just showing you a real version. Yeah, we're showing you reality. We're in reality. Yeah. You guys don't going in perfect circles. Okay, hold on. I just want to say you you said that we spin very you said we spin very slowly. Okay, let's let's go over this. I just want to show you this is what this is what a thousand miles is going to. I mean, a thousand miles per hour looks like. Okay, let's talk about that. Hold now, on. I, okay, so is, just saying that it spins slowly. Well, this is 50 miles per hour, and then I'm going to multiply it I by know tw- that, Okay, hold on. Here's a thousand mile per hour edge velocity. Tell me how the atmosphere, wait till it gets to a thousand, and tell me how the atmosphere is sticking to the earth like this. Ready? It's about listen, to. Hold on. You're not even listening. When it goes a thousand miles per hour, I, you're saying. I, I know this. I, you know I, what? You've never seen this. Let's, you know what? What do you know? Something he's earth- never seen. He already knows, Jaron. Okay, I guess so. So here yeah, it goes. He now, this knows. is a thousand miles right, per hour. Man, just chill, look at, bro. We're look gonna at, be your friend. Brian, like, look you at, can hang out with us. Look at that. Ticket, That's bro. the you edge velocity. Down. I understand. Okay, but let me just talk about why those speeds are not what you guys think they are. What do you mean? A thousand miles per hour is a thousand miles per hour. That's okay, the edge yeah, velocity. Let's, let's, <laughs> no, no, it's you're not it's not rotation is measured in radians per second. Of course it is. But you can but can you not figure out the edge velocity? Let me ask you this: Is your engine measured in miles per? No, it's RPMs. That's revolutions per minute. Okay, so we can yeah. do. You can. Let's just, so let's just go through this. So, so <laughs> Dave loves to pull this helical model of the universe or of the solar system up. But yeah, do you it's know, a joke. Dave, that this is a million times faster than the real thing. Yes, it's a. This is not anywhere near. It's a visualization to show the different vectors. That's what happens. It's, mislead, it's misleading though because it's going way too fast. Doesn't no, matter. No, that's, that's that, that doesn't matter. It actually does not matter a lot. Well, it, it's no. misleading because it's actually not going a thousand miles per hour. It's only a little tiny uh, representation. Well, so the actual through. thing is way worse. Let's just go through. So first <laughs> and, of all, okay. you know, and when you sh- when you point this spin. out though, when you point this out, it actually proves this proves that it. the Earth doesn't. Spin. You guys love to say the Earth spins at a thousand forty miles per hour. Because it does. No, no. Yeah. We don't love to say that. That's what they taught us. No, yes. it does It spins at 0. 0.006. What is the I circumference know, of the Earth? Yes. What's the difference What's the in that in 1,037 miles per it's hour because, with the equator? It's because it has to do with forces. You know, inertial. It sounds smarter. It doesn't sound smarter. It makes it sound less significant. It, yes. Listen, Brian, if you were on a merry-go-round, that's a twenty. Oh. That's the size of the Earth, the width, you know, the equator, and you're sitting at the outside horse. It's yes. going a thousand miles an hour, and it's going off of your trajectory at no, a, 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 a mile a minute. Okay, or more. 
It's not the same thing. You're looking. You're, it's you're the looking. exact same thing. It is How not fast is that a train, Brian? How fast this is that train going? This is train is going two or three hundred kilometers an hour. And what would what? happen if it slowed down or sped up or oh, turned? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, then and what if you gonna, took yeah, the roof off of it? Then, then you're actually getting an acceleration. See, I'm talking about Brian, but this isn't a curve to trajectory. But the Earth is spinning. Uh, it's a not. It's what never going in a straight line. What kind of science experiment is this, bro? No, this is not replication of anything. No, listen, I've done the math on the actual forces. Okay, so when you actually, so the Earth is rotating as slow as twice as slow as the hour hand on your clock. Okay, it's a very no, slow rotation. No, 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 no. Well, yes, it is. What? is going on we just pointed out to you that that you had a constant you I've had a constant speed those. on a straight path that's not synonymous with moving in a circle no, that, that's we're, acceleration we're, yes, and it's it curves rim trajectory. Where's velocity the curve tra- it's rim the trajectory. velocity the train. Tangential, g- tangential speed okay listen you're what bringing up all the points from these known oh, liars yeah, right? this, this, this whole thing so twice can, the speed it's not twice the, it, listen talk about this Hold on. Let me let me say one thing, and then you can go on. I'm gonna I'm gonna say one thing. It's angular velocity, and here's a simple experiment you can do if you want to do an experiment. Go outside. I'm gonna tell you it's angular velocity. He doesn't like experiments. He likes memes. Here here's an experiment, and and I encourage everyone to do it. Get a string, tie it onto um, a weight, right, and and start spinning it around. Start spinning around, and let out line, and let out line, and get it to the point where it may be 20 feet of line out there, and you'll see that it'll be pulling out. It won't touch the ground and you just spin around and you'll be going around at, you know, at a good pace and then get another, hold on, then get another string that's only a foot long and hold it right with, with your hand. That string, that one will, won't even, will barely go out, right? It's going around at the same uh, angular speed, right? But it's rim velocity is so slow that it doesn't even swing out. The other one is pulling my arms as I spin around. Okay, hey, but, right, the one, but, but, but the one right here that's hanging, it just hangs. It doesn't even, hey, but, it barely me, swings out. That's just, rim let velocity. Me, let me just explain to you, but we don't feel velocity, Dave. We feel force. Let me just explain this to you. So we actually have a very slow, ang- this is our angular velocity. This is angular velocity, not this, guys. This is angular velocity. Angular velocity is, is radians per second, not miles per hour. So when you actually calculate the actual uh, centrif- centrifugal force, centrifugal force, you end up with 0. 0.03 centrifugal acceleration, and this is a very small, small, small uh, uh, force. Uh, but, is- but Brian, Brian, you're just you're just reciting numbers and beliefs. Go outside and spin. Oh, Brian, a, what is this? Listen, let me finish. Spin. spin a rock on a string. The farther out it goes, the harder it pulls at the same rate. Okay, the farther out it goes, and so why should I believe that the you know if I double the distance, it's making a huge circle now? Why would it pull less? It pulls we, we more and more and more and more. Right, can hey, you can calculate all you on. want, but you can oh, in real life, measure, the farther no, out it goes, the faster its rim speed is, and oh. the more power it has. On a, yes, on a rotating system, but I'm telling yeah. you. Yeah, well, you're living on a rotating system, and I it's know, a curved trajectory. You're going by the tangential speed, Dave. Yeah. The tangential speed, we don't feel. You accelerate. Yes, no. we do. We Excel- curving yeah. is acceleration. Is, no, and I'm, t- I'm showing you the actual forces of acceleration. So, okay, let me ask you, though, the equations that you're using. C- hold on. Centripetal and centrifugal. Can you tell me the equations for each one? Yeah, it's 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 omega squared R. So, so the, take, but what about the other one? But what about the other one? What do you mean, what other one? I said centripetal and centrifugal. What is the equation for each? Well, they're, they're just in opposite directions. Oh, so the equations are equal. They're the same equal, equation. Uh, equal and opposite. Same equation. Do you have centri- proof the Earth is spinning? Can I get some proof? Because that seems weird that the two equations are the same. So the, the equation for being thrown out from a circle and throwing in from a circle are both the same? It's just like outward... Outward force. No, you, okay, you, what's, the angular velocity is the is the is the is the angular speed that a rotating body is going, and it's measured in radians per second, not miles per hour. The tangential. Okay, speed, so let's drop again, miles per hour. We don't feel. We don't feel. We don't feel constant speed. Just that's but, why we're but, but wait, hold on a second. Hold on. You, you ten, you're going in a straight line at a thousand miles an hour, hundred miles an hour. It doesn't make a difference. You're not going to feel it. Your quarter right. will balance. Your water will sit. Hang on. But if you take the slightest turn, now the Earth is curving. At no point are you going in a straight line. You are curving. That is acceleration. Okay. okay. You want to see how fast the Earth is rotating? Look no, no, at no. no. I, I know top. how fast. It's going 1,024 miles per hour. Point I'm not, hold on. 0.0694 RPMs, Dave. That's how angular speed is measured. It, but no, it's, uh, again, 
Get the get the rope with the rock feel, on it, and you we feel, feel it. We don't feel the tangential speed. We feel the, okay. the acceleration. How about this? I disagree to disagree with you. <laughs> yeah, and also you always feel acceleration. Any rotation is always accelerating, and we have an elliptical orbit. We feel, feel the bank a of it. But, dude, here's the question. Brian, here's a question, man. What if we, we what if we're in a plane spinning? I've asked you that because I know for a fact everything you're about to bring up is not going to prove the Earth is spinning. Okay. okay, well, what about this time? So you want to skip your whole first page? You agree? You got well, because you already got your your arguments for the ring laser gyroscope because Bob has brought up so many. No, times. no, no. But hey, I want to tell you something. Let me tell you something. So according to Einstein in relativity, okay. Uh, if the sky was moving around the earth, oh, no, you no. would experience centrifugal and Coriolis effects if with the earth as the rest absolute frame of reference because of a thing called the Machian principle. And Einstein himself integrated this into relativity for the uh, Arthur Eddington experiment where they saw the eclipse with the star behind it. And he okay. wrote a letter to him explaining that that would be the case. So according to relativity, which is your current theory for gravity, you just talked about how it was so awesome earlier, remember? Yeah. None of that stuff you just showed on your page would prove that the Earth is spinning. According to relativity, it could be that the sky is moving around that's the Earth. No, no, it is true. I have no letter let's go, right Let's here. go through which one of them it is. So let's see. Um, there's Aries, Aries theorem. I mean, Aries failure, which showed Aries that failure, the know. Earth is stationary. So which... Showed uh, that the Earth is stationary. Sagnac effect shows that the Earth is stationary. Oh, called Aries failure for a reason. I mean, yeah, it's a it's, failure on the science's point to, to prove what no, they no, wanted no. to prove. That's why it's a failure. Oh, not. The, the, yeah, the, you they understand the opposite. Of every you, guys are, you guys are trying to say that the ether is still a thing. Where a thing. it is. <laughs> what do you mean? Yeah, even a quantum thing. mechanics says it is. By the way. You put so much of your beliefs in other men. It's so scary. Yeah, quantum mechanics is saying quantum. Oh, Brian, quantum life is so much foam. better quantum when you know it's revolving around Quantum fluctuations are not you. either. If you want to call quantum fluctuations ether, you're just rebranding quantum fluctuations. What's quantum fluid, Brian? What, like superfluids? Like, What's like quantum liquid? fluid? No, not, not like superfluids. No. So you don't know. Okay. What, what is dark matter? Dark, I, I, I admitted earlier that dark matter and dark energy, you know, that we don't, just because we don't have answers to everything. It's ether, buddy. It's e dude, everything they're talking about is. Well, show me ether. a paper that proves Why that. does it have show to be a paper? A paper. Why a paper? Brian, do you understand? Oh, look outside, Brian. Show me anything that proves Brian, anything. I'll give you five quantum physicists saying we have to reintroduce the ether. Five of them. Yeah. Like I have them right here. Probably, PDFs, they probably five of them. don't have very much published research. That's pure. Oh, because that's what that's what dictates. This is hidden that's information. What dictates. Right. Yeah, I know. This Brian, is why this, this is why they be on this CNN is why they have peer review. The morning, this bro. is why there's peer review. Peer review <sighs> protects your guys' science from ever being questioned by anybody else. That's no, why. It no, that's why. Because it shows guess what? That you can validate something. That, that, Sorry, no. That, scientists don't. No, no scientist it's ever wants their person. theories told that they're Otherwise, wrong. Otherwise, it's just one person making a claim, and then there's no validation. Why? Well, let's no, talk about Michelson Morley. Okay, mm -hmm. do you know what happened? Okay, so they they had a prediction with the Earth moving through the ether. So then they shot the interferometry. They did. They got one sixth of what was predicted, less than one sixth of the orbital motion around the sun assumed, right, of thirty kilometers a second. So they had an option, which uh, two options, which either throw out the ether. Or throw out that the Earth was rotating, no, that was revolving. Air, that was wait, 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 Right in the sidereal rotation, and it does not detect an orbital motion at all. Those two combined debunk the fact that the Earth is spinning, and so it's just been hidden. And the Sagnac effect is what's used for gyroscopes. And Sagnac said it was a vortex in the ether. So there you go. But Sagnac, what Austin what Sagnac, said. I know what Sagnac huh. said. Facts. But but they found the they, they discovered the effect after that. So he was wrong when what he said what he initially said. Well, you're just saying that, but are you going to address the Mickelson Morley combined with the Mickelson Gale Pearson? Mickelson Morley experiment had a, there was a, a allowed tolerance for error, and that was within the allowed tolerance. So what do you no, mean? No, so they still didn't detect it. That it didn't that detect the motion of the orbit, but using the same methodology, it detects the sidereal rotation within 98 yeah, percent accuracy. They got 1,200 miles per hour. Which means that it does well, detect me, the well, motion of the sky me. around the well, Earth. Send, send you what? It's it. the Michelson Morley experiment. I gotta, Go I look, look at, at it. it. Pull the papers. Yeah. Yeah, it's it, it's a paper. You love it. It's actually a paper. 
I mean, the thing is, though, if you're I'll looking look for a paper again. to I'll be, I'll imagine, Brian, imagine that you started That's a good to, answer. Good answer. Imagine Brian. you started I'll to agree it. with us and you wrote a paper and you turned it into a publication. Do you think they would publish that paper or do you think that they would trash your name until you weren't able to show your face again? Which one do you think is true? Because you're telling no, us we I need to go get submit ladder. a paper. The ladder. That's just conspiratorial. Stuff, oh, boy. Bro. What? Are you thinking about posting a paper luck. saying the Earth's flat and the ether exists that wow. they're going to peer review it and be like, prop this guy up for a Nobel Prize. And it means everybody you that you're giving that paper to is all going to be signing away their, their entire research, their entire careers is garbage. Yeah, they'll just sign right off. Oh, yeah, let's, post, let's publish this. That's That'll not happen. a conspiracy but theory. But that's a but fact. But just the stuff that you say with, with electric feet, I mean, I know that that's wrong. The, 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 the you still don't get it, though. You don't get it. You know it's wrong because you don't get it. I do get it. I just, <laughs> you guys don't understand <laughs> Maxwell's equations at all. You just don't. Oh, my what gosh. Do you say, now bro. Bro. Maxwell's bro. Right. That's what this, That's what defines electrostatics, my friend. I mean, you're Brian, is there a, 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 a next, other next topics topic, you want to cover? Yeah, any next more you want to cover? Wait, can, can I do Antarctica over? before we go? Can we please yeah. do Antarctica? Please. Wait, Brian, can, we, let, can we talk about the. I, I can't. How about can't the equinox? Move. The equinox Wait. and the 90 degrees. Let's talk about that so we can at least get that out of the way. Well, you are, it's, it's just going to be, a, you already have your answer, even though I don't. Well, because they the have answer, our answer because we've been studying this, right. this forever. Know, well, you, you come up with it. Really no, there's no coming. Let me no, explain no this to me. We're going to show you let me stuff, show you something. And, and stuff that you've never seen. And then you, maybe you can think. Just try not ideas. to say no before. Yeah, just over. listen for a yeah. second. And just follow me and see why this is. So you're saying that at night, at the equinox. Yeah, wait, hold on, hold on, Jared. Put it on the big screen. So it is on the big screen. Oh, is it? Is it? Oh, there you are. All right, never mind. Sorry. Bye bye. Okay. So, it, north and south. If somebody is north of you, and and are you south of them? Yes. Right. Okay. Yeah. What about east and west? Are they the same as north and south? So, if somebody's east of me, I'm west of them. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, what if I showed you that that's not the case at all? If we took somebody who's north and south, yes. If we draw this guy, and we go net south at 180 degrees, right there. Then, if we drew this line back up. Let me save this. And we drew this line back up. Now it's going to be exactly north. Okay. This guy is going to be exactly at zero degrees, right? Okay, great. So what he's showing is the guy at south is south of the guy north, and the guy north is north of the guy south. But just east, like you would expect. East west. If I were to draw a line and say, okay, I'm here in California and I'm going to go 90 degrees east over here you to the can't east coast. It's a straight line there. That's a great circle. You're using a straight line. It, it, no, I'm not. I'm using we're using the, Google. We're, we're, Google we're going Earth exactly it. 90 degrees east. That is a great circle. Okay, so 90 degrees. Yeah. See that? So I'm going to hit save on that one. We've got 90 degrees. So now, is this guy going to be 270 to this guy? Because when I draw from here and I go 270, 270 is down here. Okay? So what that tells you is that north and south are consistent. You're always north and south. But east and west vary, right? So now if you start drawing lines, let me see this. Okay, so I, I, I'm just not following all what you're trying to do. I know right, because, because they it's didn't teach not you what you believe. It's not what they taught no, you. What Watch believe. again. The guy. What he's saying is the guy. If somebody is 90 degrees east of somebody, the other guy is not 270 degrees west. Right. It's completely different because the globe is not real. Yeah, you're watching it. You're seeing it on a on a false know, model. So they're showing it, their model right. doesn't I gotta, work. I know, but I can't just. I don't know. What, so here's the like thing. This guy. I don't see. If this guy's show, looking show again, east, just listen, watch again. Jaron's good at explaining this. Well, if this guy's looking east, 90 degrees east is here. Okay. Move out of the way, box. 92, 90. 90 degrees east? I don't know what. 90, 90 degrees is dead east. Yes. Okay, but 90, okay, it's just east. So when you're looking east, east yes. 90 okay. degrees is east. So I'm going to save that one. So now you'll kind of notice something weird. As we keep drawing lines of everybody looking 90 degrees, they're all looking at the equator. 90 degrees here is here. Nope, 91, 90. Okay, so now if I keep going with these lines and I go down to the south, every line I draw is going to be pointing at the equator. So if we spin the globe this way, and now we look at what everybody's doing, when it's the equinox, everybody is looking at the equator. So it shouldn't be a shock that we see the sun rise in the east for everybody, because east is everybody's looking the exact same to the exact same point, the equator. When the sun is you at guys the think, center, you guys think east is, is all directions. I just drew it for you. The yeah, sun, I'm literally the showing sun, it to you. I'm showing okay, you. Okay, but that's that's not. not sure, yeah, because you think that. east is model. this way. Listen, listen. You send it to me, and I'll play with it. And I'll no, you can wrong. do it on Google Earth yourself. It's your own Tell Google me this, Brian. Yeah, Google Earth. Yeah. We're, Brian, no, we're not doing any tricks, bro. Brian. If I'm up here in California and I start walking east. Can I walk in a straight let line? Me, and let me just look. Okay, no, just please hold, answer Jaren's simple just, question. Just follow please, him. Jaren, you can, I know, Jaren, please ask it again, Jaren. Be, I, 
I'm not going to believe this unless I can look no, at just it. Just ask myself. the question again, please. So if I'm, see, if I'm, see what Google Earth is doing because I can't just. Okay, if I'm know, in California and I'm, it, it let, does not look okay. Let's say I'm in California. I'm at 35 degrees north or something. And I but start. Can you, can you at least give me time to play with this myself? To see Absolutely, we're showing you now. Yeah, and check it out. We'll, we'll have another I'll conversation. I'll check it out because I'm not going to. I'm not going to buy this. I'm just soak it in, play. though. I'm not asking you to buy it. Quick, simple it. question, it right. please. It, 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 it doesn't look right. It's, it's going to be all right, Google man. Earth. They lied to you about the Earth, brother. It's all. I'm just. I just. Do you think if you went east from here that we would come back to where we started? But you're you're joined. That's a straight line across. Simple question. I'm not asking. It's, it's, pay, no, 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 pay no, no attention lines. to lines. East. Here's Go the line. East. Lines are gone. There you go. There, no lines. Yeah. Again, on a curved surface, you got to follow a great circle to go. I mean, you got, it's not the same as a straight line. Okay, now I'm not talking about a straight line. I'm saying if I so, okay, no more so, lines. So you're right. saying if I am going to start in California and end up in California, I have to do a circle. No, I'm just saying that you have to follow the a great. You know what a great circle is? Yes. Yeah, circles are on flat Earths too, by the way. But he's trying to make a point to you. I know, but that's that's how you draw a line on a spherical object. Is if you want to find the shortest distance, it's a it's a it's along a great circle. Hey, no more lines, though. If you just go east, uh, will you get back to where you started from? I was just asking. If, if you just go, head east, if we go east, if I go ninety degrees east from California, do I come back to where I started? I mean, you, you're using this map, but I mean, yes. It's not a map. It's the globe. It's okay, Google listen. Earth. It's the globe, bro. If you go down a street that's east west, a lo really long street, you're going to go down that street and come back to your same location. I don't care, you know. What? If it's, if it's east west. If you have an what east west street, I don't understand. Hey, you're, trying to tell, you're just trying to tell me that if I go east and come back west, that I'm going to end up in a different location here? Yes. No, I'm asking well, you if you go east. Not, not here. Let me tell you east. why the answer is no. Is because on a flat Earth, which is where you live, by the way, your compass always adjusts to the north. So yes, you would come back to where you started. Yeah, exactly. Which is the wandering north, by the way, which the flat Earth doesn't seem to have an answer for. Oh yeah, we don't have an We're answer. Not so therefore, to it's false. The north. Yeah. So I mean, if you don't know, Austin, if you don't know about the wandering North Pole, then you don't. The Earth can't be flat. It's illegal to fly within 500 miles of each direction of the North, man. We just uh, address Jaron's point, though, bro. Just, just think it's, about he's it. not listening. If you it's go just... east, if you go east and come back west, you're gonna end up in the same spot. No. Okay, I'm talking no, about you go showing east, you if you the go globe. East. Look, so I'm it, saying if I'm in California and I'm going to go he's trying to show me, but I'm saying I'm not going to buy it until I can look at it and see, because okay. it doesn't, doesn't make showing? any sense what you're showing. So, so look, well, what am look, I showing look, you? I'm showing you the globe. It doesn't make any sense. You're exactly right. This is a particular thing I haven't been able to look at and see if there's some, but I'm asking you your general knowledge. You're a physicist. So I'm asking you, okay, let's pretend, pretend I'm a student, pretend I'm a student, pretend I'm a student. Hold on. I'm just a student. I'm a student. I'm trying to learn. I can look I'm not saying anything. Well, let us show you so you I'm know what to look at later. If a student asked you, hey, teacher, if I'm in California and I go east, do, can I walk straight east and stay 90 degrees the whole way and come back to where I started? Is that a straight line or is it a circle? If I'm in California, does this person walk in a to, circle? Do you have to, if you're California, do you have to keep turning to the left or do you go straight? Again, it's, it's this is spherical geometry, so you can't talk about a straight line exactly on a sphere. It doesn't work. What you about understand the, what he's saying? Okay, but Do what about the equator? Back around so the equator is not a straight line. line. Stop saying line. Is the equator there's a straight line? Involved. You said there's no straight line on the globe. What about the equator? If I walk on the equator, isn't that a straight okay, line? I, I, I kind of see what you're getting at, and if I look at it and play with it, I'll, I'm sure I'll be able to figure out what's going on. Okay. okay. Thank you for that. It doesn't that's, make that's any not, sense, but bro, it's well, going to be okay. They lied about the earth, but bro, it's not that big of a deal. It's really not like it just, you start to figure out stuff makes sense. You can trust your senses. You know what I mean? Overall, it's a good thing. Cause all of a sudden you can start to understand where you really what? live. Maybe put together proper physics and stuff like that. It's not a big deal, bro. Proper physics. And you some you're trying to tell me proper physics with electric. Field, yeah. But I can prove yeah. can't be the 9.8 meters per second. I mean, easily prove. Particle physics and quantum mechanics can't explain magnetism, electrostatics, or electricity. So yeah, that you need to acknowledge that. Well. No, you call them virtual photons, which don't exist. I'm just trying it to help you out, matter. man. Like, we can measure the forces. Of virtual forces, photons? No, the forces between charged particles and charged objects. We can what about measure. virtual photons? That's well. They again. It's the it's the trans. It's what they use to try to explain the force, but it doesn't take away from the fact that we can empirically use Kalum's law. Which is what that's electrostatics. Doing. Welcome to flat is, Earth, my I'm man. Say, I, I'm saying exactly. We use Colum's law to disprove that things can't fall 9.8 meters per second squared. It's gravity. It absolutely does. It absolutely. No, it doesn't. 
you can't use electrostatics to explain gravity. That's I would love, I'd be down to talk to you about it. I'm just trying to talk to you about the macro. Now we've talked to you about a bunch of stuff. I'm trying to talk to you. I'm trying to level with you, bro. Pun pun intended. You guys have no answer for why things fall. My dude, it's okay. They lied to you about the earth, but it's not a big deal, bro. It's not a big deal. Like the government did all kinds of crazy operations, went and looked at Antarctica, came back, said, you're not allowed to go there, founded NASA. And then they've been lying to you, bro. And they've been showing you cartoons. Let's just go through that. It's all right, bro. I'm just saying like, let's do it in Antarctica. Brian, right. I just want one other question though. So why is it when we listen to Feynman and these other guys that they say if something doesn't match experiment, then it's wrong, right? If a theory doesn't match experiment or observation, then it's wrong. You gotta, yeah. You gotta throw it away. So why I'm telling you hold some on. of the other stuff I can look at, but electrostatics is definitely Okay, so wrong. I'm not talking about that anymore. So so <sighs> explain to me though why then when they looked out at the galaxies and saw that gravity wasn't working, then instead of throwing away the theory as they're supposed to do, they added something that we've never observed and said it must be there. No, you, that's not how science works. You don't throw away a theory. You find what? either – no, if it doesn't work, you either can refine it. Like you know, like I told you, general Okay, so is refining, is refining gravity adding dark matter and dark energy? Again, just because we don't know it. You guys have the same problem. You're, you're whatever magic disk. We've never added void. anything. There's no uh, disk. What disk are and there's you no talking void. about, bro? <laughs> I'm sorry, whatever you want to call it. You keep there's showing no this disk in space. You know we don't believe that we're a disk no, in space, where right? Where are you then? Where are you then? Earth. Dave, can you pull up the pond? Just we're so like the give him a freaking vision. That's yeah. it. Because this guy thinks we're a disk in space. I wasted That's four a, hours if he thinks that. The pond is just oh, a goodness. huge... Come on, man. What is no, it, it looks like a fluid like medium. If you want speculation station, it looks like there's a fluid like medium, super fluid behavior, which would give you perpetual <laughs> electromagnetic energy without any type it's of not electromagnetic energy. Don't illuminescence <laughs> would give you the stars. Well, it yeah, looks like we are an electromagnetic I'm not, I'm not, vortex of the you. ether. If you wanted the real gravy, bro, I could give well, you the listen, gravy, listen, bro. No, no, he no, wants what's in the say. physics yeah, book. Yeah, awesome. Then, what's in the you, physics book only? If you drop a magnet in an electric field, it will drop at a different rate than something that's not magnetic. I know. It works out of flat earth really well. Look at Dave's screen. You're going to have different velocities is for different materials that doesn't work with electrostatics with Brian, gravity, it works just fine brian look at dave's screen real quick and um i, I don't know just so you get rid of this disc thing well, we live I'm in the not, antarctic is, basin antarctica is the highest land on earth this. it's a container of our pond that's it's not it. the highest place on earth it's it is the place. highest land on earth what are you talking well, about man Everest, do you just Mount say Everest. stuff no. out loud not that it's the what highest point. About? Not the highest point, not but highest its point. land plateau land is higher than all the others. Not, those yeah. are not, you do realize that the Antarctica doesn't have an ice shelf. Those are just ice shelves, by the way. There's ice shelves in Greenland, ice shelves in... Great, uh, but not the ones that we're showing you that are in Antarctica. Those aren't those, in Greenland. Those, those walls you show, <laughs> I've seen your pictures of the ice wall. They're just an ice shelf. That's in Antarctica. Yeah. It's the shoreline of our pond, period. That's whole, it. If, if you go all the way around Antarctica, it's not it's always 60,000 miles. Yeah, Captain Cook did it. Yeah, Ryan, why don't you shores. research Captain Cook? There's places where there's no ice shelf that you can go into Antarctica without an ice Have shelf. Have you ever researched Captain Cook, Brian? Do you know what he did? Well, I there's a lot of people. He navigated are, around the earth and went 60,000 miles. Excuse me. These. Hold on. Let me finish one sentence. Okay. He went 60,000 miles around the earth. No way to get in. Can you explain that on your 24,000 mile circumference Wait, ball? And 13,000 mile around yeah. I can, Antarctica. I can, I can tell you many expeditions in Antarctica that I have on my image, but I'm not on the screen right now. But You need to share your screen. This is this is one. Hit click share. Approved guided tours where you can only go where the government tells you to go is really not right. going to in any know, way. And, and the the one, of the, one of the ones you're going to show us, Brian, is this people, woman. She went here, and then she said there. she went here to the South Pole, and then she went here. And then she went back there and they call that crossing the South Pole. Oh, no, wow. she just went to here and turned around and went back. And by the way, this is like a thousand miles or 2000 miles. This is huge. 3000 miles. I doubt she actually did it. Same thing as she Z- did. Z- it's Q right pilot, here. Right. The guy who has the, uh, no, it, the guy who has no, the record for flying around image. the South Pole in circumnavigation. Well, my image. People go to the South Pole all the time. I mean, you can book a like. Yeah, I mean, but see, you don't you don't understand what you're seeing there. Go go back to that image. Go back yeah, to that image. Back. It's go, one image. Go back to that go image. Back, go, back. go back. We're trying to go, help. Go you, back. Man. So so this this um spot that that look at the lines drawn on the right. That you're calling the South Pole. <laughs> it's right here. This is it. Okay, they've wrapped it around. Now there's no images of the south of of Antarctica in the center. Yes, there are bases along here. Okay, but there's no images of the center because they brought it all together and okay. it's fake. Okay, but still, you know, how does light wrap around? I mean, we know there's 20. I mean, Dude, I can show you right here. I'm going to show you a live time demonstration. Okay, you want to know it's called the coffee cup caustic. Are you ready? Look at this. Look at this. You see how the light bigger? is lighting up all the way around it. You see that? 
But that's not, that's not how our world works. Oh, it's <laughs> a coffee cup costume, buddy. That's your experiment. You said it couldn't happen. I just that did it for you. But that is not. That's literally your experiment. But he just I mean, showed you, you know, that it I'm could just showing happen. It's possible to nothing. literally have a, know, a 24 hour sunlight. Little toy, and you're trying to show that this. That's what a globe is. Dude, you just asked. You just said it was impossible. I just showed that you can effortlessly do it with a container. It's called not a coffee on, it's cup. Impossible caustic. on the actual Earth, not using refractive index plastics that can. Again, we don't live in plastic. We live in atmosphere. Bryant, Bryant, oh, globes are not for educational purposes. You do agree <laughs> with that, right? But everything. No, no, no. Yes or no? Do you agree with that statement? Globes are not for educational purposes. Period. What do you mean they're not for education? They're purposes? not. No, no. That statement exactly. They're not for I, education. I, I don't, I don't agree. To... I don't agree. I don't agree with that. Go okay, to the store, but every buy globe, a globe, yeah. and look at the bottom of it. It says not yeah. for educational purposes. It says they for have to. Okay. Purposes. Oh, they have to. It's bullshit. Well, well, it's not. There's always. So you guys try to take things like that, like the non-rotating. So, I mean, that's just an approximation. Right. Can you do admit anything? that when you, NASA said that? Bro. When you said NASA that, used it's it not, in their studies as a as an as an approximation. They didn't. Right. The, the, they didn't say right. the word approximate they, anything. You're making actually, up in, words. In those same documents, they talk about the spherical Earth and the. No, and they, they go, don't. No, they don't. You made that up. You're literally so, making Brian, stuff up. Okay. I'm, I'm not making Brian, stuff Brian, up. Brian, I'll drop okay. you. I'll send you like 50 documents oh I have, but I've even ballistic missiles, electromagnetic no, propagation, or flattery for ground right? weapon systems. I've documents for ballistic Dude, missiles. they used electromagnetic weapons. Can you share them? Can you show Let him show it. Can we see it? Okay, yeah, yeah. We see electromagnetic propagation, just so you know, but yeah. you, you would think you would enjoy this stuff if you study electromagnetism. Yeah. Yeah. He has never studied it, obviously. I have. He taught it. No, I, I can do experiments. That's the nice thing about science. So, let's yeah. See. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. All magnetism remember, has remember, inertial planes. Okay, so remember right, the scientific look, method too, Brian. Don't forget the scientific method. Field artillery, field artillery, manual canyon gunnery. They talk about the rotation of the Earth. Like many throughout the whole document, they're talking about yeah. the rotation of the Earth. Yeah, we've seen this alleged Coriolis. Do they? Okay, what's the spin of the uh, bullet exiting the muzzle? Well, now you're going to say that that's what it is. There's also. Well, I'm asking you, what is it? Which one's stronger? Well, if it was the muzzle, then why in the southern hemisphere does it go? Like you know the whole thing. So why do the, why have we talked English to shoot, shooters who say they've never used well, that ever? The English ever. Navy actually, when they attacked Germany in the southern hemisphere. Oh my God, the, he's repeating the Neil deGrasse Tyson story that's been debunked a million times I, over. Oh my God. <laughs> I'll show you. I'll Get give you Neil. article after article. That's a joke. Well, you help that's us a out whole here, joke, man. dude. That's not even a real out, story. Think that's about what you're saying. That they're launching cannonballs and missing, and they just kept doing it, and they never thought. That's not how army work. If you shoot a cannonball well, and you, you miss a boat, to, you, you aim to the to, right until you hit it. You have yeah, to you hit account it. for wind way stronger than oh, any you, of this you nonsense to, you're talking about. I know, but you have to. You do account for wind, but you also have to account for for long range ballistics for the Earth bus effect. And well, the Earth bus is just another component. I have <laughs> long range so ballistics saying that. the Earth's flat right here. They have to treat the Earth like it's and flat. I've got I've got documents to say that the Coriolis is is got to be accounted for. And I told nobody accounts for it. Nobody accounts for it. No one counts for it. And Zero I told you people. even if that was hypothetically really, real, really the sky could be of, causing there it. There are a lot of studies on proving that the spin is oh. they're spinning. No, there's anyone not. Can, no. Anyone can print a study, right? I know, but this is like 14 studies. You guys don't have one study. I literally what? <laughs> what? We, we we we've talked to snipers and then none of them ever account for it. Oh, oh wait, hold on. We got to account of, for the curvature. None hold of them. On, There's guys. one video <laughs> of one sniper who, who's probably not even a real sniper. It's There's the same one, video. All the everyone, time. yeah, everyone goes on that. But and he doesn't even make sense when he's saying. He doesn't even make sense. No long range no, snipers. Like so miles. Bryant, have yeah. you talked to real snipers? Bryant? I will, uh, now I will. Now okay. I promise you, I'll find a couple if I. Yeah. Go ahead. Please. And, and, and if the then earth were truly, flat earth. if the earth were yeah, truly I, oh, flat and stationary, on, would you want to know? I've seen interviews on, yeah, on, on you know, yeah, dude, Brian. I, if I the earth were just truly flat and than, stationary, would you want to know? I, w- I would want to know, but it's like I can easily prove that it's not. Like but you would want to know. You haven't if it done was. that yet. So. I have. I mean, to me, the, all these things, the sun. Well, watch this video back. The sunset proves we're a globe. Just, we, we, did you not see the sunset kitchen test? That's literally oh, replicated in real the, life. The sunset Show me a test? NASA sunset that's replicated in real life. It's the all composite. Wait, what test about, proves that the perspective. Dude, we have it's stuff that debunks the globe all the time. The impossible eclipse, the selenillion eclipse. Oh, the impossible eclipse. Actually, there is an explanation for that. Oh, we course. know we, you claim that the sun and the moon are just refracted up oh, in the air, refracted. and it's not yeah, really there. Yeah, that's what's <laughs> happening. That's what's happening. Hey, you know, did anyone notice? That? You can do the math on that and see that that's what's hey, happening. The, the, slightly. Oh, I, I, I wish I... I, 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 I just, hang on a second. Last night, 
the the moon came up and i don't know if i don't know chat if you notice this the moon the sunlight was on the wrong side of the moon the sun went down over there the moon was up and the other side of the moon was lit not just like partially i'm talking the opposite side of the moon yesterday yeah, was lit those, are Com- always, it's, those things are always explainable I and mean, then whenever i look into something like that you can see the explanation <laughs> they make the, the explanation sense. has nothing to do with earth Yo, yeah Brian, by nothing. the way, when, when you, oh, when you said that you did up. the I mean, math, Brian, you need to understand what, what you're doing is basic remedial fallacies. When you said we did the math, you get the globe model, you predict where the sun should be, you do the math on base where it really was, and you I say, didn't. oh, it must have refracted this much. That's right. not proving something. That's ad hoc fallacies did, to dismiss the geometric impossibility of the cell, oh, eclipse, did, which happens in November I, again, by the way. Your model gets debunked on a regular basis in the sky. It uh, you can't explain that. I, mean, I saw your uh, – attempt but we can easily explain that polarized lenses show you exactly what could happen during eclipse dun 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 well tell well how, how can you guys explain a lunar eclipse that's another big polarized one. lenses i just told you a polarized lens explains yeah polarization with an electromagnetic uh oh, field no. you got you no no the earth has to be between the sun and the it has and to be between it has to be between it has to be how, refracted up where we don't actually or, see or it and how do you cast a shadow on something a quarter of a million miles away they uh, you, you you can't take a basketball hold it against a wall have the shadow on it and then move it away 10 feet away there's no shadow anymore there's no sharp edge there's nothing shadows don't travel like that and make it make that little curve and they it, only it, do in the heliocentric model that's right. the only time it's something like done. that would happen this is the actual to scale you see a lot of those charts at the uh, the eclipses are not to scale. You have to use a multi-scale diagram because it, that's it's a cool graphic. Cool. By the way, oh, we so have real away. videos cool of graphic. Life. Brian, I'm putting the moon above. Brian, actually, why why is the moon of uh, why is the moon shadow? Oh, that's a solar eclipse. I'm sorry, never mind. Brian, I we put in the chat for you the, uh, the sun and the moon above well, the earth the, during the this eclipse. Is, yeah. This is not cartoon problems. memes that beg the question. We have real life videos, Brian. Sun and that 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 was sun and moon. I saw some fake pictures of the sun and the moon on the same side. By the selenillion eclipse has been well documented for well, many hundreds of years can be explained, though. that can be explained no he just explained to you why that's not explanation when you take the math and then make it match by saying oh well then it's refracted this much so that it fits the model that's not proof from a higher altitude you got to take those pictures from a higher altitude no you, no, you don't. don't you can we be on the ground pictures level taken at the ground and by the way if you, Brian, if you claim now? that yes. if you claim that if you claim it's refraction you have to claim that we never see the actual sun ever that's what you have to claim Eclipse or the impossible eclipse now? The selenillion is the impossible eclipse. So there, there's versions of the selenillion that are not the impossible, actually. The selenillion eclipse is always impossible. You can't have the sun and moon above the earth. It's, it's, there are just can't. worse versions, more and, egregious versions, no, where the shadow comes from the wrong we know side. refraction from a sunset. You know, a sunset, we oh. can see it further than when. It's the same thing that's happened with this, the impossible eclipse. You can, you can explain all those shadows. But, and, I, and, I, and I know this because a guy brought it up and it stumped me for a little while. But then I finally figured it out. You can explain it. Go with ahead. Magic, ad it's hoc magic. Man. That's all it is. You're saying. I'm well, still waiting for an explanation somewhere else. Brian, yeah, I mean, I, and I put in the chat for you the. Uh, it's from Stack Exchange. I'm talking about the fact that it's a completely made up story about the Royal Navy and the Coriolis effect and all that it's garbage. Okay, well, whatever. Maybe that I don't know about. I'll look into that. Okay. Check Thank that. you. I, I have seen that. You got a lot of stuff to look into, bro. Not <laughs> just well. So do you guys. Electromagnetism. No, can't we explain don't. Gravity. <laughs> You looked really into everything wait, you brought up bro, wait, you for really many think years. The electric field can explain 9.8 meters per second because that is so easy to debunk. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so everything's easy. intrinsically electrostatic. It isn't a field pulling it down. It just sets the up and down, and then uh, density separates the rest for the 50th density, time. Density is just a relative that doesn't have a vector to it. Yeah, yeah. It, no, but the vector comes by the electrostatic. Electromagnetism works in all directions. Oh. It doesn't work. I'm mm. sorry. It doesn't go. Like I said, you can. Do we have an electric gradient on the Earth? Yes or no? The electric gradient, like I said, it, it, it increases no a lot. Non sequitur, non sequitur. But you said I it comes said, in every direction. It's not a non sequitur because it's it doesn't matter like, the strength. It doesn't matter what the strength is. It's that it sets it, does it up and down. It varies wildly, and gravity doesn't, doesn't matter. Very doesn't it doesn't matter. It's always it more. It's always Are you more, kidding me? It's always it more positive matter? above the Earth everywhere on the Ahor. Even if it varies wildly across the planet, it can still account for a, a stable nine point eight. Wait, 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 no, but nine point eight meters per I second don't... varies greatly across. Right, the... Brian. Let me let me ask you a question. I, I know what I know. You said you're Bri- Brian. You, you said that the electrostatic nine point eight doesn't equal isn't equal all over the Earth, and you're ignoring the fact that the the, the number of times stronger than gravity is is an unfathomable number. So wait, hold on a second. Let's pretend gravity. Hold on. Let me finish. 
Let's pretend gravity is real. We know the electrostatic force is real. So why do things fall at 9.8 meters per second when the electrostatic field is also How pulling, uh, create, also doing it? You know, 100 volts per meter where it is, it's, very, yeah, it's a very but, weak electric field. It doesn't but matter. It's, it's stronger than gravity. He's, right. he's missing yeah, but, the point, though. But if, the, point. If, if, the point is, your, your, your gravity falls apart because you've got your gravity and the proven electrostatic field, the, the, the no, myth no. of gravity know, and the proof. But why, why, so why do things go down at the speed hey, that you hey, say? Can I just talk? To, I don't want to talk to Austin anymore for a minute. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to talk. <laughs> I'm just intellectually eviscerating. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm going to mute. You're not, you're not listening to me. I just want to talk to Dave because. All right, go ahead. Talk to Dave. No, you haven't proved. All right, I'll go on mute, bro. The electrostatic field, Dave. It, you, can you agree that it varies wildly across the planet with lightning strikes and the electrical activity? But that, you, that you're not understanding. Austin tried to spend, explain it, it to you a whole bunch no, of times. It, it, just just it, it just determines the up and down. It doesn't oh, it have doesn't. the density. So, okay. Well, I'm course, out. I, I would agree yeah. that we completely disagree on this. <laughs> I agree that you don't understand. You had absolutely nothing with any substance, so I nothing. I, we have sorry. nothing. That's it. You know what? You know who? You know who has all the substance though? Is is physics? Physics? Physics books? I know, but they the, got all the, the substance. The electric field is so. Bob, easy the science guy, McTune. But you, but you, hey, I gotta say this. It's really funny Ridiculous. that you're you have such a high standard for what I'm explaining, which is objective, and you've yet to understand. But it's you don't a, apply the same standard to the theory of relativity, which has been debunked. So it's just a hypocritical oh, standard because you have a cognitive dissonance bias what do you towards mean the globe Earth. It That's makes objectively accurate what predictions. We're all you understand here. laws and theories make accurate predictions if they're if they're proven to think. So what is okay? So point, hold on. If it makes still, it doesn't take away from that. It makes accurate. All right. So space time is predicted, right? Newton. Space time is predicted. So tell me, what is being bent in space time? Because I'm conf I thought space was the absence of everything. But you are saying it's okay, bent again. This is again. I, this is a model. It's a math. You understand that? Wait. So it's not reality. So it's not real. All 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 theories are models that that actually will give you accurate predictions about the reality. But it doesn't. Happen. It doesn't give us accurate predictions. It hey, says. Are you kidding me? LIGO, it's off by ninety five percent on the cosmological scale, and it's off on the quantum scale. Well, that that's a different thing. I'm talking. No, about, it's not a different thing. It's the same thing. It's literally the same thing. You're talking about astrophysics now. I'm talking about general relativity has has never really been falsified. It literally has though. Well, show me, show me what's really okay. Dark matter, dark energy expansion that rate, the lack of by general relativity. What? Because you no, added listen, again, you added something to make your model work, and then relativity you made a prediction. Okay, it was but wrong. your model doesn't even come close to explaining. Gee, we've been oh, yeah, we're we're a bunch of guys in our house. We're a bunch of guys in our houses. Why things fall nine point eight meters per second? Here we go. I it's can. not our job to it. prove our model. You have to prove your positive claim of the globe. And so far, there's been zero proof. I'm saying that Newton's gravity makes accurate predictions that we can use to actually build things. Things. Okay. The well, whole so, world around you is based on. Yeah, it's it, it's decent. Listen, it's accurate on the on the local scale because it's downward acceleration, which is an agreed upon it average. That is be the electric field. See, Absolutely I, I can't be. Cannot be. You're afraid to hear it me. Can't. Lay out cannot truth, be, man. Listen, you can have a magnet, a magnet, and a, and a diamagnetic object, right? The magnet's going to get bent by an electric field, and it's going to slow down. Non sequitur. It's not a non sequitur. It, it, you can't. We know that things fall at the same. I mean, come on! This, the mag electric fields don't work. Hey, if right? I drop a magnet over top of uh, a, an area, of the ground that has more metal composition, does it drop faster or slower, or exactly nine point eight? If there's no air resistance, it's all going to drop at nine point eight. That's incorrect. That's if I drop true. a magnet over top of a, oh, a, a like, magnet, oh, I'm sorry, I'm, yeah. If you, okay. If, that's okay. The, but, so stop talking no, about no, magnets. Oh, no, listen, that's the, that's when you draw a free body diagram. You have two forces you got to account now: the electric force, or the magnetic mm. force, and the force of gravity. There's more than just one force in some gravity. A pseudo scientific fairy tale that needs to explain the convexity Dave, I mean, of the I mean, oceans I mean, bending around the ball. I'm debate Austin. Is that why you brought him on, Dave? So you got, you got some ace no, of the whole flat earth. <laughs> It doesn't matter. He's actually uh -oh. better at explaining these things than me. So He's you, you, are, you do not. I'll disengage. I don't want you to get triggered, man. I'm just trying I, to help well, you. Listen, out, listen. We we've been going round I, and round I, I on could, this. I could easily explain to you that the electric field can't work, but you won't no. listen to that. No, you can't because it just sets the bias. If you if you give me twenty uh, fifteen seconds, I'll then. No, I'll I don't want to talk to you anymore. Fifteen you seconds. You're not, you're not listening though. I'm not. Bro, I'm trust only, me. I'm fifteen right. seconds. Can we bro, can we change to like I understand the stars or something wait, wait, or you know slitting my wrist? Fifteen seconds. Just so you fifteen seconds. Fifteen seconds. I'll stop. I'll stop after fifteen seconds, Brian. You gotta trust me. I'll mute him after fifteen seconds. I'll mute myself. Fifteen. Listen. 
So yeah, the electrical field changes drastically across the earth. It's not exactly the same, but the fact that it always increases at all creates the up and down, it which is all that's with needed. Altitude. It's over. It's all right. I'm done. I'm done. It if does. you heard, it, you heard it, you didn't hear does. it. I don't say. No, look, didn't look hear it. Up. What the does? Didn't, didn't hear it. With altitude. <laughs> <laughs> it does. I'm, I'm telling you, you just look. It does. All right, bro. All right, bro. All right. I, I, any other? Agree to disagree. Agree to disagree. Okay. Agree to disagree, disagree. Brian. Let's Brian. Talk about you can measure uh, it and decrease. Let, let's bring listen. it back home. Let's just let's say our goodbyes. Let's say let's be nice to each other and let's go our separate ways. Listen, I want to point out one thing. No oh insults were thrown, some joking around, some heated conversation. This is how globe believers and flat earth believers should have a conversation. I think Bryant, you know, was willing to come on with all four of us. And no, uh, Austin, well, yeah, he is my ace in the hole. He, sp- he explains that stuff better than I do. That's why I had him on, because I want to give you the best answers, right? I had Sean, I had, had Jaron, myself. Together, I think we gave you the, the best arguments, because by myself, probably wouldn't have done as good of a job. So. Um, I just want to thank you for being a reasonable, um, well, reasonable, uh, a, a polite um, guest. Yeah, okay. All right? So uh, hats off to you for that. We, uh, we violently disagree on, on, on this stuff. And there was a whole bunch of, I got to look into that. I hope you do look into that. I and, will. I'll, I'll and, look at it so I can see what's going on. You know, and, I just can't follow what's going right. on. And, and we didn't um, talk about NASA because I don't know, that one That one would be a, a pretty pretty scary. I mean, you know, the, the litmus test, normally we don't really talk to people that can't look at this thing and go, <laughs> this is not a spaceship. I don't want to look at talk about, I don't want to talk about the moon landing. I yes, of course you don't. <laughs> well, no, it's just because no I know. No duct tape. No duct tape, Dave. Well, listen, I know it. you guys have so many answers. I got to look into everything. No, you, talk you know about. what? You're right. If you haven't oh. looked into it, unfair. So I have one hey. question for you. That's one question for you. Bit. Knowing okay. about pressure and water and everything. It all works. Could I put you in this and submerge you in a lake? Would you let me do that? Would what you, you go into this thing and let me submerge you underwater? Because it is airtight, right? It has to be airtight. I mean, look at that. That tinfoil and those curtain rods. You can do it to me, Dave. I'll, I'll, do it. I'll go ahead and do it. Go ahead and put me in the I won't do it to you, Darren. Right. I'll be fine. Um, come on. So just, but here's the thing. Just this alone debunks NASA, which debunks it all space. Debunk, a picture doesn't debunk anything, Dave. I'm mm. sorry. This the lunar thing, module debunks. The, the, the lunar mission. module. It this debunks. Thing. It makes so the Earth is flat. I mean, if, because of the yeah, no, they had to fake no, but the they, moon landing. They certainly to wanted to get that view. Yeah. All right, listen. He doesn't I, listen. We've gone I, three and a half out. Four hours. We've gone four hours. He doesn't want to talk about the moon landing. I well, don't blame I, again, him. Again, I haven't spent a lot of time with it, but I've spent enough time <clears> to see some good evidence. But I, I'm not going to pretend. You guys have every single talking point. I know this is what the really the top flat earthers do. They they know how to respond to everything. Because we looked into you, everything. I mean, the reason, yeah, we've you been think, studying bro, it. Electro, we've been, we've been looking though, into it for years. Electrostatics, electrostatics cannot work to dis- describe why things. That's again, you don't understand. Again, it's you don't not. understand it by saying that you don't understand. It. No, I do understand it. I again, I just wrote a book that was based on me spending a year restudying electricity and magnetism. I understand it very well. If you spent ten electric, years on it, it doesn't mean it's right. But electric. It's it's it's, it's can't, sorry, bro. again. If if things fell. 9.8 meters per second and dropped up by one over R, the electric field, the earth st- literally comes near zero at a certain altitude, but gravity doesn't stop there. And again, Brian, show me the curvature, please. I showed you plenty of curvature. No, you haven't. Where, what? Show, me, show, me I left? Pond, show me the pond. The pond? Go look outside. Go outside, there Go outside brother. Yeah. No, yeah. listen, no, go on an airplane and look no, around. No, listen, you're demanding whole Earth images. I'm demanding a whole pond image. Excuse no. me, I don't, I no. don't make three hundred and thirty billion dollars a year to go prove these things to you. They do, and they've never proved know, it. Because if they high, proved it, Brian, we wouldn't be having this conversation. I know, but all those all. high, all those high altitude balloons, I've been able to see easily that they're right. But I, you can't see that cherry, far. You, you can't cherry, see cherry, forever. He also doesn't make whole Earth claims, I thought it, wait, right? I thought so it was three different. miles we could see. So how far are you talking right. here? Right. Like that earlier three miles is the farthest. And, and it, on, no, it depends on your eye. On there's, your only, eye your eye there's only one yeah. side making Correction. whole Earth claims, Brian, right? The government claims exactly what the Earth is, Show exactly what picture. it looks like. They claim they go to space. Wait. They're making the whole Earth. Remember, remember, whole Earth pictures. That's remember right. Remember, Jaron said, put yourself in a room, make it 10 miles wide with a 10 foot high ceiling. Could you take a picture of that whole room? No, you couldn't because a half a mile away, the ceiling would touch the floor. 
Okay, the so you can only take pictures of parts of it. The perspective equation says otherwise. Oh, Actually, boy. it doesn't ever. What? What? I, I was at the Bellagio in <laughs> Vegas, and the lights. But were Dave, touching the, the equations the don't say that. No, the, nope, the, the equations don't say that. The lights were touching the floor at the other end of the hallway. Not according to my math, they weren't. <laughs> uh, that's not about that. It's. I mean, it, you're just. It's perspective. Like, you're taking one example. We Those damn flat earthers love perspective. It's what everybody you sees every day. Is, every but bit. That of, doesn't prove anything. That's inside of one place, and you're saying that that. Proves that's where we that. live. Yeah. All right. Here's my my final statement. It's okay to have your entire life destroyed with new information because then you have a whole new life. <laughs> all right. Is, again, your whole foundation based facts. is based on elect, the electric theory of gravity. Is absolutely oh, that's our whole wrong. thing. Yeah. That's our whole thing. You know that's what? One of the things, bro. Yeah. That, and that proves curvature. Power. Good job. But your entire world is set that an atom at the very center of the earth says, I'm the center. Everyone come to me. <laughs> but the atom that's, that's halfway so between the center and halfway between the the, the center and the surface. He, he goes, no, I am the center. Everybody come Dave, to me. And then they fight it out. And the guy at the middle always wins. No, Dave, that, that's how, that's how equilibrium is established. That's how equal. Have, how does gas turn I, into I, a, a gravitational I, ball I, I, and leave a void in between? Okay. How does that happen? It's a lot of, it's an energy density. It's not energy mm. density. That, damn it. I you should have known that. that. Well, it is. I should have looked into that. That's how relatively explained. So, so Mass, nothing exploded, energy. became everything. All the rocks stuck together and all the gases turned into well, giant balls it? and they left a void in between and somehow they hold on okay. to each other and they ignore the three body problem. They go into the hundred billion body, not problem. Oh, and can. they repeat every year. Everything repeats. Problem. The eclipses repeat every eighteen I, years. I understand chaos, Dave. By the way, the three body problem. Do you know what the you know what the prediction the, the predictability horizon is within the three body problem within? Mm -hmm. My my question is, uh, how right. do all of these planets and stars and everything maintain perfect order like a clock? Okay, let me let me let me counter that with the same question for you. Where in the world is the pond? What, what's around it? What's beneath it? We're not allowed to go I there. I don't know. Brian. We're not allowed to go there. But you got, and that's just, it's all. What, just what's at the end of your universe that's least, expanding I, I faster know, than the speed of light? All, listen, we had a conversation before. You kind of know my views as a more spiritual view let, of everything. But this physical universe, we don't have, so there's a lot let, of. Let me ask you a question. What makes more sense? Of, what makes more sense? Space. That we're on a, a non moving level plane, like every observation tells us, and that we're not allowed to explore the outer land, so we don't know, or we live in this heliocentric space void that's expanding faster than the speed of light into nothingness okay again, but this the hubble model is not perfect i agree there's a lot of things not known but not guys, perfect but you guys not don't Wrong. have anything but you guys don't have anything yeah we were lied to say, as children we dude, were dude you're like bragging about lies. the fact that know, the but, world's countries got together and said we can't go past the 60th south latitude you're like you guys can't even know what's are, past you, yeah the world guys, governments the Antarctic, are working Antarctic together Antarctic Antarctic brian Antarctic you didn't know that hey, you know, there the we Antarctic 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 i've read it actually it doesn't say we can go there two two there's two things that all of the major governments in the world agree upon. Can't go to Antarctica because we have to protect the ice and the penguins and everyone needs to get a shot in the arm. Wait, what about okay? wearing masks? They, 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 agree, wear on, masks. they agree on those two things. They agree on the, the boogeyman thing and they agree on Antarctica. That tells you something. That should tell you something. I know, but the Antarctica, people go there all the time. No, you but go yeah, they go there. there there's a, a hundred companies all owned, run by the same guy. There are a whole bunch of shell companies. I mean, it's out of most people's price range, and you barely get off the ship. Yeah, and if they did, even if they let you go, how far are you going to go? You're, you're going to walk a hundred miles and come back? Mm. You're still the, on the ice the, shelf. The Antarctic tree doesn't prohibit people from going there. It prohibits dumping. Prohibits it prohibits. No, we we have to turn in a report. Then, We'd have to turn in a report. Exploration is forbidden. You have to be not, approved. Not an Antarctic tree, you have to go absolutely okay, is. They get, Brian, book something. Book something to go explore Antarctica. Tell me how the process works. Once you get denied, we can have that conversation. Because you don't know what you're talking about. You've never tried to go to Antarctica and explore brian you've never tried to, yeah, do tried to go yeah they go on a cruise ship they spend thirty thousand bucks to I go to the edge a, i don't want have, do have you been there to explore we can't go my, there my have you tried? Here we're we're for saying, 30 grand well, I we, the boat, we have they friends that have gone why brian, don't you try to book one of those antarctic brian i'll tell you what we've done all the work for you one of our flat earther guys who's a lawyer put all of the information together in a 30 minute video. It's in the app under the Antarctica button on the FAQ page, hit it. It's called, why is, um, sorry, Antarctica is closed. Watch that. He did all the work for you. It would take you six months to get this amount of research. He did it in 30 minutes for you. Watch that and then go 
double check it. Go, go and then verify I, it. I found out that there's papers all the, on all of it. All the cruise ships Documents. are all owned by the Documents. same you know, person. The other thing that's a problem is yeah. that with these high altitudes. Did you hear what Jaron said? Wait, 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 let Jaron say something again. What, what was that? I just said all the cruise ships or most of the cruise ships that go down to Antarctica are all owned by the same guy. And he's the guy that Obama put in charge of NOAA uh, back, whatever well, that was, I'd 10, like 20 years ago. I'd like to fact check that. I'm, I'll, okay. I'll look at uh, Please do. You got a lot to fact check. You might want to come back and watch this video again and then remember all the stuff that you want to fact check. We're not lying. Spinrass. Nina, Nina Spinrass. Spinrass, I, I think is her the name. Electric, just go back to the drawing board with the electric, because that doesn't work. I okay. mean, You're obsessed with that, man. It's because I'm it's obsessed cause, with it because every, it's the only thing that you have because you, 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 you can argue it all day long. You've explained everything else. He didn't argue it, actually. Gravity just annihilates the flat earth. That's the problem why you guys have the Gravity. Gravity. There is no ball without gravity. It's a hypocritical state. Statement, That's bro. the only proof for gra- for gravity is that it has to exist if the Earth evolves. That's a, why it's something that we can we can actually know the. I, I explained to you what the difference between a law and a theory. Laws are things we can use to actually make get calculations, make predictions, then we can get things that we can then make. Then we can use that to make things in this world. Great. If there was an applied listen, if there was an applied science of flat Earth. We wouldn't, nothing would be getting made. There'd be no innovation. Oh boy. What do you, you guys. So we would have never figured out that things fell 9.8 meters per second squared if the earth was flat. We wouldn't have figured it out. It was predicted before Newton. You're just rebranding. I I know, but you're just rebranding gravity. Yeah. Into a true model, not the fake one that's telling everybody we're spinning and flying through space. Newton didn't even offer a mechanism for gravity. He said, do not ever attribute that to me because any man with competent faculty of thinking and philosophical matters can never fall into the absurdity of thinking that it could be something. Hey, what if. What if when that apple fell, some kid let go of a helium balloon? What would have Newton come up with? A helium balloon is actually just <laughs> gravity pulling the atmosphere down hard. Well, Dave, you know. I mean, what would would he would he have come up oh, with gravity? Wait, 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 Brian, what what yeah. would happen if Newton saw the apple land in water and it just floated there? I and the helium balloon up. went would up. That mess everything yeah. up for him. The same thing would have happened, actually. But but you know, yeah. Dave, no, another Dave, fake story, guys. Think, another fake story um, never happened. 1666 was 666 nobody, nobody Newtons. Oh my hit. God, bro! You think that's a coincidence? But you guys have all these great little stories. It's pretty nice. It's like a religion almost. They're cute. They're cute stories. They're cute. If you get a helium balloon and then you're in a car and you slam on the brakes, which direction does a helium balloon go? It goes to the... uh, We've seen this before. We saw the guy from Smarter Every Day do it. But it made sense why I did because the air gets pushed forward. So it goes back. Wait, I'm trying to... Yeah. It's all all about, again, because the atmosphere... The reason a helium balloon rises up is because the atmosphere is pulling down the denser air below and it pushes it up. Oh, you mean it has All an electric based on gradient? Gravity. Wait, oh, yeah, the electric gradient. But where is, <laughs> but where is it pulling? Gradient? Welcome to Again, flat Earth, Brian. We can yeah, measure just... the electric field, guys, at higher altitudes. And Wait, hold on. If I'm holding a, faster. hold on, I'm holding it a helium matter. balloon. Work. Absolutely hold on, Brian. Work. I'm holding a helium matter. balloon. I'm holding a helium balloon on a string. It matter a lot. And I let it go. What are you saying that the that the Earth is pulling the gravity, the air from where? No, the air, yes. So the, the air is more dense than helium, right? You know, you know. Thank that, you. Right? Yes. Okay, so the air that's displaced Jesus. by the so the amount of air that was in where the helium balloon is. So you got a helium balloon right here. Right? Yes, D- density. So that air inside that's getting displaced is denser than the helium. So the so that's push, that's Archimedes' you know idea. So it's what happened to gravity? Up. Well, gravity's pulling the atmosphere down. That's what creates the pressure. But pulling what atmosphere down? Pulling the balloon's there. The atmosphere we live in. It's the gravitational force. No, I'm talking about the balloon. Why is the balloon not going down? Why are the clouds not going down? These are questions that you can't answer. The balloon will go up to where it gets to its same density as the air, and it will stop. No. You think that the where clouds with that with the with the, the down balloon doesn't with, keep going up with guys. trillions of tons of clouds, water? Man. It pops. Yeah, are they are they lighter than balloons? It doesn't stop it. Yeah, pops. Wait, you ever been clouds? Like have you ever, ever been in a down a downpour like a, a heavy deluge downpour? Okay. Why, okay. Where is all that water? Why is it floating up there? Clouds Can you explain are, it? I mean, okay, clouds are mysterious. I'm not going to try to explain something. I don't they're not understand. mysterious. We know what they're doing. We know what they're doing. But you don't have any. Your answer is electro, electrostatic. That's the actual answer. Why don't you look it up? <laughs> it doesn't work, guys. It it does, right. It doesn't work. All right, all right, all right. We're, 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 we're on the same that. thing. All right, guys. Brian, file, just <laughs> say... Say you have a final you statement. You even agreed to me that it varies wildly, and somehow it, it still can doesn't matter. Just funny. I'm, I'm looking up electrostatics, and it says right here, the presence of surface charge imbalance means that objects will exhibit attractive and repulsive forces. Is right there. During a lightning storm, <laughs> grab, the electric field switches polarity. You know that, right? 
Why, why are you getting – it doesn't matter. It sets you up and yes, down. Yes, it does. You just mm. said it sets up and down. It reverses he doesn't understand play. what that means, Austin. That's no, I guess no, not, he, dude. He, he doesn't understand what I'm saying. You said the clouds weren't held together by electrostatics, during, man. During I think it, might, it might be time to call it a night, bro. It elect- might be time to call it no, a night, No, during an electric, electrical storm, the, the polarity reverses, and it increases by like 10,000-fold. So oh, okay. you're, you're saying that electrostatics defines the direction of gravity – how can it reverse gravity like that? Gravity doesn't exist. What are you, it's, gravity, not, it's, it's always down. Well, gravity is incoherent dielectric acceleration. I'll send you some stuff. All right. I'll no, send you some the, stuff the and the you can read this, it or no, you cannot read it. I don't answer know. Answer this one thing. Answer this. How, if the electrostatic field is given the direction to why things fall, how mm-hmm. is it that during a thunderstorm, the electric field switches from positive to negative and increases? Why don't things start floating up during an electrical storm? You just get dielectric imp- like pulses, dielectric discharges towards technically counter space. Now and you think the entire electric talk. gradient on the earth flips over? Is that what you think? It, it provably does during a lightning storm. Real, the whole entire earth's electric the gradient clouds, flips upside down. That's what you think? From the clouds to the ground. It, it it's a, it's a lightning bolt for a split second. Yeah, that's it. It's a dielectric discharge. It doesn't matter. It's, there's no variations like that with gravity or 9.8 meters per second. 9.8 meters per second stays oh the same. That's an average. It doesn't stay the same. How do you keep saying yeah, that? And, I understand and, it. No, and wait, wait, have you, have you ever gotten a scale and then stood exactly where lightning strike and to see if the weight on the scale change have you ever done that i don't think anyone's ever done that well, okay i don't think that's going to show much you i don't make it, things flow with electrostatics bro come on yes it, but again electrostatic field of the earth stops it, we know we're back we're back I know, but oh, yeah, this is going on forever bro it's one yeah, fifteen in the morning right. i gotta get I, out of yeah I mean, I, we bro, gotta so we gotta wrap we'll it talk, up we'll talk to him it's about so it obvious for five hours. denying the obvious i mean you're saying Listen, like, this this actually hurts worse than my broken tooth brian brian we all love you by the way we all love you very nice i feel bad for you listen Go back, listen to this, all the things that you said you're going to look into, look into it. If you need us to send you any documents, you know, we'll send you some. What's it? I'll give him, his, give him your email. He'll send you some stuff. I want to see how electrostatics can give a uniform, at the surface of the earth, a uniform 9.8 meters per second when we know it varies wildly and it reverses okay. clarity. All right. Which means you cool. explain He'll cool. get it over to you. He'll get it, get, it over to you. We'll get it over to you. I got you. And then, yeah. then there's something on my channel too. We'll welcome the flat to, earth. But, but good luck trying. Yeah. We'll all get right. it over to you. No worries. I'll um, send you some stuff. Mm. Thank you. And all right, well, all right, let's be, let's, let's say our goodbye. All right. All right. So it's you know, it nice. Thank you for coming. And I, I know it did. What I was worried about. I know four on one was not, not kind. Or, uh, Wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on a second. I think we were very good to you. Yeah, we were. Well, we didn't call you the names. It's not that you were not bad. It's not that you were. I just didn't want to talk to Austin. Most. I wanted to talk to Austin. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody wants to talk to Austin when it comes to this well, stuff. But he's, he's not listening. He's, not, he's, he's got his strong idea of electric. But you don't. You don't have any strong ideas that are I do, but I can oh. prove easily that the electric field varies wildly. It's so simple to prove this. Okay, he but he didn't say that doesn't have anything but to do with But we're not saying that, mat- that matters. It, when it switches polarity, it does. You're saying For that a split polarity. second with the dielectric discharge for well, the millionth time. It, 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 again, <laughs> but just, that, that means gravity would have to have an impulse that you could measure, and it doesn't. The no, point, the everybody has nothing. Uh, You're missing the, the whole point. electric gradient doesn't actually, flip no, actually, on the whole Earth. No, no, no. actually, during an electric storm, that potential reverses for quite some time. But the lightning is a split second. You're right. It so doesn't flip gonna, across the whole Earth. And people don't you said you're right. Just move on from there. Let's just All right, go. whatever. whatever. Yeah, you said I, you're right. It doesn't work, guys. Absolutely doesn't work. All right, man. The Earth you did this curvature, but uh, he said, you know, agree to disagree. We can talk. I'm just saying that that's one thing that's just very easy to debunk. I know spinning. The spinning of the Earth doesn't work. Neither does the it lack of curvature. Work. I mean, that, that, yeah, it, it just doesn't it works. exist. It works. Ryan, you did say there were some yep. things that you should look into. Please do. I, I, I will. I will send you. Send you got my email. So. All right, man. And Thanks I'm, for coming. You just send yes. me the most convincing ones. Which okay, wait, wait. I sent you in the chat. Important. Do you see in the chat before you get, go away? There's a couple of things I put in there. The hit the chat button. You wanted Zoom. to know where the cosmologist faked the LIGO. That's the uh, second link it, there. He doesn't want to say that. And then no, the I'll one. Look at, no, I, I, <laughs> well, he just said it didn't happen. He didn't so believe go it, in but. the chat before you exit. Um, but we already know what these guys will do. He'll come back and he'll be like, "Oh no, but they faked it on purpose." Like, yeah, that's what we're saying. But but oh, no, but right. they did it to they did it to I'm test gonna, their gonna, systems. Gonna, you know. You're like, sa- okay, you're saying that, but let me, let, me, let me look at it. Okay, I'll look at it. Okay, and then Fair. the one below that Fair is enough. the uh, British Navy never existed to. Be, it's okay, a, a dumb okay, yeah, I'll concede that. I'll concede that one, but okay. it doesn't mean that Coriolis. Just get his email, Austin. All right, yeah. I got it. I got it for you. Yeah. All right. Uh, let me. All right. Check listen. the super chats real quick. I just cool. want to say thank you to those people who did that. Brian, take a nice breath. 
You did a great 1, job. 1,073 and I, people I, listening. We had to keep going. People like the, I, I, uh, the I, good prize. Right. <laughs> my best no, show we ever. Four, we went four hours and 15 minutes, so oh, wow. we're good. Time flies when you're in a- When you're having fun, time flies. Yeah, we're Come all on. having fun. Come on, man. Time dilates and it good slows time. down. Uh, just don't, do, Austin, no more talking. We should get, <laughs> we should get <laughs> McToon here. He, he thinks so. Think yeah, that, get, that would be fun. Bob the science guy. We got to get him on. He'll tell yeah, you. not going to happen. Well, yeah, at least, you know, listen, at least next time if we do this like ever again, at least get one other. Let me have at least one other person. Get that's get, well get, known. get as many okay, as you absolutely. want. Absolutely. Bring them on. Fine. Bring them on. Doesn't the more the merrier. doesn't bother us at all. We weren't trying to bother you. We want to have but it doesn't a, bother us. Because it's a fully us. rounded conversation. So if you got somebody that can explain sure. it better, bring them. Sure. Bring all the credentials you can find, ideally. Yep. Yeah. Bring right, some college professors, whatever, and, whatever, you, whatever you like. Yep. But did, did, listen, for Globers out there and Flat Earthers, this is how you have a conversation. Wow. We had fun. We got a little heated. Um, and and that's it. We didn't call each other names. That, that part was let's right hope. Now. Let's hope that nobody in the yeah. super chats did. Because I, um, I, you know, what? I was watching the chat. People were pretty good. A few right. people got frustrated out there, but Brian, you know. Brian, I swore once, and I'm just apologizing for it, Brian. Okay, I did no. swear once. No, we, so no, I'm, listen, I'm sorry about that. I said I was going to cut it. my wrists in the chat, so I apologize we, we for that. Did, we did. We did. I wrong. really wasn't <laughs> going to do that, but I did say that. Oh, that's great. I, I'm no, sorry. No, if, I'm calling, sorry no. if you if I made if you got mad at me, bro. It's Dude, all love. It's impossible. All love. Electrostatics impossible. I spent several days actually de- deconstructing the, the whole electromagnetism. And I'm telling you, it doesn't he hates work. hates Austin. <laughs> it's not that I hate Austin. It's just that you can't describe hate why hate, things you hate, fall. You hate his beard? With 9.8 like seconds squared. Right. So when you can't explain something, then you look into it. You don't just dismiss it. Oh, I can't explain it. It's gone. I mean, imagine if everybody but, did that. If it's the electric field, you can, we know we have all kinds of... You can measure Austin, it. you're banned next time. Yeah. It's not Dude, I said banned. we'll talk about it later, brother. <laughs> Austin, <laughs> banned. It, it, it doesn't work. All right, let me read these. Oh, yeah. Brian, can Brian, I... we love you, man. We thank you for, right. for doing thanks for, this. Really. Thanks, for, thanks for coming, and we'll continue yeah, well, the conversation. You can leave if you want. I'm just going right. to read the super chats. All right, I'm going to let you go. Get... Maybe we could do it again in the future, Brian. Why don't you look at a couple of these doors we showed you and see if you could walk through them? But it's impossible. I'm not going to do it on this type of form again, though. Okay, we're sorry. Sure, no, no worries. Understandable. Hey, I'll let you come on my show and we can talk about electricity. electricity. (laughs) He'll be on tomorrow. Yeah. Dave, would you go on a show with Professor Dave, Simon, Dan? What? No, I don't. I don't talk. Uh, Look at the way those guys. Come on. Hold on. Hold on. on. You can't compare us to them. No, that's rude. Yeah, that's kind of rude. Let's That's rude. Say, we didn't just, we didn't call you names. No, no, no. Hey, I, I, no, no, no. I Brian, did you you got to watch the fallacy breakdown of Professor Dave and I? Did you watch that video no, yet? No, I'm gonna I'm gonna send I'm it to you. Two hundred seventy five to five. If they acted with yeah. manners, if somehow they acted with manners, that'll never he got happen. Two hundred seventy five fallacies to my fifteen telling him. Right. Here's to be the a difference. Dead. The difference between us is we can have a conversation and we actually attack your real arguments. We don't make straw men. Those guys just attack our character. They call us names and they build straw men. And I don't and like that either. Okay, well, that's what they do. So don't compare us to them. That's why yeah, we, we don't like that the, either. We, we have that kind of conversation. Turned, that's why we like you. By, yeah, I was turned off by Professor Dave the way he. Well, he's not a professor either. So listen, well, he's, he's not, he's not a real professor. Does well, that bother you? Does well, that bother he did, you? He, he, he didn't teach chemistry, actually. At a college. While no, we're at it, we'll just point out Professor Dave is clearly scared to debate me and only wants to debate me on an unfair platform. Just want to throw that out there so that he can berate you. All right, you so can, uh, upside down guy right. says you can confine and raise a kid to believe anything. If confined enough, you can show and tell them dragons are real, and they will come and eat them, and they all misbehave. Sorry, I don't know what that is. Yeah. Sacred knowledge says belief is something you do when you lack info necessary to know. We don't believe. We know it can't be a ball because we measured it. Globers believe. Okay, thank you. Uh, aware verse. Thank you very much for the two bucks. Uh, Eric H says Bryant is just gonna tie his own self into a knot. This is great. Uh, THC says smoke some more indoctrination, Bryant. Come on, be nice, guys. Uh, <laughs> Come on. Hey, oh. I'm not a. Hey, Dave. He doesn't. He didn't hear a conversation before the call. So. Yeah, he's got a little bit. Uh, he's he's kind of on our side and on everything, but of course, on everything, is, yeah. but these two topics, which is and, and, and if, I'm wide awake when it comes to that. Well, he, well, you think photons are real, though? So I don't agree with you on that. Yeah. <laughs> Again, whatever you want to call them, we can use them to model what happens in reality. Okay. You you guys are hung up on names. We we can. I mean. The, the difference between I mean, quantum the, mechanics is based on all the, the computers that we're using sorry, about are based on photons, whether you want to call them photons or not. I mean, all right, they, right, I, right. You're you're don't compare yourself to those guys that you just mentioned because you actually believe what you're saying, and that's fine. Yeah. Those guys don't believe what they're saying. They know that they're scamming, and they they do what all psychopaths uh, um, do. They just call other people exactly what they are, right? 
it, it's it's amazing. So, I, 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 right, I, thank I'm you. Totally turned out. Yeah, I'm totally 406 out. findings and Reggie P56 and Baraplegic Bear and Homie the Handyman. Thank you guys for the super chats. All right, it's good. Now we can go. All right. All right. That That's is it. all, everybody. Thanks for Correct. coming. Guys, do your all own right. research. When you do, you'll never again believe like Brian does. Till next time. <laughs> right. Peace. <laughs> all right, Brian. Thanks. See ya. All right. Peace out. Bye bye. Peace out. Yeah.